Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, Cabbage Head Fanfics. Back with amazing fanfiction. This is the series of, What if Deku lived in a pre-quirk era? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Alright class that is enough for today. Now remember, tomorrow is Kajira Day and while it is your day off I expect a brief essay on the age of kaiju and what you consider to be the most important kaiju to you by Monday. The teacher said, getting the class to groan collectively. Dismissed. With that said I ran out of the room, making sure not bump into anyone, especially Kakin. I do not want to have him burn my journal again. Thankfully I managed to slip past everyone without any trouble. It should be a free afternoon from training today. All Might said that there was no training as to work on the essay. Honestly it was something that I was looking forward to. While I have always loved heroes, I have been a fan of kaiju for nearly as long. Then again it might have attributed to the fact that kaiju just seemed cool to me as little kid. I still were still cool even after learning all the horrific truth about them in the past, especially how the world nearly came to an end multiple times 250 years ago, because of the kaiju, the most notorious of them being Ghidorah and Destoroya, the latter of which played a part in ending the age of kaiju. After a quiet ride home and a quick hug from mom, I set out to work. I had a longer weekend than usual after all. I wanted to us the extra time to get more training in. Though I have memorized the age of kaiju by heart as like most details about heroes, it was honestly a tough pick. Most of them were basically animals, remnants of a bygone era that had died out when the last of the kaiju perished on the first Kajira day, the day named to celebrate the occasion and honor the kaiju for ending destroy before perishing. Though honestly if I had to pick, it would have to be one of the artificial kaiju. They were all mutated by the errors of humans, but one was just a match and the other one a walking apocalypse. Then there was the other two. I couldn't help but shed a tear at the thought of them. One was just an animal, mutated into the kaiju it became because of nuclear testing. The state it was left in was horrifying. The autopsy revealing that it was in a constant state cellular regeneration and degeneration. However while just, that kaiju did kill a lot of people and possibly the human race of if it was left unchecked. But there was one more to that list. One who went through what was basically a fate no one deserved and it was completely out of her control. One who was once like him and everyone else on the planet, before tragedy struck. Well at least now I know who to write about now. Now all I have to do is not think about how soul crushing her story is dot 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 and possibly get it wet with how much tears I can produce. I sometimes wonder if mom actually has a secondary quirk that enhances the ability for one to produce tears. I can't tell how many times I had to help her out in order for her not to dehydrate herself. Come to think about it I have the same issue too. Maybe the doctor was wrong and that I did have a quirk in my mother's secondary one. Though it is not really a heroic one, unless you can literally cry a river. Is there someone with that kind of quirk? If there was then they would be better suited for fire rescue. Still they would need some kind of eye protection from the smoke. Maybe some kind of goggles with a filtration system that protects the eyes from smoke. Izuku you're mumbling again. Mom said from down the hall, breaking me out of my thoughts. Looks like I was mumbling out loud again. Shaking my head I went to work on my essay. Thinking about one thing and one thing only. Probably the most tragic kaiju of them all. Violente. Boys looks like we got ourselves quite the haul tonight. So when we get back to port, the first two rounds are on me. A man with a beard made out of curved bones said, getting cheers from the crew. These men weren't your regular sailors, no they were whalers. An illegal occupation throughout most of the world in this day and age. Unless you have the correct permits then, which were quite the hassle to get through legal channels anyway. A single breach and you would get all sorts of law enforcement after you and several of those whales were illegal even with those permits. Like the two young say whales that they have just caught. Their parts would be worth quite the fortune for them by selling them through the right channels. They still could have gotten more whales. But they knew that sooner or later a hero patrol would have gotten around to their area. Considering how these whales were nearly driven to extinction during the age of kaiju, there was bound to be a patrol boat of some kind not that far away. Captain, why is the sky starting to turn gold? A crew member asked, getting the captain to look and to see what was a sight that would be described as beautiful and possibly a sign of the apocalypse. It was raining golden light from the heavens. The sheer amount of lights turned the sky around them into a golden hue like the aura borealis found at the Arctic and Antarctica. When the light started to reach the ocean, they began to speed up into the water and plunge into the depths. Through the illuminated water they saw the light start to converge under the water before being obscured as the water turned a light green. That and his hay fever getting pretty bad tipped off to the captain that there was something dreadfully wrong here. Men, throw everything aboard that we don't need and get us anywhere but here. The captain barked, spurring his men into action. And if we encounter any patrol or heroes surrender, we need to tell the world about this. Tell the world about what captain, one of the men bellowed, that a goddamn kaiju has appeared. The captain barked, shocking the entire crew. 
It was thought that the last of the kaiju had perished on the first Kajira day over 250-some years ago. All the governments of the world spent the next century scouring the globe and in each and every spot they could find just in case any other kaiju laid dormant. They found the remains of various kaiju, but nothing alive and concluded that they went extinct. Evidently it seemed like they were mistaken if this one was of any indication. The crew promptly threw everything deemed not important overboard and immediately speed off as fast as a large whaling ship could be. Captain while I like your plan, but wouldn't it be more sensible to have radioed someone especially the heroes that there is a effing kaiju out there? A crew member shouted as the golden lights had ended and the sea was now a greenish color. I would, but that would have brought them to us. While I would love nothing more than to tell them that a freak of nature is back, I would rather keep our hull and livelihood if possible. The captain barked, getting an understanding nod from the crewman. A minute later and the sea started to get choppy and a sound erupted from ocean. A cry similar to that of a whale song, only more human. Prepare the harpoons, the captain said softly as the crew only stared in shock. What did why I said prepare the harpoons? If this abomination of nature has caught up for us, then prepare the harpoons now. The captain bellowed, shocking his men back into shape. If any of you sorry lot have an emitter quirk or some kind of long-range quirk get to the sides of the ship. We need all the firepower we can get if we want to make it out of this alive. So move. The men under him did exactly that. The kaiju was close to them and unless they were lucky they would be unnoticed. However it is unlikely, so they had only one option. Prepare for battle and pray to whatever god you believe in. Captain of F the starboard side. A crewman stated, causing everyone look to see what looked like a giant Venus flytrap emerge from the water. It was leaking a greenish blood before it opened its mouth and the lower mouth suddenly fell into the ocean and the flytrap soon following suit. Then another emerged on the other side. Then another one and soon they found themselves surrounded by the flytraps, each in a similar condition to the first. Soon after waves began to shake the boat as a massive crocodilian-like head emerged from the depths and let out and sorrowfully roar that shook the very seas. One of crewmen grew scared and shot a harpoon right into one of the Venus flytrap heads, causing the monster to cry out in pain. You fool, you killed us all. The captain bellow as the kaiju turned its attention to them. Fire on her with everything we have. If we are going to die then at least we will die like men. The crew hesitantly complied since they had pissed off a kaiju. They had no chance of making it out of this alive. Might as well go down swinging. They threw everything they had at the kaiju and to their surprise were actually doing damage to it. But it didn't last long as the kaiju swatted them with the harpoon tendril, breaking the boat and the engine in two. The captain could only close his eyes and accept his fate as his crew cried out as the boat split in two and exploded. The kaiju could only look as the boat sunk into the depths before it began to trudge away, bits of itself falling into the water and dyeing the Pacific green with its blood. It had only one thing on its mind. It wanted to go home. It wanted to go back to Japan. It was a misty day at the Dagawa Municipal Beach Park, which was a shame due to the sunrises were amazing here. Well after I have been cleaning the beach for seven months now. It would look absolutely beautiful once I finish cleaning it up. But as the way I am now it would take until around the day of the UA. Entrance exams. Still it would have been worth everything in the end. For both the chance to become a hero and for others to enjoy this beautiful park. Anyway I should be working on my training when I saw something shocking. All Might in his deflated form was crying while reading my essay. All Might are you alright? I asked weakly. I don't know how to process what was happening right now. He had asked to read it the next morning. Why though I had never known. But I did what he asked. I never expected such a reaction. I'm fine young Midoriya. It is just that your essay was very well written. All Might said as he wiped away his tears and put my essay away. Really? I asked All Might, getting him to nod. Of course young Midoriya. I can tell that you placed as much as your heart and soul into this essay as into your training and once again you have surprised me. All Might said with a smile, surprising me. The reason I asked you to bring the essay, because I was genuinely concerned on what you would write. Since the second Gajira day it has been a right all over the world for children to describe their favorite kaiju. It is to keep the memory of them alive in case a kaiju shows up again, so that we will never forget the destruction they wrought and the peace brought by them, and to further educate the younger generations about them. These essays usually reflect on oneself and the understanding of the kaiju. They were not just animals, they were individuals much like us and writing about them gives your teachers an idea on how you can see yourself as them. With that said All Might looked into a nearby trash pile and handed a broken hand mirror to me. What I see that you've written young Midoriya is that you see Biolanta or Erika Shuragami as someone opposite to you and yet somewhat similar to what you wish to become. All Might sighed out, wiping a bit of blood from the corner of his mouth. The both of you wanted to help people, but in different ways. For you it is to become a hero. For Erika it was to help those in need in the more desolated parts of the world by genetically engineering plants. The both you also share the same level of love and closeness with your parents as Dr. Shuragami has recorded down, the drive to never give up, 
and a burning passion for what you love, he said before sighing, getting me to figure out what he was going to say next. And because she was quirkless, that is where the similarity ends, I said, getting all might to nod. While in her time everyone was quirkless, it is nearly unprecedented in this era. The both of us were also denied our dreams when I was told I was quirkless and Erica was killed in a terrorist bombing, but in also a weird way our dreams continued on. But in a horrific twist, I finished bitterly. What happened to Erica? There are simply no words on how to describe it or what she must have felt like or if she could even feel what happened to her. You are right again young Midoriya. There is a reason why you never learned how Biolenta was truly created until the last years of middle school. It is too much for anyone younger to bear. All Might said grimly, causing me to grimace. I remembered that. I nearly cried myself into dehydration and emptied my stomach after hearing the truth. Kaken was also in similar state. Only he puked himself into unconsciousness and Auntie Mitsuki literally dragged him out of school when she was called in due to how bad he smelled. He had unintentionally exploded the trash can in the boys' bathroom so that they had to pry him it and covering him in trash in his own vomit. It was a bad day to be Kaken and no one brought it up in fear of being exploded. Except Auntie Mitsuki of course. Anyway, no one really wished to talk about what happened with Erika. But it was necessary in order for no one to be foolish or immoral enough to copy what happened to her again. And once again what happened to her is a little similar to what you wished to go through young Midoriya only much, much darker. While you wished to be given your quirk. Erika's soul was trapped in the form of a rosebush by her own father in the foolish attempt to preserve her and unwillingly spliced with Kajira cells. In the end you two Earl will transform from what happened. Young Midoriya you will become the great hero that I know you will be and Erika became the plant-like monstrosity known as Biolenta. All Might said somberly. Normally I would be ecstatic at his praise. But I was too distraught at the moment to both. Looking into the mirror I could see what All Might was saying. The two of us at one point were not so different and the both of us changed had our lives changed drastically by a single choice. But while I had the choice in becoming All Might's successor and I will receive his quirk, Erika was resurrected against her will by her father and was turned into a massive kaiju in an attempt to keep her alive forever. At least she found peace hopefully. No one had seen her since her second recorded death as Biolenta. Her spores vanished upwards into space, never to be seen again. Still I hope she was in a better place. Though I am quite touched about what you put down about Erika, young Midoriya. All Might said with his trademarked smile, taking away the mirror. If given the chance you would try your best to help her no matter what her state of mind was. The way that you have written it is more sincere than what most would have written it and has only strengthened my belief in the you will become. I could only tear up at that. To get that kind of praise from All Might was still something beyond belief to me. Although I have been training under him for months now I'm still not used it. I haven't felt like this since the day he told me that I can become a hero. But that means I expect that you put that kind of dedication into everything you do as a hero, you got it Izuku. All Might questioned with a smile. Of course, if I did anything less than what kind of hero would I be? I shouted with a smile, wiping away my tears. I would expect nothing less from you young Midoriya. I'll give you ten minutes to compose yourself then we will begin your training for today. He said, getting myself to nod. After that I got my backpack off the beach, did some stretch and began my training for the day with a resolve greater than all my other days here combined and that was saying something. I was able to move more debris off the beach than I had ever have before during my eight months of training, double the amount I did two day ago in the three hours that I have been training so far. But that all came to a halt when I hauled a broken refrigerator onto the junk pile and noticed something as the mists cleared up. All Might noticed my hesitation and could only gape at what we both saw. The waves have turned a greenish color and had grown choppy. All Might, what is going on? I asked him. There was no natural feature that turned water this kind of green, not even an algae bloom. So what was happening? I have no clue Midoriya. He answered as the waves got choppy and a sound erupted from the waves not unlike a whale. A sound that I've heard plenty of times last night from recordings while doing research for my essay. It can't be, it was impossible. They were all gone nearly 250 years ago. Especially her. It was impossible. Unless of course, she disappeared all. Young Midoriya now is not the time for your muttering. If you know what is going on explain. All Might shouted as he changed into his heroic form as something began to rise up from the water. I never had time to as a large shape burst from the depths to reveal something that the world had thought extinct for centuries now. With this one in particular thought to have been deceased after her remains had drifted into space. It was a kaiju and it was violent at herself, and we were horrified by what we saw. She was cut up pretty badly with whole chunks of her flesh missing and green blood pouring out of her by the gallons and spores breaking off of each open wound. 
She let out a sorrowful roar before crashing down into the water. He crashed creating massive waves that All Might had to pick me up and jump out of the it cleared up Violenta was lying face down with half of her body submerged and her head resting on the beach. I couldn't believe it. There was a kaiju right in front of me. Something that hardly anyone within the past 300 years that someone could say without fearing for their lives. And it was Violenta out of all of them. Honestly if it would have been any kaiju at all I thought that it would be Gajira. There had been three of him after all. Never did I expect to meet any other kaiju or more specifically her. Looks like Dr. Shuragami attempts to give her immortality worked. But it seemed to be having its limits if her injuries were of any indication. I prayed that whatever did this to Biolenta was only a freak cosmic accident and not alive or have been caused by another kaiju. I could only handle one kaiju for now and I believe that rest of the world would agree with me completely. But I could focus on all of that later, as there was something more important to focus on. Violenta. No Erika was right in front of me and was terribly injured right before my eyes. I couldn't leave her like this, even if I was ill-prepared to help her like this. I was broken out of my thoughts when All Might let go of me. The Shichai Fukujin must all be smiling upon you today young Midoriya. All Might sighed out. The first kaiju appears in hundreds of years and she appears right in front of you Midoriya. The one same one that if you wrote that if you ever got the chance to help her. There are far too many coincidences for this to before nothing more than fate. As much as disbelief it, that is the only explanation for this to happen. But what I do believe is that this is your chance and I will be right behind you all the way. While I feel much better now that I know that All Might has my back, but I still have no idea on how to help Erika. She is severely injured and much, much larger than anything else I have seen before. But there is one thing I know I can trust. If All Might has enough faith in me to follow behind me then he knows that I can at least do something. So tentatively I approached the injured kaiju, who opened her amber eyes and looked at me in what I could only guess was curiosity, which she soon followed up by here raising one of her vine towards me. I tensed for a second and looked between her and All Might. He gave me a brief nod and I took a step forward towards the vine. It wrapped around me and gently pulled me forward towards her. Although I was still scared beyond belief, I managed to keep myself from showing my fear and could only look in awe at how she was handling me. It still seemed like Erica had recovered a little of her humanity. With how much awareness she must have possessed throughout her entire ordeal was just too heart-wrenching to think about. Eventually she placed me right in front of her face and I had to focus on her eyes, else I would have the look down her mouth which was filled with rows and rows of sharp teeth. I tried to think of something to say to her. Erica, I asked, shocking her if her startled roar was of any indication. It soon turned to rage. Gee great she apparently was aware. This is going to be much harder than I thought it was going to be, except for one thing that could actually be true. Erica I believe that we can help you with your injuries and maybe even help you regain your humanity back. I shouted, causing her to drop her glare and stare at me with what I assumed to be desperation. Keep it together Izuku. You do not want to break down in front of her dot 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 or anger her and being squashed into the beach. It has been centuries since you vanished and science has come a long way since then. Maybe there is a way to help you, maybe not. But I know this, you are injured and have been in suffering for far too long. I've known what happens to you for a long while now and the world has for centuries now so there is bound to a way to help you. And I promise you that even if we can't find a way to help you soon, I promise that I will not stop trying to help you until there is a way to restore you. I just can't stand the thought of you suffering like this any longer. I shouted honestly, tears staining my cheeks. At first it seemed quite then I heard some sniffing and saw both Erica and All Might crying. Though I can only tell it was tears and roars of joy from Erica with how hard she was crying and how hard her vine was squeezing me in a hug dot 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 and it was getting harder to breathe. Erica you might want to let go of young Midoriya if you want to keep his promise to you. All Might said while wiping away his tears, getting Erica to release me and let out a soft roar in response. I guess that was her way of saying sorry. It's alright Erica. You were overjoyed about the chance to become human again after so long, I said, getting her to let out a light roar. You keep surprising me and my expectations young Midoriya. Keep this and you will reach your dream sooner than you think. All Might said before he shifted into his true form and coughed up some blood. In fact I may know someone who might just have the capabilities to help. He said, shocking me and Erika. There might be a way to actually help her. That is fantastic and the way Erika Wei wrapped me up in a vine and began to nuzzle me against her cheek definitely showed how happy she was was. Although it was kind of embarrassing for me, I didn't have the heart to refute her. But there is still the issue of transporting a 120 meter tall kaiju within Musutafu, it just isn't possible. All Might said, getting our attention. Maybe there was a way. Hey Erika, can you consciously break yourself and reform yourself into your spores? I asked her. Erika just briefly flickered one of her vines into spores and back in place as a demonstration. Well then have you tried breaking your entire self into spores and reforming part of yourself into a smaller form and keep the rest of your spores in space so you can interact with others without possibly crushing them? 
I suggest to Erica, shocking her as she let out a joyous roar and promptly broke up into spores. Here's hoping that this works. As I watched a number of the spores break off into space, I notices something clattered onto the ground. Picking it up I saw that it was a crystal about the size of my forearm with green blood alongside the edge. So I guess this is what injured Erica like that. But where did such a thing come from? Young Midoriya, I believe that you should hand that crystal over to me. All Might said, which I immediately did so as the spores faded as the remainder of the gathered together to reform Erika. Her new form looked to be about a 4 meter tall version of her previous form, but with a more humanoid looking torso and head although they still were many Saurian features still there. She took a quick look at herself and let lose the closest of what I could guess was a sigh. I guess that this is as close to being human as possible for her. That will all change for her soon, hopefully. Well that will do it. Now all we need to do is load here up and head off to the school. All Might said with a smile, shocking me. You don't mean I tried to say but I was cut off as All Might changed forms once again. That is right young Midoriya. All Might said, we are going to UA. I never thought that a kaiju would ever awaken in my lifetime. But the small bits of chlorophyll rich blood still stained the ocean proved otherwise. Sonar had picked up the remains of a whaler ship at the bottom of the sea and salvage teams had found no survivors. Meaning that we had no idea where this kaiju went except for a literal trail of blood being carried away by the currents. The kaiju in question, Violenta was a bit problematic to track. She doesn't emit the same amount of radiation as the other kaiju if her blood was of any indication. So she was going to be harder to track than the others. I had agents stationed in positions all over Japan just in case she decided to return home. I just prayed to the gods that they find her before she made landfall somewhere. I felt my phone ring and I looked to see it was a Japanese number, one I didn't recognize. How did they get my number? Only a select few knew it in the agency. And this number wasn't one I recognize. This had better not be Agent Aoki at a payphone again or so help me I will dock his pay again. Who is this? I asked. It's been a long time since we talked to one another. Five years to be exact if I am correct Sarazawa. The caller said and I realized who it was. It has been a while Yagi, but I take it that this isn't a call to catch up now is it? I sighed out, wondering what he was calling about. I had honestly forgotten that I had given him my number, but then again it was after he suffered that horrendous injury. I never thought that he would use it though. No it isn't, I'm calling because I found Erica. He said, who? I asked, having no clue as to who he was talking about. You may know her as Biolenta. I advise not to call her that when you meet her. He said, shocking me. He found the kaiju, but how and why was he calling her Erika? Unless he could actually communicate with her. Yagi, can you please explain everything to me? I said while calming down and pulling out a small notebook and pen. I never go anywhere without them. Certainly. It all started this morning while training my new protege at Dagaba Municipal Beach Park. He said, surprising me. I knew of his quirk. The former director had worked with several of his predecessors after all. So he finally found a successor then. I figured with his injury that it would have been sooner or later. Still Dagaba Municipal Beach Park hadn't considered that as a landing point. It was still isolated, but it might as well be considering it was basically a landfill compared to the other potential landing point. About halfway through his training, he noticed something in the water and we barely made away before she crashed into the shore, her head lying onto the beach and bleeding all over, he said, causing me to frown. With the sheer amount of blood that has been found all over the sea, I suspected just as much. Though it did raise one important question. What was capable of injuring a kaiju like Biolanta to such an extent and was it still alive as well? I shake off those fears for now. It was better to focus on them after this call. I figured as much as I have all available agents to clean up all traces of Biolanta's blood. We do not wish for a repeat of what happened to her after all. But on that manner do you have any idea what could have caused those injuries? I asked him. No clue and I dread to think what could have caused this. But Erica did drop a large crystal coated with her blood while changing shape. He said, causing myself to nearly choke. What do you mean by she changed? I inquired, praying that Biolenta didn't get any bigger. If a kaiju even bigger than her last form rampages, I doubt even all the heroes in Japan would stand against that kind of raw power. My protege found out that Erika has recovered her humanity since she was thought dead centuries ago and is well aware of what happened. He figured out that she could reduce her size through her spores and now instead of a gigantic plant monster, she is now about the size of a small tree. All Might said with pride before sighing. And that is why I'm calling. I wish to know if it was possible to continue the change back into a human. The promise of it seems to be the only thing keeping Erika from lashing out along with my protege. I figured that with your organization's resources on everything related to Kaiju, that you would at least have something to help her. After that I had to steady my hand as not to drop my phone in shock. Not only had a student figure out something that has only been theorized for centuries, but of Yagi actually asking for something like that. A way to turn a Kaiju into a human that wasn't possible. Unless it was. Where are you right now Yagi? I asked. I just parked at UA. 
It was the only place close by that I could think of that could contain Erica in case she decided to go on a rampage. He said, getting me to nod. Yue was one of the most secure areas in Honshu after all and a training area could suffice as a temporary base in order to gauge Biolenta. Good just wait there for a while. I'm going to gather everything necessary and met you there. I said, wait you mean there is actually a way to change her back? All Might exclaimed in shock, causing my ears to ring at his loudness. In theory, I might have solution but it will take several hours to obtain the needed information. I will meet you in one of the training areas, just make sure everything is set for the meeting. I said firmly, of course, just a word of warning, do not call Erica Biolente. The mere mention of that nearly sent her into a rampage and we were quite lucky that young Midoriya was able to calm her down before she could do anything drastic. I believe that she would be too dangerous to handle if she decided to grow back to her full size. So whatever you do, do not call her Biolente. All Might said, thank you for the advice, I will take head of it and I will be around in a few hours. So stay put until then. I said, alright, I will see you then Sarazawa. All Might said, you as well Yagi. I said before the line went dead and I let out a sigh I had been holding in. The first kaiju to awaken in 250 years and some kid manages to calm it down and suggest the idea to turn her back into a human. If the idea wasn't plausible for this kaiju in particular I would have laughed it off and ordered Biolenta. No Erika studied in order to determine if she was a threat or not, which I am still considering, which is why I'll be bringing Agent Duper with me. Wouldn't trust anyone else to look after me, from the shadows that is. Still there is someone else that I need to bring with me and judging by the footsteps she was right behind me. Graham, I take it that you heard everything. I asked her. Of course and I've already made preparations Director Sarazawa. A helicopter will be here within the next half an hour and Agent Duper has been dispatched from the Argo and she said that she would retrieve everything concerning Dr. Jinshiro Shuragami from our records building in Tokyo. She said, getting me to smile. On top of everything as always, I would expect nothing less than from my deputy director after all. Excellent as always Graham. Now tell Dr. Toga and Dr. Mafune that they are in charge of recovering every single sample of this kaiju's blood as possible. I ordered, of course sir and anything else I can do for you. She asked me, of course, look up anything you can about the name Midoriya. I would wish to know who I will be dealing with. I said, if Yagi wished to have surprised me with his pupil, then he should have not mentioned his last name. Of course sir, Graham said, before I heard her close the door. After that I decided to just look out at sea for a few moments and enjoy the scenery. If what I believe is to be correct, I doubt I'll get a chance like this in the nearby future. Something tells me it will be busy then and I can only hope that the world will be ready for it when the time comes. Please let it be over soon. I thought that cleaning the beach was brutal, but this is on a whole other level. Come on Midoriya, defeat it and then you are done for the day. All Might called out, with Erika giving an encouraging roar of her own. I barely had any time to dodge an incoming metal fist before ducking under it and threw a broken piece of machinery at it. Buying myself a few seconds, as my usual training was cancelled for the rest of the day due to Erica, All Might had what he considered an equal opportunity, landing a hit within an hour against three of the lowest ranking bots for the entrance exam. Now I will dread facing off against these things during the exam, and they were the weakest one. I have been doing this for nearly three hours now and not landing a hit on either one of them, always covered in bruises and Erica trashing them in the end for retaliation. I was lucky that All Might introduced me to UA. As nurse, the aptly named Recovery Girl, I had only interacted with her briefly to either heal the bruises from training or for her to conduct various tests on Erica. She had left 15 minutes ago to finalize the results. Though her quirk is certainly helpful, I'd rather not think of the method in order to activate it. Still without it I would have been in no condition to have continued on, though the downside of the added exhaustion was something that I could have done without. Speaking of which I had just found an opening. Finally, I rushed towards the closest one, only to duck under the fist of another one. I was still not getting up. I continued on target and ducked under another metallic fist that caved in the robot's head behind me. Nevertheless I picked up another piece of scrap metal and threw it into its visor. The robot just swatted it away, but it was too late for it. One hit square in the chest and it shut down. Erica let out a triumphant roar and smashed the remaining robot with one of her vines before using it to curl around me as I collapsed onto the ground. After three hours and I had finally did it dot 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 but if those were the lowest obstacles of the exam then I need to really improve in these next three months if I want to stand a chance during the exams. I was broken from my thoughts when Erica wrapped me up in her vines and dragged me towards her. I didn't have the energy or the heart to refute her as she nuzzled against me. She has been doing this for a few hours after all so I have gotten used to her doing this to me. At first I was confused, but then I realized that I was probably the first person in centuries to have treated her like a normal human since her transformation after all. Probably since her resurrection was as well. Hopefully All Might was right about that cure as well. 
Though I wonder about the organization that he mentioned, I could care less about it. The only thing that I care about at the moment is just helping Erica. Young Midoriya you're mumbling again and Erica let him go. It looks like you are about to squeeze him to death again. All Might said to my embarrassment as Erica let me down. Now then out of the exercise and for someone who has never fought a day in his life before you did about average, though you did surprise me at the end by making one of those robots at the end take out the other one. So well done. Yes he did well for a beginner. But I can see that you never bothered to teach him how to fight, did you Tashinori? The principle of UA. Nezu said as he fixed All Might a look. Honestly the fact that the principle of UA was some kind of bear, monkey, rat, etc. was a little less surprising than the fact that All Might was going to be a teacher at UA. Then again it would make sense. He did say that it was the chance to look for a potential student out of his classes. But it looks like he still has some ways to go before he could actually teach a class. The look and growl Erica was giving the two left me wondering if she was upset at All Might, wanting to try to eat Nezu again, or maybe both. W well about that. All Might said nervously under the gaze of the two. Did you Tasha Nori? Nezu repeated before sipping his tea with the same look in his eyes. Okay he was starting to creep me out now. Okay I'll admit I didn't think about it during his early training. But have you seen him when he started out? All Might said while handing his phone to Nezu. Who began to look through photos that All Might might have taken of myself when I wasn't aware of it. I honestly don't know how to feel about that. Or that Erica's vines were starting to stretch towards the phone. After a minute of looking through the photos he tossed the phone to All Might before Erica could catch it with one of her mouths. Okay I see what you mean. But you should have at least taught him the basics on how to fight at least a month ago. Well I have to say I must applaud your ideas for your plan to train Midoriya. The absence of combat training is something that I cannot allow. You have three months to improve on your teaching All Might, so I will allow this to slide this time. However I expect you to learn from your mistakes and improve on Midoriya's combat ability and your teaching skills or I will dock your pay for the first month. Do you understand me Tashinori? Nezu said while fixing a glance at him. I will. Besides I believe that he is ready enough as it is for that kind of training. I will just have to reorganize his schedule for it later though. All Might said, getting Nezu to nod. Good, I expect nothing less of you Tashinori. Though I have to ask you one more thing. Under any circumstance do not show those pictures to Nimuri. We both know what she'll do to the boy if she saw them. He said, causing the both of them to shudder. Before I could ask what that was about, recovery girl returned carrying a folder. Looks like she was done finalizing the tests that she ran on Erika. I see that you are done Chio. Nezu said to recovery girl as Erika wrapped me in her vines, bracing for the news to come. So what is the verdict then? All of us hold in our breath as Recovery Girl hands him the files which he began to look over. Not good I'm afraid. I've run the tests and I've come to the conclusion that whatever Dr. Shuragami did to Erika made her more plant than human, which was already a given due to the origin of her body. Her blood contains high amounts of chlorophyll meaning that she will have to spend most of her time in the sun or else she will go into a coma. The only remains of a skeletal structure she has are a spine ribs, and skull with all of her teeth actually being more comparable to thorn. What little organs she does have besides those in her head are nothing but muscles and a primitive form of stomach and kidney as she seems to recycle all waste provided by digestion and all air she absorbs is by photosynthesis. And her breathing is what I can attribute to her former life as a human. I still have no idea how she produces radioactive sap, how she can break up into spores, or the secret of her absurd regeneration capabilities. I can attribute it to her being turned into this from a rose bush. But unless whoever who know Yagi does have a way to help her there is no feasible way to turn Erika back into a human or some semblance of one. Recovery girl said grimly with her head down. The feeling of dread emitted by everyone here was something I had only experienced once in my entire life. The day I was told I was quirkless. Erika let out an ear-piercing roar before she started to lash her vines at a nearby building and demolished it. I need to calm her down before she goes on a rampage or All Might has to stop her. Or that she injures me as she forgot that I was still in her vines. Erica, I know the situation looks bleak, but All Might mentioned that there is a chance to turn you back into a human. They all told me I couldn't become a hero when I was younger just because I am quirkless. But now I'm proving them wrong just by being here at UA. And my training with All Might. So please Erica just wait a bit and I know that you will become human again. I shouted from the depths of my heart, hoping it would reach her. It worked as Erica seemed to calm down before wrapping me into her vines and squeezing me into herself while letting out a sorrowful roar. Despite the pain and one of her tusks scratching against my side, I just returned her hug and kept the pain to myself. I've been here before, the night I was told I was quirkless. I had wished for my mother to have told me the one thing I needed to hear, that I could become a hero. Instead she broke down and apologized profusely. I can understand that, but the words I needed to hear came about a decade later. Erica however had probably been waiting centuries to be human again and now she was being told that it was possibly impossible for her. However I won't allow the same thing that happened to me repeat with her. 
so I said the one thing that could help her, what she needed to hear. Once again you surprised me Midoriya. All Might said while wiping away a tear. I say that you chose an excellent successor Yagi. Someone said, getting Erika to let me go and growled as she sought the source of the voice. Everyone but All Might was on edge. I mean the speaker probably just found out about All Might's secret and Erika after all. When did you get here Sarazawa? I thought that we would have heard you approach by now. All Might asked to his left, getting us to face an older man with black hair and beard, glasses wearing a black suit, and holding a briefcase. With him was a young woman who looked with brown hair, black suit, and by her features I had to guess that she was American or European perhaps. Everyone else seemed to have calmed down when they realized that these were the people All Might were expecting, though Erica kept a stern gaze on them as she let me go. Though seriously how did they approach us, I saw a helicopter in the background. That should have made enough noise that we could have noticed it coming from at least a kilometer away. Unless of course one of them had a silencing or sound manipulation quirk and purposely hide themselves in order to approach us. Considering they didn't know how Erica would react it makes sense for them to approach stealthy. Though there was always the possibility that they weren't the one with that particular quirk. They were a secret agency from what little I gathered from what All Might said, so they might have an agent on site with the quirk. Probably hiding somewhere in case anything happens to them or in case Erica acts up. The profile was right. While Smarty tends to mumble too much, the woman said with a small smile. Though you are entirely correct on the agent and the quirk. Mount again dot 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 wait a minute. You could understand my, his mumbling. Both me and All Might said in shock. Hardly anyone was able to decipher my mumblings. While my quirk is enhanced hearing, so I could easily decipher what would normally incomprehensible mumbling to most. She said, well that makes sense dot 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 wait a second again. There is an agent here. I shouted, getting the man, Sarazawa to nod. Yes and she is here just in case Erika decided to rampage. Nice work on correctly guessing her quirk by the way Midori. And if any one of you try to mess with her it wouldn't end well. She is the strongest agent we have and I doubt anyone besides Aizawa or Yagi you have assigned here would be a match for her, Principal Nezu. So I wouldn't wish to trouble her if I were you, Sarazawa said, getting me to gulp. While the name Aizawa rings a bell the way he mentioned All Might and she was brought to subdue Erika means that she must be extremely strong. Someone I do not want to accidentally anger. Noted, but also thank you. With how you got that information now we have to improve our firewalls then. Nezu said, getting the woman to nod. Great so they hacked into UA's database then. Well I suppose that is how they got that information about me. I take it that Monarch is an organization dedicated to everything kaiju then. I asked them, getting Sarazawa to nod. Correct. Monarch was founded 250 years ago on this day by the un to study anything related to kaiju and to watch over, study, and if necessary slay any remaining kaiju if they prove to be a threat to humanity. Although Erika we can make an exception for, as we have a way to restore her. Sarazawa said, shocking me and Erika if her startled roar was of any indication. They had a way to actually restore her. But it isn't that easy, is it? I asked getting Graham to nod. Correct. The method was discovered by Erika's father and one of Monarch's founders Dr. Jinshiro Shuragami. She said, getting a small growl from Erika before I place a hand on one of her vines and calming her down. I don't blame her. He resurrected her as Rose Bush and then turned her into a kaiju. She has every reason to despise her own father. But I would prefer if she didn't snap at the people in charge of a kaiju-based organization and with their best agent lurking in the shadows around us. As I was saying the method was discovered by him as he spent of the rest of his life to atone for what he did to her. Up until his last day he worked on his cure for Erika. The day before he died he ran out of all genetic material from her before she left Earth. However before he died he said that he was close and after he died all his information on the cure was stored in our archives until today. Graham said, getting me to sigh. So the cure is incomplete then. I said, getting Sarazawa to nod. Sadly it is. But based on what he wrote Dr. Sarazawa he was within a hair's breadth of curing her if the results within his notes are of any indication. However, he has written down that even if she is cured she will never become a normal human. She will still exhibit all of the baseline traits of her transformed state. But she will appear for all intents and purposes like her old human self. Sarazawa said, getting Erika to let out a sorrowful roar. So she can become human soon, but not to her old self. It seems like Erika will never be able to fully shake off her curse then. But it was alright. Erika even if you don't become a normal human again, it will be alright in the end. I said getting an incredulous look from her. If what Sarazawa said is true, then you blend in with most of the world already. 80% of the world has quirks, so you would be just like most of the world then. I said with a smile, getting a reluctant sigh for her. I suppose that she wanted to be normal, 
but I guess she will accept this as an alternative. Well that went better than expect, Sarazawa said before facing Nezu. Now on to the main matter ahead. Principal Nezu what is your plan for Erika? He asked him. We plan to keep her in this training area for now and inform the rest of the staff tomorrow. Though Tashinori is free to take her as he wishes for his training with Midoriya. Nezu said. Though we plan on keeping her close to Midoriya whenever he is available. Throughout my testing with Erika, she has shown to be especially close to him and we all came to the conclusion that she is close to him since he is the first person in centuries to treat her like a human. Recovery girl said, getting Erika to roar in approval. Looks like I was right. We can work with that. As we would like to ask Principal Nezu if it was alright to establish a temporary base solely to work on Erika. Graham said, getting Nezu to nod. I see no problem with that. Just whatever happens you will have to clear everything belonging to your organization off of the training field at least two weeks in advance of the entrance exams. Nezu said, getting Sarazawa to nod. That we can agree to, but we would appreciate your and recovery girl's help. With your intelligence and her medical expertise we are sure to finish Erika's cure soon. Sarazawa said, getting the two in question to nod. That we can do. Nezu said, before a ringing noise gets everyone's attention and causes me to sigh. I know that sound all too well during training. It was time to start heading home. Looks like it is time to you home young Midoriya. All Might said, causing Erika let out a loud roar in what I guess is disapproval and her vines to constrict around me. Not again. Erika I'll see again tomorrow during training. I shouted, causing her to loosen her vines and her to let out a small growl. She studied my for a moment before hugging me with her her vines before letting out a small whine. I guess this is her way of saying I'll see you soon. Before you go, I believe there is something you two have for me. Sarazawa said, getting All Might to nod before handing over the crystal. After he had found it, he wrapped it placed inside a metal briefcase cause he said he felt something off about it and I can perfectly understand. Something that could have injured Erika like that was only comparable to one kaiju alone and something like that was a frightening thought. You might want to be careful with this, All Might said while handing the case to him. I can tell, the amount of cosmic radiation radiating off this thing is incredible. You did the right thing by encasing this, Sarazawa said with his tone conveying slight shock. He can sense cosmic radiation. I guess he must have some kind of Jiger counter quirk then. Anyway he brought out his hand and All Might shook it. See you later Yagi. Sarazawa said with a smile. You too Sarazawa. All Might said before coughing up some blood and facing me. Ready to go young Midoriya. I am. I said with a nod as I made my way to his truck. I'll see you tomorrow Erika and take care everyone. Erika let out a sorrowful roar as me and All Might got in his truck. With one final wave at her, we took off. As I started out the window of the truck I couldn't help but be think about what a crazy day it was. From meeting Erica, to finding out that All Might will be a teacher at UA, to going to UA, and finally the existence of a kaiju-based organization. All in all it had been a long, but exciting day. Something on your mind young Midoriya? All Might asked, is it something to do with Erica I take it? Partly, I was just also thinking about Monarch as well. I admit it, getting him to nod. I can understand your worries, but you can trust them especially with Sarazawa looking after her. All Might said with a smile. Speaking of him, how do you know Sarazawa? It seems like the two of you know each other very well. I asked getting him to nod. We have known each other for years. We met each other very early in my career. Tell me when do think we meet? All Might asked me. That was a tough question. There have been a few instances since his appearance when he felt with artifacts dealing with kaiju. But something early in his career then dot 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 wait I got it. It was when you stopped that smuggling operation in New York wasn't it? It was run by a criminal named Lagger. Who had collected many stolen artifacts including eggshells of the Kaijuzilla from the Museum of Natural History and was planning on selling them overseas. You stopped him, but I heard he put you out of commission for two days. I said, getting him to wince. You got it right you fanboy. Lagger wasn't really that strong, but he sure does life up to his full villain name. All Might said with a grimace. And that would be, I asked, generally curious. I've never heard about this after all. The only thing I know about this villain was his crimes and the fact his quirk was some kind of poisonous transformation quirk. His full villainous name was Lagarfeljotsormir, an Icelandic sea monster but he preferred the name Lagar as it was much easier to pronounce as unlike most of the people he worked with couldn't pronounce that name. He said, getting me to nod. It was certainly a mouthful after all. Well it certainly fits as he could turn into a monstrous version of a poisonous fish native to Iceland. I consider myself lucky as I read up about it after getting treated from the poison and dying from it is nothing short of horrific. All Might said with a shiver before continuing. Anyway I met Sarazawa after that when he was still an agent and we became friends soon after. Though we hardly contact each other due to his line of work. The last time being a few days after I've recovered enough from the incident and when he became the new director of Monarch. 
though he has certainly been busy these past five years. I was amazed when I heard about the this, but there is one part that had me worried. For a man like Sarazawa to be busy, there was only one reason why. He was busy with other kaiju wasn't there. I asked, dread filling me and praying that I was wrong. You got it right young Midoriya. All Might said, filling me with fear. Luckily they are only two known. One is harmless according to him and the other is under so much lock and key that he prays that it will never be unleashed. They have both been asleep when they were found and Erika is the first confirmed awakened kaiju in centuries and I hope it stays that way. Dot 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 well that is just great there are more kaiju out there. There has always been thoughts about them, but now I have confirmation. Maybe I could ask Sarazawa for more information, but that could be for another time. I was freaked out enough as it is right now and all might seem to sense it. If you wish to bring it up with Sarazawa I'd be more than willing to do so, but on to more important notice is what to do with your training starting tomorrow. All Might said before coughing up some more blood, and that would have to be with fighting technique. I asked getting him to nod. The principal is right on me needing to work on my teaching capabilities as much as I hate to admit it. All Might sighed out while wiping the blood away. So while I will be researching fighting techniques for you to learn, I will have you covering the basics against Erika. Wait, what? I knew his training would be severe, but fighting against a kaiju was way out of my league. If you are worried about fighting Erika don't be, I'll just have her help out with one aspect while I search for a good style for you. Besides if I did try to do C I'm pretty sure that she would try to kill me. Also she might try to eat the principal again as well. All Might said with a sweat drop. I had one as well, I could see her acting like that as well. Anyway starting tomorrow we will be working on the first aspect of fighting after clearing up some more debris. We will be working on how to dodge, he said with a smile. Dot 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 why do I have a bad feeling about this? Anyway where do you and your mother like to eat out Midoriya? All Might asked, causing me to quirk an eyebrow at that. Why are you asking that All Might? I asked, getting his face to redden for a second before composing himself. What was that about? Well young Midoriya after the crazy day we both had and all the effort you've put into your training, consider this an early reward. Along with your mother who has been so supportive with your training, I've considered treating you two out to dinner. All Might said with a grin. You mean it? I asked incredulously, getting him to chuckle. I mean it young Midoriya. He said, I can't believe it. This along with Erika and Yue has made it the second best day in my life. Thank you All Might. I said with tears starting to form in my eyes. It's no problem young Midoriya. Though you might want to call your mother in advanced. He said, getting me to nod as I whipped out my phone. At first she was a little apprehensive about my training to be a hero. Especially with All Might or as she knows him as Tashinori Yagi. Though she warmed up to the idea and began supporting me more and more and has warmed up to All Might over the months. She still worries about me though and I can't thank her enough for all she does about me. Though I still guilty about lying to her. All Might sees my expression and after a few moments only sighs. You can tell her. Dot 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 what? I said you can tell your mother about one for all. But only after you have inherited my quirk. She deserves to know. All Might said with a small smile. All Might I know I have said it probably a million times. But thank you. I said tearfully, getting him chuckle. It's no problem Midoriya, but don't you have a call to make? He questioned. Oh right I do. All Might chuckles at my reaction as I dial up my phone. Today has not only been the craziest day of my life, but I wouldn't change it for anything. Tomorrow would see a slight return to the previous form, but this time I would have Erika alongside All Might this time, and I couldn't be happier about it. I took a deep breath as I tapped my hand against my knees. Today was the big day. Honestly I was more nervous about today beyond anything else I have experienced. I can tell that you are nervous as you should be. All Might said in his depowered form. Even I am nervous about this, but do what I do boy and put on a brave face. Wouldn't want to worry Erika even more than she should be. You're right. I breathed out, tears starting to leak from my eyes. But I still can't help but worry about her. I mean what happens if she dies? Then she dies. We all knew the risks about this Izuku and we all agreed that that was a possibility. I know that you promised Erika that you would help her, but if she does die she will be free from her curse permanently and I know that you wouldn't want for her to suffer anymore. All Might said sadly, getting me to nod. I know, but things wouldn't be the same without her. I sighed out, thinking of the previous month that we had spent together. The day after Erika washed ashore, we returned to the beach with Erika in order to continue my training. But I was nervous as I saw All Might with a large bruise on his arm and Erika glaring at him. Did a villain do this? I asked nervously. If a villain can bruise All Might like that, then I do not want to be anywhere close to that kind of villain. No it was Erika, All Might said with a glare. I suggested her help for your exercise today and when I described it she bit down onto my arm with one of her vines. I'm lucky it was the vines as unlike her mouth they do not have rows of teeth. Thankfully I managed to reluctantly get her to agree. And that would be, I asked, fearing for my life. We are going to teach you how to dodge. Erika is still capable of spitting out sap. That has been tested and proven to be not radioactive thankfully. 
It will still burn though believe me. All Might said while rubbing his bruise and getting Erica to roar at him. Dot 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 that was much worse than anything I had thought. You're telling me I have to dodge burning sap. I shouted taking a step back. It was either that or dodging her vines for two hours and considering that they once pierced through skin of the king of monsters. I was not risking it testing if she could still have that same amount of power on yourself. Besides I believe Erica will take it easy on you. If she thought that this would have seriously injured you then I would probably be eaten by now. All Might said with a shrug, with myself unsure if he was joking about the later or not. The way Erica growled and impaled one of her vines through a nearby fridge did not help with the matter. I am going to die. I had that exact same thought many times before during these past eight months of training. But this time I mean it. I was broken from my thoughts when Erica carried me over to her with one of her vines. She lifted me till I was about her eye level with her. She let out a soft roar before fixing me a soft stare. I guessed that she was just trying to reassure me that things would be alright and maybe to prove another point. That she wouldn't intentionally hurt me. But evidently if All Might was of any indication anyone else was free game. Erica can you put me down now? I believe I am ready now. I said, getting Erica to let out a soft roar before placing me back on the beach. Good. Now with that settled remember one thing Midoriya. All Might said before shifting into his muscular form dodge. The next two hours were filled with nothing but pain. I was still feeling stinging all over me from dodge practice this morning. Despite Erica lowering the power of her sap to the absolute minimum I could still feel some stinging. Thankfully it isn't bruising like on All Might, but I will certainly last a while. Anyway after two hours of that nightmare. All Might has to bring Erica back here for testing as Monarch was beginning to work a temporary base and start finishing the cure. She reacted the same way as yesterday and All Might had to pry me away from her. He then drove as fast as he could with Erica underneath a tarp, hissing at him along the way. It was that or explained to people why there was a 4 meter tall plant like being in the back of his truck. So I was left to continue my usual training methods for the next few hours until All Might came to pick me up, intending to introduce me to the people in charge of working on curing Erica. It was an understatement to say that I was nervous, so when we got there I was expecting many things. But not Erica chasing a man with red leathery wings in a suit roaring angrily along the way. Please tell me that he didn't call Erica by that name. The man immediately spotted us and flew behind me and all might. You're the kid the director said was the one that can calm her down right. Then can you please do so? The man begged as Erica now had her attention toward us. Her anger stopped upon seeing me and I found a few of her vines wrapping around me. Not again. I managed to cry out as they pulled me towards Erica, who began to muzzle against me once again. Erica, it has only been three hours, so can you please let go? The way Erica growled and continued to nuzzle me basically meant no. So it is true, you can calm her down. The winged man said in awe, before getting Erica to roar at him. I probably shouldn't have called her Biolenta. Erica returned in kind by launching a large wad of sap at the man, getting the man to fly away from it. That's what you get for provoking her. All Might said in his heroic form, shocking the winged man. Holy shit, All Might, the man said before reaching into his suit and pulling out a photo and a pen. Can I get an autograph? So he was an All Might fan, but still who was this man? Now is not the time Agent Aoki. I heard Sarazawa order from behind me. Erika stopped nuzzling me and turned me to face him walking up to us with Vivian and a man I didn't recognize. A man about as tall as All Might and with a scar on his forehead and brown hair and mustache. He wore a loose brown suit and a black muscle shirt. The way he carried himself told me simply one thing. Do not mess with that guy. The way Aoki paled upon seeing the man only reinforced my suspicions. Director, I was just save it for later Aoki. Duper is looking for you for provoking Erika. I suggest that you find here and accept your punishment before she finds you. It will not end well for you. The man said, cowing Aoki and causing him to go even paler. Of course, he said hastily before flying off, causing Sarazawa to sigh before facing me. I'm sorry about that Midoriya, Erika. Agent Aoki is nothing but a trouble magnet at times and his tendency to blunder almost makes it too much to bear at times if he wasn't so effective when he needs to be, Sarazawa said, getting Erika to let out a soft roar. Apology accepted I take it, I guessed, getting Erika to nod. All right then with that out of the way, can you please put Midoriya down Erika? Vivian asked, getting her to let out a reluctant hiss as she put me down. Now with that out of the way, I believe there is someone that I would like to introduce, she said as the man brushed past her and began to seize me up. It was only thanks to eight months of training under All Might and the nightmare that was earlier that I wasn't having a complete breakdown. But I was pretty terrified and I was sweating up a storm. But I held my ground as best as I could with All Might and Erica right behind me. The later growled with sap dripping from her fangs. Gordon I believe that is enough. Stop trying to intimidate my protege. All Might sighed out, getting the man to grunt. All Might knew this guy. Then again if he was friends with the director of Monarch then it wasn't too strange for him to know a few people in the organization. 
I was just seeing on why you picked the bean sprout over here for an apprentice and got to say not too impressed, yet there is some potential I will give him that, the man said gruffly before facing me. I am Agent Gordon and you can only get to call me Agent or Sir, you got it bean sprout. Yes, sir, I said, trying my best not to show how nervous I was. This man was just that intimidating. Good, was all the man said before walking back over to All Might. How long has it been Gordon? Ten years. All Might asked, getting the agent to let out grunt. That it is Yagi, tell you what. How about one of these days we head out into town and grab a drink like back in the old days? Gordon said, getting All Might to nod. Then do it on your own time Agent Gordon, Sarazawa said, getting the man in question to nod with a grunt. Midoriya Agent Gordon here one of the best agents in Monarch and is the one in charge of this base and subduing Erika should she rampage, Sarazawa said, with Erika sending the man a challenging roar. He did not react at all. Does anything phase that guy? What about the doctors you said would work on Erika's cure? All Might asked Sarazawa. They are right here, Principal Nezu said as he approached from behind Sarazawa along with two other people in lab coats, an old man with a slightly hunched back and a tall man with blonde hair. Sorry we were late I was just catching up with an old friend. Isn't that right Shinzo? That it is Nezu. An old man said with a smile before turning to face Izuku. So you are the one who found Erika then? My name is Dr. Shinzo Mafune, head geneticist of Monarch, and I am Dr. Yujiro TGA, head hematologist of Monarch. Yujiro said with a small smile, a fang peeking out from underneath. There was something a little off-putting about the man, but I can't put my finger on it. Nice to meet you too, I said, getting the two the nod and Erika to growl at Yujiro. The two of us are in charge of finishing Dr. Shuragami's cure. Judging by the notes and the fact we could have practically an infinite amount of genetic material from Erika with her regenerative capabilities then we could be finished with her cure within the month. TGA said, get my breath to hitch. They could get the cure done that soon. I figured that Sarazawa would have had probably some of the best scientists around, but to be finished within a month. The two of us have combed over Shuragami's notes and have determined that we can finish the cure soon, but there is a small problem. Mifune said with a sigh. A page of his notes is missing. Dot 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 what? Erika let out an ear-piercing roar at that and her vines started to lash out at some of the nearby buildings. She stopped after a few seconds, deciding not to rampage, though she settled for wrapping one of her vines around me and trying to pull me back towards her. Why does she keep doing this to me? Erika knock it off. All might side out as he grabbed onto her vine. So please explain why there is a page missing, Sarazawa said, ignoring my plight. The reason why he mentioned it on the last page. Shuragami took it out out of fear that if the completed cure was ever made then there would be those who would weaponize it, TGA said, stopping all doubt and causing Erika's grip to loosen. That was a valid reason. He had lost Erika the first time due to people going after his work and the very start of the series of events that turned her into Biolenta. Smart man, Gordon grunted out, getting everyone to nod and Erika to let out an annoyed grunt. But it will be difficult to finish the cure if we cannot finish the cure. Mifune sighed out. Then work with what you have and then we can figure it out from there. As for the cure, when can you two start? Sarazawa asked. Tomorrow when we get everything set up. Toga said, getting the director to nod. That is what I wanted to hear. Now I believe that it might be good to study up on Erika's biology. Sarazawa said before a girlish scream broke out in the background. I believe that Agent Duper found Aoki. Gordon if you would please make sure he is alright. Last time she roughed him up. He spent two days in hospital bed and wasn't mission capable for a week. He sighed out. Fine, Gordon said before facing All Might. The two gave each other a quick nod before he walked off. Well if that is all I best be going. Someone's going to have to patch up that idiot. Toga said before turning to follow Gordon. What about recovery girl? I asked. She is currently procuring anesthesia. Turns out that Erika's biology can't allow her to fall asleep and with how restless she was after you left yesterday it took enough anesthesia to knock out five grown men into a coma and some of Nimiri's sleeping gas to knock her out. And good thing too, so many teeth. Nezu said, a little hauntedly at the end. I guess she tried to eat him again. And the way that she was growing at him suggested that Erika would plan to sew again. Well if you all need me, I'm going to see if Ken is finished with helping to finish with Monarch's base and Erika's temporary home. Nezu said before sprinting off, probably not risking any chances of it happening again. We should do the same, have to make sure this base is up to protocol. Sarazawa said before walking away with Vivian follow suit. Dr. Mifune are you coming? In a few minutes, I wish to have a few minutes with Midoriya over here. He said, surprising both me and All Might. What did he wish to talk with me about? Very well then, Sarazawa said as the two walked away. Now then, I believe that you can drop the guys All Might. Mifune said, shocking us, especially All Might who dropped his form in shock and coughed up blood. How? The both of us chorused in shock. Simple. An old friend of mine told me about you once he heard about me going back to UA. Mifune said, getting All Might to pale. 
He say that you better visit him soon or better yet call him or he will come to you. Of course, in fact I will get on it soon. All Might said, fearfully. Just who is capable of scaring All Might like this? Try to do so by the end of the day. Mifune said, getting the number one pro hero to nod rapidly. Now as for you Midori I have to say it is truly an honor to met you. And why is that? I asked as Erika tried to wrap me once again with a vine. It is for one reason only. It is that I am glad to have met you accomplished a childhood dream of mine decades before I did by finding Erika. Mifune said happily. Wait he couldn't mean. You found a kaiju. I asked incredulously. Getting Erika to let out a small roar in return. I did five years ago in fact. Hibernating on the ocean floor. I was laughed out by the scientific community though. Believing that all the kaiju died out centuries ago despite evidence proving otherwise. Monarch believed me. I helped them find it. And in return I was hired into the organization. Though I did believe that I would never see an awakened kaiju in my lifetime. But lo and behold one right before my eyes and I have the half to chance to cure her. I have almost lived a full life. Mifune said, wiping a tear away from his eyes. Erika growled at him. Whether for nearly tripping a line at her or for happiness I could not tell. There is one thing that I was still hung up on though. You found a kaiju. I asked in shock. That is correct. However it is hibernating on the ocean floor and was the first kaiju discovered in over a century. Erika is the first one discovered to be awake. Mifune said with a smile, but it quickly turned into a frown, though I believe that might change sooner or later. So you think that there might be another age of kaiju? I asked a little fearfully. The world barely lasted the last one and it took over 200 years to recover from the last one. Maybe, but it would answer some things. Mifune said with a sigh, including Erika there have been over two kaiju found in the past three years. He said before looking over to the shadows. Do you believe I should tell them? Before we could question him, a static buzzing sound filled our ears and made Erika growl in annoyance before it cleared up. Looks like she has given me the all clear, Mifune said. And I take it that this she is this agent duper that Sarazawa keeps talking about. All Might said, making me nervous. I only have what everyone else say about her to go on and it wasn't pretty picture and Agent Aoki's screams from earlier only made it worse. Add in that her ability to manipulate sound was about as great as I thought it would be. I am not thrilled at meeting her. You are correct. Word of advice though do not get on her bad side. She does not suffer fools easily. Mifune sighed out. But what I am about to tell you is confidential information. You two must not tell anyone about this, am I clear? Of course, I said, with All Might nodding in agreement. It has due deal with a kaiju awakening doesn't it? All Might asked, getting Mifune to nod. It was from the second kaiju we discovered during these past few years not that far from here, in a lake in the Amori prefecture dating back nearly 200 million years ago. So whatever this kaiju is pretty much ancient. Nobody has seen what it looks like physically except for fossils of possible other members of its species. What we do know is that smaller than most kaiju recorded and is incredibly ancient. There have been signs of activity on the lake bed these past few months. But the environment down there is an inhospitable place for humans to explore even without the risk of waking whatever is down there up. So it is possibly only a matter of time until Erika won't be the only kaiju awake anymore. Mifune said grimly. Not that I blame him. Another kaiju awakening. That is something that could go literally anywhere. During the age of kaiju they were literally all over the spectrum with ranging and from protecting and saving humans, to defending their former territories, to hunting humans for sport, or for attempting genocide out of nothing but sheer malice. It was basically a roll of the dice whenever a kaiju awakens. I can only hope that this one is benign or else we could all possibly be in for another world-ending threat. I was broken from my thoughts when a telephone rang from inside Mifune's coat. I better take this and I suggest you call Sora Hiko soon or else. Mifune said before walking off, getting All Might to pale. Seriously who was this person that was capable of doing that? Shit, he is right. All Might spat out along with some blood. Midori I am going to leave you with Erika for a few minutes. I need to make a call and acquire a one-pointer for your training today. So are you going to leave me with Erika? I asked. And if what happened earlier was of any indication that this agent duper as well. All Might said, getting me to sigh. So I was alone with Erika and a highly trained agent who could probably kill me if she wanted to from the shadows alone. Well that is just great. Well at least I have Erika here, so I guess I was safe. I'll be back. All Might said while walking off, muttering something under his breath. With him gone I allowed myself to collapse backwards onto Erika's vines as she pulled me closer. This past half an hour had been almost too much for me to handle. From old friends of All Might, a missing part of the cure, questionable characters, a kaiju possibly awakening up soon and not that far from here, and someone capable of scaring All Might. I need a break. Erika let out a soft growl as she pulled me towards her. I guess she understands what I'm thinking about. Still two days ago all I was thinking about was becoming a hero. Now though dot 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 it was manly the same. But a whole new door had been opened to me. 
I still had the goal of becoming a hero, but now I wish to help Erica as well and nothing will stop me from reach my goals. Erica let out a soft growl as she lowered me onto the ground and I leaned against one of her vines. I know that I have to get ready and stretch before going though the grueling task of shutting down the robot again. But for now all I wanted to do was be around Erica for just a few moments, something that she seemed to agree with as well. After that day things kind of went into a routine for a while. Training at the beach and dodge practice with Erica for two hours, more training, school, hanging out with Erica for a bit at UA, training with the robot for an hour, and then back to the rest of my schedule before meeting Erica. While I was not with her, Erica was monitored by a teacher of UA, per day and several agents including Aoki. From what I can tell she seemed to have a habit at snapping at him if he got too close, something probably due to the fact that she was still sore at him for calling her Biolente. Besides that everyone at the very least seemed to tolerate her, though I am told she is a bit more volatile without myself around. Considering how affectionate she gets, I can see that. Sarazawa, Vivian, and Agent Duper left the next day, but they continue to check up on progress from Gordon, All Might, Nezu, the doctors, or myself about Erica's status. While the former actually haven't seen any sign of Agent Duper at the time and I believe she might be checking on the base without being detected, something that she later confirmed herself, but nonetheless equally unnerving. Mifune and TGA spent most of the time working on the cure. I spoke with them on occasion and manly away from TGA. No hard feelings against him, he seemed like a good man. But even Mifune admits that the man has unquestionable presence around him. Still they get along surprising well. Having been partners since Mifune joined Monarch and spent most of the time working in where they tell me their main bases is, in Antarctica. Considering what emerged there during the Age of Kaiju and the fact I've only heard of a mentions of the third Kaiju under their watch. I had a possible idea of what was under the ice and prayed to all the gods that whatever is possibly there never sees the light of day or we were all going to die. Dot 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 okay I think I am good now. Aside from them, I make an effort to afford Gordon like I could. That man is very intimidating and for good reason as I learned not even a week after meeting him. Besides that things progressed through that same routine minus a few events. Some of them fun and some of the tense. One of them that makes me flush beat red whenever I think about it dot 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 and praying that Kachin never found out. Still I would never trade those days for anything until that day came. A day that we had to make a difficult choice. One that I hope will play out alright. It is still hard to believe that it has been over a month since I have met Erica. It has been filled with so many ups and downs, not only for myself and Erica but for others as well. Still despite all of that I can say I remember these days quite fondly despite a few events that I didn't wish to happen, especially what started on day 16. It all started innocently enough, the day after I was introduced to the people working on Erica's cure. But it wasn't until that day we learned of a horrid truth, one that inadvertently led to her cure. But still at all the signs that something was wrong started out on that day that started of innocently enough. I expected many things when I went back to Aldera Junior High. Students sad to be back after three days off. Kakan keeping his distance from me as usual for these past few months. Keeping himself away from his friends which he has also been doing for months. And a comment or two of being a quirkless loser from them. But there was one thing no one was expecting. Our teacher openly bawling his eyes out while reading our essays. We were all silent for about a few minutes as our teacher cried until someone one spoke. Deku, the F did you do? Bakugu said from across the classroom. Why had he thought that I was doing this? Bakugu once again language, though you are not wrong. The teacher said between sobs, pulling out my essay. Midoriya and all my years of being a teacher at this school, I have never read such a more heartfelt kaiju day essay or piece of writing from one of my students in my life. Dot 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 wait what? A. Most of the class including myself said. Bakugu just grunted in annoyance. As I said, Midoriya's essay is the most heartfelt one I've read in my entire teaching career. And the details he wrote about the kaiju of his choice. The passion in his writing was like I can only describe as it is like he has a deep connection with the kaiju of his choosing. It's just too beautiful to words. The teacher said before going back into cry. Well he isn't exactly wrong. Still he kept on crying for ten more minutes while the class stared at me in curiosity, wondering what I wrote that possibly broke our teacher. What did you write in order to make a grown man cry you extra? Bakugu asked after getting impatient. Biolente, it was Biolente. I said, feeling a little guilty for using the name Erica hates. Then again I would have to use it as no one would really get it if I describe her as Erica at first anyway, as they are mostly used to her being to refer for her as Biolente. Thankfully after what happened with Agent Aoki yesterday, it seems like no one else at Monarch has made the same mistake. Otherwise there would be a lot more injuries at her snapping at others. That would do it. Bakugu said, going back to ignoring me and most of the class as well thankfully. Not really used to that kind of attention. After our teacher recuperated the school day continued as normal. 
minus Kakin getting annoyed at his friends and I use the term loosely. He rarely hung around them as I guess they ran out on him during the slime villain incident months ago and only got more and more frustrated with them especially what happened a month ago with his family. The less said about it the better. Anyway after school All Might picked me up a little ways from it as previously discussed with my mom in order to train. Besides there really wasn't that much homework today and I completed it on the car ride to UA. Once we got there into the training ground, I immediately heard a joyous roar behind me and found myself wrapped up in vines. Erica reeled me in with her vines and began to nuzzle me against herself. It's good to see you again Erica, but can you please let go? I asked, which she begrudgingly complied with a growl. Hadn't seen her like that all day. She is rather moody to most of us staffed here besides the docs working on her cure, yet when you showed up she was the happiest I've seen her all day. Then again she is still mad at me for yesterday it seems and sadly for me, I had stay all day with her so far. Agent Aoki said as he fluttered down next to Agent Gordon. The former had bandages in a few places and one of his fingers in a splint. All caused by one Agent Duper, someone I'm glad to not have met so far. Wait a second if you've had trouble with Erica, why we're around her today? I asked, getting said agent to flinch as Erica let out an annoyed grunt at him. It's due to the effect that besides his shortcomings, Agent Aoki is somewhat of a solvent when it comes to machines. He built a complex locking system from scratch for Erica's temporary home in the span of two days Bean Sprout. Gordon grunted out, with a bit of begrudging respect. Would have been a day and a half of not for the broken finger, but nonetheless some of my finest work, Aoki said, puffing his chest and wings out in pride. Also managed to fine-tune the one-pointer Nedzu had for you to train with, haven't seen one of these since graduating. You graduated UA, I said, surprised and getting the man to nod. Of course, but from the support course not the hero course. Was one of the best too. Tried to look for a job back in Osaka dot 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 did and end well. Blundered into a black market deal involving angerous scales and was drafted into Monarch after they busted it dot 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 more or less from seeing way too much. Aoki admittedly sheepishly, though I have to admit that I love my job. No matter how much he can be a headache at times. Gordon muttered. Speaking of which Aoki, show the bean sprout the lab and be sure to take Erica with you. I'm going to catch up with Yagi here, if that is alright with you. I see no problem. All Might said in his buff form. Literaria. After greeting the doctors, come back so we can continue your training with the one pointer. This shouldn't take long, maybe five minutes tops. Should take about as long. Gordon said while cracking his knuckles. Wait a second you two are going to fight. I exclaimed, never really seeing All Might like this, more or less. Back during my early days in the States Gordon here was more or less my sparing partner off the books whenever we met most of the time, though it has been 10 years since our last spar. What was the score last time? All Might asked with his signature grin. 35 minus 12, in your favor. Let's see if we can make it 35 minus 13. Gordon said while cracking his neck. That sounds about right. Agent Aoki you might want to get Midoriya out of here. All Might said, getting Aoki to flap his wings and pick me up. What about Erika? I asked as we flew away. Hearing the sounds of the two clash in the distance, my concern of her overpowering my fear of falling down. Erika was still mainly ground-based due to her mainly having roots for her feet dot 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 that and she is estimated to weigh 6 metric tons and her current form doesn't help as well. Believe me you do not want to be caught up in one of Gordon's fights, besides she will be alright. Aoki said as golden spores floated up besides us. I looked down to see Erika let out an enraged roar at him as spores emitted off her body before she exploded into a cloud of spores that drifted along with us, a good amount of the spores clinging onto me. It was like watch one of the archived footage of her departure into space all those centuries ago, but this time it seemed like she was more in control as they all moved in unison, minus the majority of them clinging to me of course. We still have no idea how she is able to do so, but it is going to be tricky to find a way in order to counter that if she does decide to leave like that, Aoki said as he landed in front of a five-story building which was the temporary headquarters. I can see that. She would probably use it to sneak away to try to find me anyway. I said, seeing it as a possibility due to how close Erika was to me. Sadly that is a very real possibility. Thankfully the premise of you coming over and her helping you train seems to have kept her from escaping so far. Aoki said as the spores gathered around him forming in vine and smacked him into the ground. Oh, Erika what was that for? I asked her as she reformed behind me. She just let out an annoyed grow at Aoki as he picked himself back up. I guess it was for snatching you up from her. Aoki said as he stretched his wings. The glare she gave him only confirmed his answers. Still Erika I admit he could have given me a warning before getting me airborne. But you didn't have slam him into the ground. I admonished her, getting Erika look away from me. Well I have to say that this is entertaining. I believe that you have someone to meet. A voice said from behind, startling me and causing me to jump back to reveal Dr. TGA. Where'd he come from? Erika spat a wad of sap at him, but the hematologist simply sidestepped away from me. Sorry about that. 
but Dr. Mifune asked me to show you the lab. Agent Aoki you can leave us as I will escort these two from here, TGA said, getting Aoki to nod. Very well and besides I need to finish fine-tuning the servo on the right arm. It is a bit slower than compared to everything else of the one-pointer. Well then good luck, Agent Aoki said as he flew away. Well then would you mind following me around the building Midori? Working on a side door big enough to let Erika into. TGA said as he guided myself and Erika towards the supposed door. With Erika growling at him. So Dr. TGA Yujiro, please call me Yujiro. You are not an affiliate of Monarch, so you don't have to address me so formally. So at the very least call me Dr. Yujiro if you wish to be respectful. He said, cutting me off. All right then Dr. Yujiro do I creep you out a bit? He asked, once again blindsiding me. Does my very presence creep you out? Be honest with me. How am I supposed to answer that kind of question? If it is yes don't worry about it, I have that kind of effect on people. Yujiro said dismissively with a wave of his hands, getting me to release a sigh of relief. Anyway what were you going to ask? I was going to ask about you being the hematologist of Monarch. I figured that you would possibly work with Kaiju blood, so I was just wondering what that was like. I asked, getting Dr. Yujiro to chuckle. First time someone straight up asked me that one in a while. It's kind of refreshing. Anyway it is mostly boring work to be honest well recently. I study any kaiju blood we have and mainly categorize their properties and figure out how their cells works. Pardon my for this, but there hasn't been any fresh blood so to speak in this field in a while. About three years in fact. Sure there might be a new discovery every now and then, but it is mainly dull. But due to Erika's arrival it is a practical goldmine of information and with a constant fresh supply of blood the possibilities are endless. I can almost taste the possibilities, Yujiro said, actually salivating at the mouth. Me and an Erika gave him and glanced. Not sure what to make of his expression. A minute later he composed himself and wiped the drool away as we turned the corner and saw an Erika-sized opening in the wall. Sorry about that. I tend to salivate at the thought of blood. Doesn't help that my quirk makes me kind of like a vampire, Yujiro said. You mean the need to suck blood? I imagine that would help in your work as a hematologist, I said, getting him to nod. It is, whenever I work on humans that is. I am not only the head hematologist in Monarch for working with kaiju blood, but human blood whenever it is needed. We have a good medical staff as accidents are common in our line of work. Anyway my quirk is a bit more to that as I am can store blood within my canines and disperse it for later. Have to spend a fortune on dental supplies though. Yujiro sighed out. I can imagine, there was already enough blood-related diseases already, but actively storing blood in one's mouth was all kinds of unsanitary, and just the cost of constantly cleaning and maintaining it must be a small fortune. You have no idea and you can see Sir muttering Midoriya, we are here, Yujiro said as we saw an opening in the side of the building big enough for Erika to fit through, with what appeared to be a few agents working on the doorway. A quick roar from here sent them pushing back, weapons trained on her in case she tried anything. Erika just grunted as Yujiro waved at them to stand down. Don't mind them, never seen an awake kaiju before. Yujiro said as he led us into the lab, a spacious two-story room that looked like it took about probably half of the time building. Agents were setting up lab equipment on the main floor and on the balconies, some already working on them, and a few emptying sacks of foils and fertilizer onto the current floor we were standing on. One Erika was finding herself conflicted with. On one hand she seems content with the choice of soil and fertilizer. On the other hand she seemed, almost disgusted with herself. It seemed like now with the promise for a cure in the first time in about 300 years, she can look forward to being more human. But in her current state she is what can barely be considered human. Her body a mixture of kaiju and plant with the mind and soul of a human trapped inside. So she is probably sick and tired of being stuck in that body for now and being bound by her physical form and wants to be back to being as human as possible. Without even thinking about it longer I walked up to her and hugged her which was a bit difficult with her body shape, breaking Erika out of her mood. Just bear with it for a bit longer Erika. Soon you will become a human again, so please bear with it for a little bit longer okay. I said, before I felt a few of her vines wrap around me and pull me up, Erika let out a sullen roar before nuzzling herself against me, giving me her answer. Once again you surprise me Midoriya, Dr. Mifune said as he walked up to us, with a bunch of files in hand before turning to Yujiro. We may be finished this sooner than what we first thought even. Really now, when did Y come to that conclusion? Yujiro asked as Mifune handed him the files and Erika placed me down. Just about an hour ago on your way here, Mifune said. Though it has more to deal with the ingredients for the solution. With the ingredients being either more easily or difficult to acquire after the centuries since Dr. Shuragami's dearth along with the fact you said his notes were almost completed. I said, getting Dr. Mafune to nod. You hit it on the head Midoriya. 
It took Dr. Shuragami to the end of his life to perfect the cure and many years of trial and error to develop her into what we have currently in his notes. Honestly minus the final step this would have taken us a few years to complete with all our resources to get up to the point he did in his notes from scratch. Dr. Mifune said, getting me to nod. I knew that Dr. Shuragami was regarded as one of the best geneticists of all time. Minus the infamy of what happened to Erika. This only solidified the claim. Though you are a bit more off on your estimate Mifune. It would have taken us perhaps a decade to fine-tune the solution if he didn't place the exact measurements for each components including the final one. Tell me Midoriya, do you know what a deoxyribonuclease is? Yujiro asked me while placing the files on a nearby desk. I believe I heard about it in science class. Deoxyribonuclease or DNAs is an enzyme that cleave the hydrolytic cleavage of phosphodiester linkages along the DNA chain basically degrading DNA. I said, saying what I could remember reading in the science textbook. Erica wrapped me within a vine and let out a small joyous roar while the doctors smiled. I guess I answered correctly from the knowing smiles they had. And Erica too as well. Well the best she could with teeth like thorns anyway. I really should have figured that she would know it as well. When she was human she was a geneticist and her father's assistant as well. Still how much of that knowledge that did she retain as well? Dying and being brought back as a rose bush and then into a kaiju can not be good for one's mental health. Erica let out a sorrowful roar at that and found myself wrapped up in more vines. I mumbled again, didn't I? I asked as Erica pulled me towards her and she looked saddened. I'm sorry about saying that Erica, I didn't really mean to say it like that. But I am worried about you and I just wish to help see you become human and to be able to help you out any way I can. For a moment there was total silence, before Erica let out another roar and tears streamed from her eyes before Dr. Yujiro and Dr. Mafune started to laugh. What did I do? Midori, you might be smart for your age knowledge-wise, but not social-wise. Mifune said, trying to stifle his laughter and failing. If she wasn't crying out of sadness, then she was she crying about. Looking into her eyes I only saw one emotion. Joy. She was crying out of happiness. It's alright Erica I'm here for you, but can you please let me go? I think that you are starting to crack my ribs. I said, my eyes tearing up from happiness or the pain I don't know. With a reluctant roar Erica let me go, allowing me to fill my lungs up with air. Although it wasn't long before Erica strung a vine around my shoulders, its Venus flytrap-like mouth nuzzling against me. No problem. Basically this solution if more or less a form of advanced deoxyribonuclease that once completed will in a sense break down a majority of plant and gajira components from her DNA chain. It is impossible to fully get rid of them, but the amount cleaved off of her DNA chains should revert her to a human form, one that would fit in with our society today. However this process will be extremely painful for her once the solution is completed as this will effectively be breaking down Erica on a cellular level and could last anywhere from a few days to a few weeks on estimate. Yujiro said, getting Erika to growl at this. I guess that a transformation like that on the molecular level would affect one pretty badly especially with her regenerative capabilities. It's actually pretty horrifying to think about actually. But from the look of things, Erika was willing to take it if it meant regaining her humanity, and I would be with her every step of the way. If that is all, then when do you believe that you can complete the cure until the final step? I asked him, two weeks tops, maybe a bit shorter when the rest of the ingredients and staff move in here over the next few days. The lab will be prepped for the beginning steps of synthesizing the solution in about an hour, Dr. Mifune said. After that it will all be up to finding the final part of the solution, which we don't know how long it will be until we can find the final piece. Then I suggest you two start looking doc. We only have two months until we need to move off campus for UA's entrance exam, which I believe is more than enough time. Gordon said, walking in through the side door with covered in bruises, clothes torn in a few places, and a little blood dried blood at the corner of his mouth and from a gash on his forehead. He looked perfectly fine, which surprised me as a slightly winded All Might walked behind him with a bruise or two on him. How could he not look exhausted after sparring with All Might and in his current condition? It probably is. But still are you alright Agent Gordon? Yujiro asked the man. I'm fine, but Green Bean here needs to get to his training. Erica you can go with him as you wish. Gordon said before he pulled out. Was that a cigar? I thought that they stopped making those. That was a good match, my loss I will admit. That brings us up to 36 minutes 12 now. Gordon said as he pulled out a lighter and lit his cigar. So we try again in a few months like in the good old days. That's right, like the good old days. All Mike panted from the doorway. Sounds good to me. Gordon said as he took a puff of his cigar. Anyway what did I tell you Green Bean? You have training to do. So move on out. He finished sternly. Oh of course sir. I stuttered out before waving goodbye to the doctors, which they returned and running out the front door, with Erica accompanying me in the form of her spores. Slow down Midoriya. 
All Might said as he followed after me, before returning to his skinnier form coughing up blood. You're going the wrong direction. We are training over that way, he said, pointing to a small cluster of buildings to our right. My bad, I said as I broke to a stop, Erica's spores clinging onto me. It's alright, Gordon tends to have that effect on people. Still this training will be the same as the day we found Erica, though Aoki has supposedly programmed them to a more manageable level. So are you ready for this Midoriya? He asked. I am, I said, getting him to grin. Good, now let's go. All Might said before we walked over to the buildings. It has been over an hour and a half since I have started training and I am sore and once again bruised. All Might was right. Aoki has programmed two of these one-pointers to act on a more manageable level for me but the task at hand was still pretty difficult. Instead of shutting down just one of them, now I have to shut down both of them. With their eyes flashing green after I've hit the switch located on their chest. But that doesn't stop them from still attacking me as I had to work to disable the both of them in order to stop their attack. I managed to disable one of them about 15 minutes ago, so I have to shut the other one down. But that wasn't the worst part. No the worst part was. Dodge. All Might called out as Erica shot out two more wads of sap from her vines, barely missing me as I ducked under the punch of a one-pointer. No, the worst part was that All Might was continuing the dodge training with Erica randomly shooting out wads of sap every now and then making it difficult for me to dodge and attack at the robots at the same time. But this time it helped as on of the sap blasts had hit the one I deactivated into its visor and caused it to strike around randomly and slammed its fist into the other robot. I saw my chance and rushed to that robot, but it noticed me and rushed towards me, not giving up. I ran toward it as fast as my legs could take me and cocked back my fist. When it was right on top of me I punched it square in the chest and hitting the switch. Its visor turned green, before both of them flashed black. Finally it was over. Dodge. You have got to be kidding me. I shouted as I barely dodged three wads of sap. I am not and now you are done. That is what for nearly saying you were done. If there is one thing I have learned in my long career is that you never tempt Murphy's Law. All Might said sagely to me. Guess I was saying my thoughts out loud. Well I guess that's what I get I suppose. I'll try not to do it again. I said as All Might walked up to me and clapped a hand on my shoulder. That you do Midoriya. Better to learn it here than out there where it could cost you way more than a simple bruise. Anyway let's get you checked out and I'll bring the truck around for about an hour of removing trash off of Dagaba Beach then I take you home for the day. All Might said, getting me to nod. That sounds like a plan. I said, getting him to nod. Good, we just need to bring Erica back to the base and then we could head off. It would be dark by the time we make it to the beach, back to UA. And to your apartment Midoriya. All Might sighed out, getting Erica to roar at that. I'll be back tomorrow Erica, I promise. I said truthfully as All Might had been began to schedule when to visit her whenever I'm training at UA. Or not. Manly because he said that I was the one she was closest to right now dot 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 and the one most likely to keep her under control if she decides to rampage. Considering how she had once again wrapped me up with a vine is proof that both statements were true. Before me or All Might could do anything to stop her, we heard something thud to the ground and an audible click as well. Turning towards the source I saw the one-pointer had fallen over and had gotten back up, with a rock lodged into its switch. The robot picked itself up and its visor flashed red, resetting itself. And if this one resettled itself then the other one would. I didn't get a chance to think about it any longer as said robot rushed from my left side and punched me straight in my ribs. Young Midoriya. All Might shouted as he changed into his buff form, ready to destroy the robots. Only for Erica to let out a monstrous roar and wrapped me up in her vines. She pulled me closer to her and then enacted her vengeance. In the span of a few seconds she reduced the first robot into scraps with her vines, ripping it into pieces, impaling it with her spear-like vines, smashing it, and blasting it to kingdom come with her vines. It was downright merciful compared to what she did to the robot that hit me. For that one, she tore off its arms and wheel and started the beat on it with its own limbs adding the occasional stabbing with her vines. She carried that on for a straight minute before tossing the limbs away and brought the robot to her face. For a moment she glared out it and I noticed something within her eyes. Those weren't the eyes of the Erica I have known. No those were the eyes of a ferocious beast. And it was aiming all of its anger on that robot in particular. She let out a blood-chilling roar at the robot before letting loose the full might of her sap spray at it, burning the robot. She did this for a few more seconds before dropping the robot down and ripping its head off for good measure. She let out a small roar for victory, before her eyes shifted back to normal. Erica looked confused for a moment before noticing me and started to nuzzle herself against me once again, leaving me to wonder what was that about with her eyes, and of course giving me the full scope of her protectiveness for me, which was worrisome for me. If anyone tried to bully me with her around, I am afraid they might lose their limbs or much worse. Well that was unnecessary brutal, All Might said with a wince. At least we know now how far Erica is willing to go in order to protect you and that concerns me. I know. I said with a wince, clutching my rib. 
I think that punch must have cracked or bruised it. Upon seeing this Erica stopped her nuzzling and began to move back towards Monarch's base. Apparently Erica has the right idea Midoriya. Let us head back to base so you can get checked out and we warn them about this. Better for Monarch to know what happens if you get harmed and she goes on a rampage. All Might said walking to us. Sounds good to me. I groaned out, thinking only of the pain I am in in Erica's eyes. There was something disturbing about those eyes, but I can't tell just what it was. Only that I know that it would spell nothing but trouble if I ever saw it again. After that incident I was found to have a bruised rib and one grumbling recovery girl later I was better and continued with the planned training for the day. After that for most of the days the routine consisted daily of me training at Dagaba Beach or at UA school and meeting or hanging out with Erica. But occasionally I would think about those eyes and the unease they brought me. I had a theory about them and I prayed that it was wrong. But 16 days ago, I learned the hard way that I was right. And I wish I wasn't. After that day things seemed to pass along with my usual activities being visiting Erica at UA. Training, cleaning debris off of Dagaba Municipal Park, or school. But there were a few events that I can remember fondly. Starting with the second day of going back to school after meeting Erica. Kachin actually defending me dot 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 I in his own way of course. It was the end of the day for school. I was outside the entrance and getting ready to be picked up by All Might for some light training for the day when I stumbled onto something I never thought I'd I see. For the last effing time, I am not going to the arcade or anywhere else with you too. Kakin shouted at his friends. Kachin used to have three of them. But he washed his hands off of the damned coward for running away during the slime villain incident. In his own words of course. Now, now back you go. If you do not want to go to the arcade, we can accept that. Just hang out with us, mess around with some losers like before, and have some fun. We haven't really had any in months, said a tall boy around our age with brownish red hair and amber eyes. That was Shaitan, someone who had befriended Kachin during his first year at Aldera out of tormenting me. But he tormented anyone he didn't call a friend or someone he deemed useful to him. He enabled most of Kachin's bad habits, but luckily for once his stubborn streak seemed to have been to his benefit, it only not to be caught and get in trouble to risk his chances of going to UA. At and the friendship has strained significantly once he realized what Shaitan truly was. A troublemaker, a massive jerk to everyone, and a possible criminal. He was once suspended from school for allegedly cheating on and selling test answers at school. He was never caught. No evidence was found, they supposedly caught the real culprit, and it was all swept under the rug when it was clearly Shaitan, the later due to his quirk. Like the same way they the teachers tended to cover for Kachin when he got extra rough with anyone. Seriously Bakugu. All you do now brood and keep to yourself out of school. So why don't we go out and do something like mess with Deku for old times sake, said the other boy, who had long brown hair and sunken looking eyes. That was Tsurugi, another friend of Kachin and a former friend of mine before he awoke his quirk. He was the only one of Kachin's friends to have stuck with him for so long as Tsubasa mysteriously disappeared years ago. He also tended to pick on me, less so than the others do but he was still a jerk, less so than Kachin or Shaitan though as tended to be pushed around by them as well. And I keep telling you idiots that Deku is beneath me now, nothing more than a pebble on my road to become the number one hero. If by some divine miracle he does get into the entrance exam, he will finally realize what he truly is. A quirkless loser, Bakugu shouted, getting me to sigh at that. Months ago, those words would have hurt more than anything. But now, they hardly mean anything to me. Really now, is that the reason you chose to ignore him now and it isn't because he saved you from that villain months ago? Shaitan said, causing Tsurugi to back off and Kachin to fume. What did you say, you effing crook? Bakugu snapped at him. If Shaitan was offended by that notion, then he didn't show it. You heard what I said. Sure you were saved by All Might so your ego can excuse that. But Deku, that quirkless loser he was the first one there wasn't he? Your living punching back was the first one there to save you even after all the stuff you things that you and Tsurugi said to him and that oh so wonderful commit about him committing suicide by a swan dive. Shaitan said with a grin at the end, unnerving both me and Tsurugi and causing Kachin to flinch. I try my best not to think about what he said that day. Those words had hurt me greatly. Still do kind of. But I am on my way to becoming a hero and proving Kachin's words wrong. Speaking with which, he began to generate sparks in his hand as Shaitan continued to speak. Wish I was there that day to have seen Deku's expression when you told him that. It would have been glorious. Still he was the first one to rush to save you, like a effing idiot. So what are you leaving him alone for? Out of your pride refusing to acknowledge that you needed help or out of guilt for whatever Shaitan was going to say was cut off by Kachin discharging a small explosion in his hand. Listen here you damned crook. Whatever I do to that quirkless loser is none of your damned business. He is nothing but a pebble to me on the road on the way to becoming a hero. Bakugu said, before saying something through gritted teeth. 
But there is one thing about Deku that I can say that he has you beat. This surprised all three of us, but especially myself. Kachin hasn't even said anything that was the least bit nice about me and about dot 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 well forever. Really now, and pray tell how does the quirkless loser beat me? Shiten spat out venomously. I hate to say it, but he has more guts than you effing do you damned crook. Bakugo spat out through gritted teeth. Hell even Tsurugi has more guts than you do. That effing extra ran away at the sight of that effing slime ball. But Suguri and effing Deku, they were fools and foolishly tried to help me. More than what I could say about you. You probably would have just let me get possessed or let me die if you were to have made it out and skate. Shiten didn't deny his claims and only scowled at them, getting me to have a bad feeling at that. But Tsurugi, he looked almost stupefied at what Kachin admitted, especially about himself. Bakugu don't think anything about it Tsurugi. You are nothing more than an extra to me. Just one that is just a bit more important than the rest of them. Bakugu interrupted him, getting Tsurugi to look dejected at that and causing myself to sigh. Seriously. Why couldn't Kachin be honest with his feels and admit that he appreciates that he has stuck around all these years? Oh right, it was his pride. And what about me then? You were the only one sought me out two years ago. Shiten said. Only because unlike everyone else here you aren't an useless extra or a kiss ass. Bakugu said, getting Shiten to shrug at that. Fair enough. But that hasn't stopped the two of us have fun together tormenting others in the past. Still why have you given me the cold shoulder then these past few months? Was it getting suspended? Shiten said, his tone turning to mockery at the last part. Getting Kachin to growl at that. No it is because I found out what you truly do you damn crook. That effing test scandal and that effing little side business of yours. How the hell it hasn't been found yet is beyond me. I was going to wait until going to UA. But I might have to cut ties with you sooner and I will be effing glad to do so. Bakugu shouted at him, getting Shiten to frown. And what are you going to do? Tell on me. You're not a saint yourself. Spill everything and your precious record will tarnish by myself. Shiten said. At least I won't end up in a juvenile training school or worse with your record. So I will say this once. Continue to F with me or if I catch you messing with anyone including Deku and I will be spilling everything about you. You effing crook. Bakugu shouted, before stomping off. I followed Kachin's example and continued on to where All Might would be picking me up. Not wanting to deal with Kachin when he was this steamed up or whatever Shiten would do in retaliation. Also still in shock that Kachin complimented me or even defended me like that. Sure it wasn't much and the later practically meant nothing to him. But to me it meant something. He had acknowledged me as someone else besides a quirkless loser in his own words. It wasn't much, but it was a sign to me. A sign threat meant Kachin was changing, if just a little bit and that he wouldn't admit it. After that day I made sure to keep an eye out for both Kachin and Shiten. The two of them now wouldn't stop glaring at the other. It had gotten so bad that everyone at school was giving them a wide berth from the two with Tsurugi stuck in the middle. Through I came prepared in case any one of the two tried anything, hoping that I didn't need to. Sadly I did, twice in fact. But thankfully I was ready for both of those times. Anyway the rest of the day continued as normal, though I found myself starting to loathe dodge practice with each session with the robots. But as another part of training I got used to it. Still I didn't know at the time, but I was being watched during those sessions. Though I had a feeling that I was being watched, I first noticed the day after overhearing Kachin's and Shiten's spat, the day that Monarch truly began to develop their cure for Erika, and the day All Might added a hellish new part to my training regiment. I could only stare in amazement in the HQ's lab as it was bustling with activity. There were more scientists working on all facilities of the lab and all of them were for one purpose, to study Erika and develop her cure. Speaking of which, Erika growled at a few scientists who got a little too curious with her, causing them to run away in fright. I just sighed at that and placed a reassuring hand on her vines, getting the Venus flytrap-like appendage to nuzzle against me and causing her to calm down. This was the fifth time in the past hour and I believe that I was starting to get a little too good at this. Still it was better to do that than to have her lash out at someone. Rookies, you would think that working in an organization based on studying kaiju they would know better than to approach an awake one. Especially if that one is irritable if they aren't you Midoriya. Yujiro said with a sigh, approaching us from behind and whooping away the rookies so they would leave Erika alone. Thank you for that Yujiro. Wasn't sure how long that I could continue to hold her off like that. I said, removing my hand from her vine. Getting an annoyed roar from her. Considering that it is you, you could probably hold her off all week and she still would be putty in your hands. Yujiro said with a teasing smirk, getting my own face and Erika's face to dust red a little bit. Gee did he really had to say it like that. Still, Yujiro said, lowering his tone to a whisper and leaning towards me. By the way where is All Might? Director Sarazawa did say you were training under him to enter UA. An admirable goal, especially with one without a quirk, at least for now anyway. At those words, my mind stopped for a second, before rebooting. He knew All Might's secret. How? I asked in a whispered tone, trying my best to contain my shock. 
Simple Director Sarazawa told me as Dr. Mifune and Agent Gordon already knew from personal reasons and whatever they didn't know was debriefed to the three of us. So don't worry about it. I know how to keep a secret and besides Dr. Graham and Agent Duper only we know about it in Monarch at least. He whispered, getting me to breathe out a sigh of relief. So do you know where he is? Resting for now. Waiting to hear back from him to go into training. I replied getting Ujiro to nod. There was a lot of villain activity out today while I was out at school. And according to All Might he had nearly reached his limit for the day by the time he came to get me. So he was currently resting in Yue. S break room for now. Ready to come out when it was time for us to continue my training. Erica let out a small growl as another scientist got too close to her, getting me to sigh out and reach out my hand towards one of her vines. The effect was instantaneous and she proceeded to cease her growling. You heard what I told the others. Now please head back to your station before she potentially snaps at you. Ijiro warned, getting to scientists to nod nervously before bolting. Is she like this when I am not around? I asked hoping that I was wrong. Sadly my hopes were dashed when Ujiro shook his head. No, she is more unpredictable when you are not around. Erika can go from silently sulking to snapping at the slightest movement. You are the only one who can calm her down when she gets agitated without having to get physical with her. So much so Sarazawa is planning on sending more of our agents from Antarctica in order to have some extra muscle here if Erika continues to act this way. Speaking of which we also have something being sent here from Antarctica. Something you are familiar with. Yujiro said before waving over to a nearby scientist. Can you please call some agents bring us a fold-up table into the lab please? On it sir. He called out. Before fulfilling Dr. Yujiro's orders. I wonder what thing he is talking about when said something familiar to me is coming from Antarctica. There is one. Wait did he said Antarctica? They have a base in Antarctica. The place where one of the most dangerous kaiju was frozen. Please tell me what I think is there isn't there. If it is and it awakens then we are all going to die. Before I could get into a panic attack or possibly faint, Erica wrapped me in her vines and held me close, evidently trying to soothe me. Her face expressing concern dot 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 well as best he could anyway. Erica was trying her best to calm me down. While her concern was touching, it wasn't working because of one reason. Erica, I can't breathe. I gasped out as one of her vines was starting to crush my rib cage. She promptly released me and I started to refill my lungs with air. Erica started to let out a sorrowful growl as I rose back to my feet. I'm alright Erica, but please do not grab me like that again. I appreciate your concern but I would appreciate it more if AI was able to breathe. Okay, I said, getting Erica to let out another soft roar. Well you did manage to snap me out of it. Next time try a gentler way okay. Erica let out in soft growl as she nuzzled one of her vines against my arm, seeming to understand. Never a dull moment with you two is it? Dr. Mifun said as he walked towards us with a metal briefcase in his hands. Dr. Mifun there you are, you are a little late. Yujiro said as two agents set up the table and promptly left as Erica growled at them. Had lunch with catching up with my daughter and son-in-law. It's not often I am back in Japan after all. Dr. Mifun said as placed the suitcase on the table before turning to me. So you figured out what is Antarctica? Wait there is another Ghidorah down there. I shouted in fear, looking about ready to faint. The world barely survived one of them. Another one would be a world-ending nightmare if it awoke. Not quite. A distant ancestor if the blood sample we got and compared were of any indication along with a quadrupedal appearance. Once we took the blood, we sealed it up airtight and prepared arguably the most defensive stronghold on the planet where it remains sleeping. At the slightest hint that if it were to awake, we are prepared to hit it with enough firepower to level a country. So far nothing yet and we hope that it never awakens. So we leave it alone as trying to kill it might risk waking it and unleash another Ghidorah onto the world. Yujiro said harshly. Not that I blame him. One was enough, but two. I pray to whatever dirty is listening that it stays under the ice. We already had enough close to mass extinction events in the era of Kaiju and I would prefer to live to never experience one myself. I am going to have nightmares tonight. I felt a vine wrapped around me as Erica pulled myself close towards her and started to nuzzle herself against me. Letting out soft growls as nuzzled herself against me in another effort to comfort me. This time working, if just a bit. The thought of a possible apocalypse arriving in your lifetime will do that to you I suppose. But right now Erica was trying her best to help me not to faint at this point. So I will do my best not to falter. To not show my fear. And continue onwards just like all might would. Minus going home after everything today. Eating dinner and crashing straight into bed and into nightmares. The panic is settling and isn't. Don't worry I had the same experience when I was first stationed there. It should pass within a day or two. Dr. Mifune said with a shiver. At least you don't have to worry about it possibly waking up while you are asleep so close to it. Now that takes years to get used to. I do not need that train of thought. Thank you very much. Okay just take a few breaths and then continue. And that is what I did. Trying to calm myself and not think of possible apocalypse to come. 
You calm down enough. Ijiro asked after a minute or two, getting my to nod shakily while Erika is still trying to comfort me. Good. Now as you know, with that monstrosity locked in the ice, Antarctica is our most secure base. Along with the fact no one has dared approach that site and the fact most of Antarctica has been recognized as the world's largest nature reserve for the last century most people stay clear of the base. So we transport any kaiju artifacts there for study before deciding which facility to transport it to, unless it is deemed too dangerous and is stored in the facility. Well that made perfect sense. Anything that held and was ready to possibly be vaporized in order to hold back a Ghidorah level kaiju would have to be the most secure place on the planet, so it would be impossible for anyone to steal within that base, unless someone steals it within transit to or from which is a good possibility. And then there is the objects in question. Kaiju DNA has been highly sought after, especially since after the era of kaiju ended. It is illegal to experiment with the DNA as not only what happened to Erika, but kaiju DNA and quirks do not mix. Anything created from kaiju DNA causes death from anywhere to radiation poisoning to long-term cancer. Still hasn't prevented anyone from foolishly trying to experiment with it though. That did not explain why there are same people with DNA match kaiju due to traits in their quirks which were more often mutant types. Injecting foreign kaiju DNA would result in the same thing. The number how people who has tried that has decreased significantly over the past 50 years thankfully. The number of kaiju resources out in the open and the black market has decreased significantly. And thankfully no one has managed to steal from any of our transports. But our less secure facilities on the other hand, that is a different story. Also can you please quiet your mumbling please? Yujiro sighed out, getting me to freeze. I did it again, didn't I? Sorry about that. I said, getting the doctors to wave it off. So if you are bringing something here from Antarctica, then it must be related to Erika. But how would I be familiar with it unless it has something to do with her cure? I asked, before I remembered something. On the same day we found Erika, there was one thing else with her. A crystal covered with her blood and emitting cosmic radiation. It's that crystal isn't it? I asked, getting the two doctors to nod. It is and the results were quite curious if I must say so myself. Dr. Mifune said as he opened the case. At the sight of the exposed crystal, Erika's grip on me loosened up and she began to let out a menacing growl. And her eyes glazed over, just like that time a few days ago with one of her vines starting to rise up, ready to impale the crystal and the table. Erica calmed down, I said, grabbing her vine and snapping her out of her gaze. It is just a crystal, whatever it is please calm down. I don't want the agents to have to hurt you, I said, pointing behind her. Erica turned behind her to see a number of monarch agents at the ready, tranquilizer guns and quirks trained on her. With each trank that I have been told were packing enough dosage to knock out a bull with a single shot. Not sure how effective it would be against considering her regenerative capabilities would probably flush it out of her system, but it would most likely slow her down. Not that I was willing to see that happen off course. So Erica, can you please calm down? I asked as Erica looked between the myself and the agents. She looked between the two of before letting out a soft growl and wrapped a vine around me. She was calming down a bit, but the crystal had her on edge. Considering how Erica was bleeding out when she crashed into Dagaba Municipal Park, there was definitely a connection of some kind. All right people stand back, but keep a few triggers aimed towards Erica and the crystal. If that thing can cause Erica to react like that, then that thing is bound to be nothing but trouble. Yujiro barked out, getting most of the agents to comply and to lower their arms and deactivate their quirks. Crisis averted, for now. All right that crystal has connect to Erica's condition when she crashed back to Earth. It seems whatever happened must have horrific considering what it is made of. Dr. Mifun sighed out. The crystal is made from made from Erica's very cells. What? Erica let out a rather loud roar at that, getting the agents to train on her once again before Yujiro signaled them, getting most of to back off. Seems like Erica is just as shocked as me on this one. What could cause something like that to form crystals from someone without a quirk? Unless of course it was from the cosmic radiation that director Sarazawa detected off of it. Space was still mainly unknown to humanity due to being thrown back progress-wise quiet a bit with the era of kaiju and the emergence of quirks, along with Erika having been in space for nearly 300 years at this point. She could have picked up something up deep in space to cause something like this to happen with her cells. Is there anything else you know of the crystal or does it still affect Erika? I asked, concerned for her. Something that causes you to sprout crystals from one cell was not good for anyone, even those with high regenerative capabilities like Erika. That while it is made from Erica's cells, the DNA match puts it at as 87.4% resemblance as Erica since nothing on Earth has a similar cell structure to her. Though the crystal has cell walls more pronounced cell walls than Erica's own and lacks any chlorophyll and is much more like a mix of Kajira's and human cells than Erica's own. Other than that the crystal is more like dead skin and we have found no traces so far on Erica. But we are going to perform some more tests on Erica over the next few days in order to get a definitive answer. 
Dr. Yujiro said, getting Erika to release a loud roar of annoyance at that. I feel sorry for anyone who will be checking up on Erika if that roar is of any indication. That and various agents and scientists began shivering around us. The next few days are probably going to be nothing but headaches for them. Still no wonder Erika would react like that. Whatever caused her cells to crystallize like that must have been extremely painful for her it as it temporarily altered part of herself on the genetic level. Though this crystal does provides us with many unknowns, it does provide us with a little hope for Erika, Dr. Mifune said with a smile, stunning both me and Erika. How does that provide any hope for Erika if the very sight of it caused her to lash out? Unless, didn't you said that the cells within the crystal were similar, yet different to Erika's own? I asked Yujiro, getting him to nod, so it shows that the cure would work after all. That is correct. What we are going to do for Erika has never been attempted on Earth before. But this crystal, it is proved that it is actually possible to pull this of if there if it is of any indication. He said, getting a rather loud and joyous roar from Erika. I don't blame her, as a wide smile spread across my face. There was actually proof that this cure would work. Sure it ultimately altered part of her genetics temporarily and apparently caused her severe pain. But it should that there was proof that Erika could be cured. Everything before day was just hope. But now, Erika and I had both hope and proof that this cure could work once it was finished and fine-tuned. Hate to break the mood, but Bean Sprout Yagi is waiting for you outside. And take Erika with you. Can of her scaring my agents shitless like that for the rest of the day. Agent Gordon called out, scaring me and a few agents around us. Of course sir. I shouted out before waving goodbye to the agents as Erika broke up into spores, seemingly a little annoyed by what Gordon said. Thank you for everything. I shouted at them before exiting the base, my spurts having been raised from the very depths after the reveal of what lies in Antarctica, thinking that nothing at the moment could go wrong. I should probably seriously consider not tempting Murphy's Law with my thoughts after today. For All Might's newest form of training at first consisted of more dodging, but later on instead of sparring against robots now I was fighting against Erika herself. Of course the goal was not fighting against her and winning. That was impossible as besides being borderline immortal Erika is still a kaiju. No, there was a focus mid attached to one of her vines that I had to hit three times in order for my training to be done for the day. All while dodging Erika blasting her sap at me, dodging her sweeping vines, and having to deal with her breaking into spores and reforming away. I managed to hit it many times, mainly because I believed that she was intentionally going easy on me. It was still difficult to hit, because once again Erika was still a kaiju. But that wasn't the worst part. No, the worst part that even if I had managed to land on the focus pad, all Might would have me repeat the process again unless I managed to hit the focus pad by throwing a punch or kick correctly. I have been doing this for an hour and I have managed to land two hits in. But considering that I managed to land three hits within the first five minutes it was getting increasingly difficult to land a correct hit. Like just now as I managed to land a hit in. But All Might blew a whistle, meaning that I had messed up the hit. Erica pulled back with low growl before fixing All Might a small glare. Just like every time I mess up a hit or manage to land a hit. Which considering she did it whenever we trained the both of us had gotten used to her doing this. Wrong again young Midoriya. All Might said, coughing up some blood before walking up to me. You are getting better. But to throw a cross punch make sure that that your back foot is pivoted. That the hand opposite of the one you are using remains close to your face in order to block. And you strike with the first two knuckles. Like this. All Might then proceeded to demonstrate it a few times. With myself trying my best to copy him. After a few tries he stopped and focused on helping me get the move right. Like any other time I managed to hit the focus pad incorrectly. I think that should be enough for now Midoriya, ready to try again. All Might asked, getting Erika to once again growl at him. I am. But All Might I have something that I have been meaning to ask. I asked, how did you manage to convince to go along with this? I figured she would sooner try to eat Nezu or lash out at All Might than agree to this kind of training with the chance that she might critically injure me. Which thankfully hasn't happened yet and she was doing her best to not injure me deliberately. Honestly it was difficult, but I managed to convince her to do so dot 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 by promising that you would stick with her for the rest of your stay here dot 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 with no protest from you of course. All Might said with a sigh. Why would he have to promise her that? I could have done that without any question. Unless, she wanted me to be wrapped in her vines and to not let go, didn't she? The way Erica roared out only confirmed my suspicions. This was not going to be a fun experience for me after this, isn't it? Keep it together Izuku. You are going to finish this and take Silase and the fact that you will be going home early. After all mom wanted to spend some more time with me after I had spent most off the time these past few weeks away from home and training while not in school. So I would only have to do it for about an hour before he had to get home. I can do this. I rushed at Erica, who let out a rather loud roar before swipping a vine out towards me. I ducked under it before Erica swipped two more towards me. After ducking under them, she spat out a few wads of sap and I barely dodged any of them. 
A moment later one of her vines wrapped around me and pushed me toward the ground, before picking back up and gently pushing me back towards the ground. Well as gently as a 4 meter tall kaiju could be anyway, which wasn't that much at all. Groaning out in pain, Erica picked me back up and leveled the vine with the focus pad towards my, while all her other vines raised behind her, sap building up in the ones ending in Venus flytrap-like mouths. This is not going to end well. Erica let loose the sap forcing me to dodge. Though a few managed to hit me and I had to hold back a wince at the sting it brought upon contact. Then she started mixing in one or two of her vines swinging at me among the barrage of sap, making it even more difficult for me to make it to the focus pad. After a few minutes and getting pelted by the barrage of sap I managed to make it to the focus pad and tried to hit it. But Erica wrapped one of her vines around my arms before more wrapped myself. Erica then let out a soft roar as if to apologize for something. I had no idea what she was planning on doing, but I dreaded finding out. I was proven right when Erica threw me high up into the air. I resisted the urge scream out in freight as I fell back to the ground, with Erica reaching out reaching out multiple vines in order to catch me, including the one with the focus band on it. In that moment an idea flashed through my mind, something crazy that would result in myself possible injuring myself. But it will also end this session and Erica catching me. Was it worth the risk maybe, but it was still worth a shot. So as I descended towards the ground, I pivoted one of my feet midair to shift my weight towards the target. Then I pulled the one leg back and straightened my other one to deliver a roundhouse kick to the focus band, figuring that the momentum of myself falling would increase the power of my kick and enable it to be even more likely to land the kick in. And right I was, for my foot hit the target. But I had forgotten to calculate one thing, the pain, for both me and Erica. Erica's vine let out a loud hiss as it wrapped around me and I let out a pain-filled yell as the pain surged through my nervous system from my foot and the sound of static buzzed in my ears. I had miscalculated how hard my foot was going to hit the focus band. Erica lowered me down to the ground while All Might checked my foot before letting out a sigh of relief. Nothing broken thankfully. Looks like you just stubbed all of your toes though. All Might sighed out, getting me to calm down somewhat. At least I should be able to walk fine sooner or later, but due to the foot being where a majority of nerve endings are located it is going to hurt like all Yomi for a while. Still while I will admit young Midoriya that was impressive, that was a big risk you could have taken. If you had missed your target you could have token your leg or worse. All Might said, I know, but I trusted that no matter what Erica would catch me. I said, getting a loud roar of what I guess was appreciation before wrapping me up in her vines and began nuzzling against me. She has been waiting for this for a while I suppose. Fair enough I suppose. But I have to admit I will have to rework your training once again dot 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 that and it looked like my hopes may have been dashed a little bit. All might side out, coughing up blood. What do you mean by that? I asked, concern lacing my tone at why All Might would ask such a thing. I had hoped that I would train you to fight like myself. This recent training being a test to see how you would do. But in the end, it seems like if I had carried out with your original training. Then by the time that you would inherit one for all it would have been more detrimental to you in the long run. Perhaps by the time either of us realized this then it would have taken longer for you to adjust yourself. But now while we are still conditioning your body for one for all it would best to find a fighting style that would suit you best. That way there would be less risk of long-term damage for your body. All Might said seriously, getting Erica to let out a roar in agreement. That was actually a good idea. While I was sad that I wouldn't be able to learn how to fight like All Might. What he said makes sense. If we kept going the same way with my training and had gotten one for all, then I might reach a point where I might risk injuring myself so far that it might cut my dreams of becoming a hero short for good. So it was for the best we find something now in order for that not to happen. Erica let out a loud roar, cutting me off from my thoughts before wrapping me tighter in her vines. You never change with your mumbling Midoriya, even after all these months of training. All Might said with a grin. I will ask around and do some research in order to find a suitable style for you and plan for that. But for now, I believe that you should get some rest as you deserve it. At that Erica let out a loud roar and proceeded to wrap around me tighter. This was going to be a long hour, though I could do without the sound of static in my ears. After that hour was up and All Might had to pry me off of Erica and he drove me home. He stayed with me and mom for a bit and then it was me and her for the rest of the night, which was pretty uneventful. Until I fell asleep and had nightmares of a three-headed kaiju breaking free and wrecking havoc on the earth. It was only that one night thankfully, which was a rarity according to Yujiro. After that the next few days were the same, with All Might having me spar against Erika the same way once or twice in order to help determine a better style for myself. While he was doing that I did a little looking up myself, but I didn't find much that could help out. But it all came to a head about 18 days ago, when I had to put it into practice. It was also the day things started to take a turn for the worst, something all of us should have noticed sooner. All the signs were there, we just didn't notice it until it was almost too late. 18 days before today, that was when things started to take a turn for the worst for Erica. 
An issue that was previously unnoticed with her came to light that day and it was something that had everyone concerned, especially towards me. As for myself, I was suffering a problem on my own that day. It had all come to a head after I had left school for the day. That is when it had all happened. Not far from Monarch's temporary base lied what could be described as a concrete bunker with giant glass windows and security posted all over. This bunker was where Erika would stay most of the time when she wasn't being tested on, or with Izuku. It was also more reinforced and secure with custom security outfitted by Agent Aoki as they were still dealing with a kaiju, who even in a reduced form was still potentially more than enough to be a threat to most pro heroes out there, which explained the advanced security doors into it, but not the nervous-looking agents surrounding Yujiro along with Agent Aoki and one of UA. As teachers, snipe. It was time to run some more tests on Erika and it had been a while since the guards outside had heard any of her roaring so it was best to check up on her. Still it was not going to be a pleasant experience. With Midoriya not spending any time here for training today, Erika was less than pleased when she heard the news. I know this level of security is necessary, but I would have thought all of you would have been used to Erika's presence by now. So why are all of you nervous? Especially you snipe I am sure that you have many things scarier than Erika dot 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 well in her current state anyway. Yujiro said, getting the pro hero to nod, that I have, but she has lately been developing quite the nasty habit lately, one that I am certain would frighten most pro heroes, Snipe said with a shudder as the second security closed with a hiss behind them as the group walked down a small hallway into the greenhouse and to a final set of doors. Really now, and what has she done this time? Yujiro said, having gotten used to reports of Erika terrorizing anyone whenever she wasn't being tested on or when Izuku was within a two-kilometer radius of her. They were still trying to figure out how she was able to do that. Anyway it seemed like Erika had a habit of terrorizing anyone when she was either particularly bored or if they had offended her in some way. Like calling her Biolente, especially around Izuku. One of the rookies found out the hard way once the boy left. It was all agreed that he was a moron for provoking her to do so. He was lucky that he only had a broken rib, so he would prefer not to deal with any kind of nasty surprises. He already had to vacate his apartment as they were going to be spraying it for insects until tomorrow and he had to figure out how to sneak his house guest into the base until it got the all clear. It is something straight out a horror movie. Erica breaks herself into spores and disappear into the dirt, waiting minutes at a time before resurfacing and reforming anywhere around us roaring and wrapping us in her vines. It is horrifying, Aoki shouted with shuddering getting the other agents to follow suit and Yujiro to sigh. This is not going to end well. The final door opened and all the agents and Snipe crowded around Yujiro. There was no sign of her. The group entered her greenhouse, the inside consisting of several rooms all fitted with dirt and a central room with a TV, couch, desk, some weights, a mini fridge, and a few other human necessities. That room was created for whenever Izuku visited and where Erika spent the most time around whenever he wasn't training. The walls all had marks from any previous events to she had made to get out whenever she wanted to see Izuku after hours, bored, or dealing with putting her to sleep for the night. Yet there was still no sign of Erika, unless she was still hiding in the soil. Still it was better to be on the safer side after all. Agent Aoki, did you receive any kind of notifications from any of the systems you had in place? Yujiro asked, getting the agent in question to shake his head. No sir, but then again the reception here always goes down in the surrounding area every time Erika breaks apart into spores. Still the security systems should have captured if she tried anything to escape. The terminal should be in the central room, he said, getting the hematologist to nod. Good, then you should be able to access that on your own, Yujiro said, getting Aoki to start to shake in fear. He was going in alone to where Erika preferred to stay, with the kaiju in question possibly lurking underneath his feet, with said kaiju holding a grudge against him even after nearly two weeks for a simple mistake. This was going to suck. Aoki broke out of his stupor once he realized that the others were checking out the rest of the greenhouse. Not wanting to be left alone and easy pickings for Erika, he flew to terminal in record time. In one of the makeshift rooms Yujiro, Snipe, and the two agents were searching for any traces where Erika was hiding. After a minute of searching Yujiro noticed something on the ground and half buried in the dirt. He pulled it up to reveal that it was one of Erika's fang-like thorns, the bottom of it broken off. The tip of it still looked sharp. But what was the most curious to him was that through several small cracks in the teeth were bits of concrete. Agent Aoki do you have anything on the cameras in this room, more specifically for Erika being around the walls? Yujiro asked through his earpiece. Of course, just give me a minute. Aoki said as he checked the feed on the terminal and noticed that it was for a better term. Shoppy, any footage with Erika in that room was overshadowed by her spores fluttering over the camera and blocking its view. Until an earlier time today where it captured feet of Erika sealing off part of the wall using hair sap very carefully. The only clear footage of the room was of today and Erika was sealing wall with her sap recently. It should be easy to spot and I'll contact the base to help clear it up. Aoki said, contacting Yujiro. 
Make sure that you do and any traces of Erika so far. Yujiro said as he found the spot in what looked to be fresh sap holding it together. It was going to be difficult to clear away. But maybe if... Snipe do you have any incendiary rounds? Yujiro asked through his earpiece. Normally I wouldn't. But considering we are up against a mini kaiju I figured they would help. Also you might want to take a few steps away from your current spot. Snipe said, getting the hematologist to back up as a shot rang out through the greenhouse. The bullet hit the sap dead on and ignited the sap, causing a small fire to lit around the wall and pieces of the wall started to peel off one by one. Curious never seen Erika's sap act like this before. Yujiro said as the fire died down and revealed a sealed portion of the wall, getting his eyes to widen in horror. Oh hell, Aoki, I just saw and discovered on of the vents had been busted up. There is a freaking kaiju on the loose. Aoki panicked from the control terminal and one smarter than we should have expected, Yujiro said as he began to call the base. The subject of Erika's intelligence was up for debate as her erratic behavior whenever Midoriya wasn't around and occasional bouts of animalistic behavior mudded just how smart she was. But this only solidified just how intelligent she was. For carved into the wall and preserved by a layer of sap was something written in perfect kanji, with possibly even more judging by the revealed portion on the wall. What was written though was what worried them the most. It was dated to today and read simply as this. I am tired of the waiting and tests. I want to see Izuku again. Anything that tries to stop me will be destroyed. School had just ended and right now I should have been on my way home by now. Except I was being followed by Tsurugi. He did the same thing to me two days ago before Kachin called him over and All Might took me to training right after school yesterday. At first I thought that it was just a coincidence, but this was the third day in a row he had followed me. I had known him for the past 10 years of most of which was only from a distance, and in all that time I know that whenever he is around, Kachin or Shaitan could only be close by. Surveying my surrounds I saw an alleyway that was a shortcut home and ran through it, with Tsurugi pursuing close behind. I ran as fast as I could and saw a familiar fork in it and hide behind a dumpster on the right path as Tsurugi ran past it. Alright he bought it. That path leads to a dead end. It should buy me some time away from him and whoever he is with and wait at home until All Might would come to pick me up for training. Plus I needed to get out from behind here. This was behind a Chinese restaurant. It smells and I am pretty sure a rat just ran across over my leg. I bolted from behind the dumpster and ran back home without even looking back. When I had just about exited the alleyway something grey and reflective flew towards me. Thanks to my recent training with All Might, it was easy to dodge. Especially since this was always to opening move of Shiten. So the rumors were true, you have been working out. Or at least learned how to dodge. That still won't help you out you quirkless loser. Shaitan said, a grey blob forming in his hand and rushing towards me. He tried to strike me with the blob in his hand, but I pulled back and reached into my pocket. I honestly should have expected Shaitan to have acted like this sooner with Kachin threatening him. But I didn't expect this. Surugi now. Shaitan called out as he pulled his arm back and my former friend grabbed me by the arm. Before I could move away two grey blobs slammed into us, binding his hand to my arm and his other hand into the wall behind us before they hardened. Shaitan what the hell? Surugi shouted as Shaitan lobbed a few more blobs at our feet, binding them to the roadway. Sorry about this Surugi. just need to make sure Deku doesn't run away. Shaitan said, not looking sorry at all. I am going to free you after I knock some sense with the quirkless loser. Knock it off Shaitan. We both know that you're lying and that you will leave us both here. I said, catching both him and Surugi off guard. Before getting the former the laugh. Nice jest Deku. Almost made me think that you gained some guts. Shaitan said as he generated a grey blob in his hand. It has been a long while since I showed you your true place Deku. And if you did so Bakugo will spill everything he knew. I thought you were going to talk down to Deku. Not lay your hands on him. Surugi said. Getting Shaitan to shake his hand with a smirk. Really now? Well you will just have to wait here because I am going to get Kachin here to see you and Deku and give him a warning. Try to take me down and I will carry him down with me. Add in the fact he will cut you loose when he finds you like this. Add in a slightly battered Deku and I call that a good day. Shaitan said with a sadistic grin. Normally I would have to think twice against fighting Shaitan. Even now I was a little frightened. Shaitan was always been like this and had only gotten worse since his suspension. His idea of slightly battered was to coat his hands with a thin layer of his quirk mercury and hitting his victims once or twice. I've only experienced it once and believe me it hurts. Considering his quirk allows him to create a liquid-like metallic substance from his calorie reserves and how hardened it is by the amount of iron in diet it hurts a lot. But this time I wasn't a first year scared of the possibility that he would become a second Kachin. I knew his weakness and the reason why he did not mess with Kachin. Shaitan coated his hand in the metallic blob and rushed towards me only to recoil his hand in pain as I lit the pocket light I had in my free hand. While Shaitan's quirk was excellent for capture, it had a glaring weakness to heat. Even a small flame was capable of burning away his metallic constructs quickly. More than once Kachin had to put it mildly, 
made sure Shaitan didn't get too full of himself with his explosion. You are not going to do anything to us Shaitan, I came prepared. I said to Shaitan, before he formed a metallic blob and used it as a whip to steal the lighter from my hand, and I was counting on it. Of course you had this you quirkless stalker. Should I be honored or disgusted that you probably have pages about your journal? Maybe both, Shaitan said before he flung the metallic blob with the lighter in it onto a nearby wall. While he did that I leaned over to Tsurugi and reached for another lighter in my uniform's pocket. I had made sure to carry two or three lighters on me since I overheard their conservation the other day. Hoped that I was being paranoid, but they proved useful. What are you doing? Tsurugi asked as I ignored the lighter and freed his hand. Getting you out of here, I said before handing him the lighter to his surprise. Shaitan is after me, not you. Not true Midoriya and a foolish choice to hand him your only means to escape. That coward is just going to run as soon as he my eyes. Shaitan shouted out in pain while clutching his eyes. You talk too much, Surugi said as he retracted two of his fingers and ignited the lighter and quickly freed his other arm and then my feet. Now we're even, let's get out of here. Good idea, I said, knowing that if I could get home and possibly get Surugi with me it will be all over for Shaitan. Considering I have been on the receiving end of his threats for years, I know Kachin will follow through with them. You are not going anywhere, Shaitan shouted and swung his arm while creating a metallic whip. Midswing it split apart into several blobs that spread out in random with me and Tsurugi dodging all of them as best we could. All Might's training to dodge was finally paying off. Both me and Tsurugi continued to dodge this same tactic before a metallic blob slammed into my former friend's hand. Damn it, Tsurugi shouted as he tried to stretch his fingers out to attack Shaitan. But another blob collided with his hand and body and slammed into the nearby wall. That's it, time to teach both of you losers your true place. Shaitan shouted and looking quite a bit exhausted, coating both of his hand in metallic slime before hardening it around his fists while adding a set of metallic spikes to them on the knuckles. H has he gone insane. I didn't have time to continue my train of thought as he rushed forward and I barely got my head out of the way of his fist, which embedded itself a few centimeters into the wall. He was trying to kill me. Stand still you quirkless loser and accept what you deserve. Shaitan said as he removed his from the wall and rushed towards me. Why would I do that? You're trying to kill me. I shouted as I barely dodged one of his fists. At least not on purpose. All I am trying to do is cripple you and reduce you to your true place. In the dirt at my feet like the quirkless loser you are Deku. Shaitan said sadistically as he took another swing. Barely getting me to dodge out of the way. That was worse. If I get hit even once it will all be over. So I just continued with All Might's training and continued to dodge. After a few near misses I started to notice a pattern with his strikes. Each time he tried to hit me, he couldn't quite hit me. He was slower than I was, but he made up for it with reach and power. An easy enough pattern to dodge and with Shaitan getting angrier and angrier with each strike missing he only got sloppier. Stand still Deku, you are only making it hard on yourself. Shaitan shouted out before he noticed something behind me and grinned. He tried to deliver a sloppy haymaker to my head and getting me to dodge, only for him to rush past me and towards. Surugi, leave him alone. I shouted before running after him. It only took me a second to catch up to him. Too late Deku, I'm taking you both down. Shaitan said as he turned and tried to hit me in the gut. Noticing his stance I tripped him and caused Shaitan to fall backwards. Mid-fall he hooked his leg with mine and sent us both sprawling to the ground. He was the first to the recover and tried punch in the stomach, giving me barely enough time to roll away from his iron-clad fist. That was too close. I needed to get an opportunity to get free from him or else I was finished. Shaitan placed his knee onto my stomach and pulled back his left arm to attack. Just give up already. Shaitan roared out as he tried to hit me. If there was ever a time to react, now would be the time. Without even a second thought I pushed myself off the ground and kicked his free leg out from under him. Shaitan was sent falling down into the ground, but not before trying to hit me once again. But not this time. I grabbed his left forearm with both my arms and pushed it back, causing his metallic clad fist to slam into face. Shaitan screamed out in pain as he melted the metal over his left and unclutched his bleeding face. I really hope that I didn't hurt him too badly. Still, I can't believe that I just did that. I mumbled out in disbelief before pulling out my last remaining lighter and ran over to the equally as stunned Tsurugi. Eight and a half months ago I couldn't even dream with something like that. All Might's training had paid off, but if my brief scuffle with Shaitan showed anything I still had a long way to go. Despite my training and All Might's beginning to teach me how to fight for the past almost two weeks I barely made it out of fighting Shaitan without a scratch and that was from utilizing the weakness in his fighting style and two years of analysis. Even then I knew that he wouldn't be down for long. I needed to free Tsurugi and get us out of here and hopefully home. Once there we need to notify someone of what Shaitan has done. He had crossed the line too far, admitting to wishing to cripple me and didn't care if he killed me or Tsurugi. Add into the fact his previous behavior and what Kachin knew about him it was safe to say he was well on his way to becoming a villain. 
Shaking off this thoughts I freed the still surprised Tsurugi. It took a few seconds to get the lighter on and I had managed to free Tsurugi from the wall his expression quickly turned into panic. He pushed me away from him, just in time for Shaitan to strike right where we just were. Shaitan turned towards me, a piece of metal embedded under his left eye and bleeding quite a bit, possibly either one of the spike from his metallic fists, or a piece he created to slow the bleeding and seal the wound. Either way add in the pure murderous look in his eye. He was honestly quite terrifying. Along with that he was defiantly aiming to kill both me and Shaitan for real this time. Die Deku. Shaitan roared out as he was too close for me to dodge properly. I tried to think of a way out but he began to generate a metallic blob in order to trap me. There was no way for me to get out of the way without being hit. So I began to brace for the inevitability of the metallic blob to at least hit me until I saw a light. More accurately something that should have been impossible at this location. Erica's spores. Why and how was she here? What the hell? Shaitan shouted out as the spores wrapped around his arm and formed into vines that pulled him into the center of the alleyway and began to gather together. All of his previous behavior turned into fear as he came face to face with a pissed off Erika growling at him. I could only hope that Erika had mercy on him as Shaitan began to scream out in fear as Erika let out an ear-piercing roar. I moved closer to Erika in the hopes that I could calm her down enough so she didn't rip him apart, only for Tsuruga's elongated fingers to wrap around my arm and drag me away from her. Surugi, what are you doing? I asked as he fearfully began to drag me away from Erika. You were almost killed in this alley Midoriya. I don't know about you, but I feel like not dying here to some villain or shite. Surugi screamed as he began to pull me even harder away from the two. Considering Erika was here and was possibly about to kill shite I couldn't let that happen while also being thankful Surugi believed that she was a villain and not dot 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 well Erika's former self. That would have set her off even more. However I was also caught off guard by something he said. Did you just call me Midoriya and not Deku? I asked in shock. He never called me anything but Deku since he stopped being my friend a decade ago. Along with Kachin. Talk later, run for our lives now. Surugi shouted as he continued to drag me along. Turning pale white when he caught Erika's attention. She looked between the two of us and Shaitan wrapped up in her vines before letting off a soft growl and tossing Shaitan to the ground. She turned towards us and let out another roar before slamming one of her vines into Shaitan's face, causing him to collapse onto the ground and spasm as he coughed up blood and spat out quite a few teeth. The good news was that I believe Erika was done with Shaitan for now and he was alive, though I doubt that he was going to be alright for quite a while after that. The bad news was that Erika let loose one more roar before she began to break up into spores and float towards us. You have got to be shitting me. Midoriya we have to get out of here now. Surugi said as he began to run with myself following Sweet. I had an idea on how to separate Erika from Tsurugi and save him from her wrath and possibly share Shaitan's current fate, along with the possibility to buy time so I could contact Monarch on where Erika is. Surugi, when we get to the fork in the alleyway I'll lure the villain away, you go get help, I said, getting him to stare at me in shock. Are you crazy? We are dealing with a villain with not only a horrendous mutation quirk but the ability to break themselves into some kind of light. You alone barely managed to get hit by Shaitan, so what are the odds of you winning against that? He shouted, pointing at the cloud of Erika's spores. None at all. But if I distract the villain for a minute you should be able to escape to go get help. With its speed we will be caught in no time. It will be better if the villain had one target to capture instead of two. I said seriously, getting Tsurugi to look at me in surprise, before looking back at the rapidly approaching form of Erika's spores. Don't need to tell me twice. After I make sure the police are on the way I that will come back for you. Just make sure to get of this alive, Surugi said, getting me to nod as we reached the fork. I took off towards the dead end and Erika's spores soon followed. Not even a minute later I reached the dead end and Erika wrapped me up in her vines as she reformed and began nuzzling herself against me. With how tight her vines were I could barely move and if I moved even the slightest bit they only tightened around me. Looks like I was going to be stuck here for a bit. Are you sure this is place? Gordon said as he and All Might in his normal form stepped out of the later's truck. For nearly the past hour Monarch had been combing the city for Erika with no sign or trace of her except for the radioactive signature from her spores with spectrometers that Aoki had quickly whipped up keyed to it. Yet they could barely tell where she was as they registered her signal all spread out throughout the city in there. It went nowhere until All Might and Gordon were investigating around Izuku's home until they got a positive reading towards this alleyway. Add in that All Might knew that Izuku was hardly late home even after months of training and there had been no sight of him meant that Erika probably gotten to him by now. I am sure. There is a dead end in this alleyway and not that far from young Midoriya's apartment. Add into the readings of this spectrometer. And she is here, All Might said, dreading what to expect to find with considering what they found on the greenhouse wall and were still working on uncovering. Most likely. And that kid is possibly a good sign as well. Gordon said as a fearful-looking Tsurugi emerged from the alleyway and began to look around. 
I'll find out what happened from him. You go grab the string bean. Just go easy on the kid. All Might before turning into his muscular form and disappeared in a burst of speed, startling Tsurugi. I make no promises, Gordon said before walking up to the startled student. What the hell was that? Tsurugi shouted before cowering at the sight of Gordon approaching him. My partner, Gordon said before pulling out a badge getting Tsurugi to freeze up. Agent Gordon, Interpol, I take it from your expression that you just ran into an ugly ass villain. Multiple tendrils, and can separate into multiple spheres of light, Gordon described, getting Tsurugi to nod shakily. Good, this individual is extremely dangerous and you are lucky to have escaped with your life. Now tell me everything that happened here and do not leave a single detail. A pale Tsurugi could only nod as wondered what the hell he had just gotten into and spilled out everything to him. All Might rushed into the alleyway expecting the worst considering how intelligent Erika was thought to be at this point, only to see his student being nuzzled by Erika while wrapped up in her vines, a resigned look on his face. A little help please, Midori asked as he tried to separate himself from Erika, only for her to pull him back. All Might let out a sigh of relief that he was alright before doing the arduous task of separating Izuku from Erika. After that it took them an hour for them to get Erika ready enough to transport her back into UA with plenty of coaxing from myself in order to do so. To learn what they had discovered on that portion of the wall had honestly worried me. Considering what she did to Shaitan and possibly also Tsurugi, she could very well keep her promise on the issue. But besides Erika there were a few other major issues. For one, Mom was extremely worried when she found out. After all I was ambushed by one of my fellow students and was nearly set upon by a villain wanted and apprehended by Interpol agents, something I later learned was a common tactic by Monarch in order to keep its existence a secret, but often caused headaches and unnecessary paperwork for both agencies. Still with how worried she had been training was cancelled for that day and for a while afterwards it was agreed upon that I would be picked up from school for a while afterwards in order to temper her fears, something All Might agreed with. With All Might he thought I had gotten a decent handle on the situation with Shaitan and Tsurugi once he learned about it. He said there were a few areas that I could have improved upon, but this was technically my first encount with a villain and that I would use what I had learned from here and the improvements that he would be making to my training in order to grow from this experience, something that would greatly help me out later down the line. As for Shaitan, he was gone. By the time anyone got to inspect the back entrance he was gone. There was splatters of blood, most likely from him coughing them up. They lead out into the roadway before they disappeared, presumably someone picking him up. The fact that he actually had the energy to even move after what Erika did to him, and only increased my worries that he would come back after me again once he recovered, especially with the aftermath his actions caused the next day. But they paled in comparison to the ones caused by Erika escaping and the full depths of what remained on the walls. The sap of some parts had hardened enough that it took two whole days to uncover everything that she was hiding. And when they uncovered the final secret hidden within those walls it was too late. The day after Erika escaped I expect many things to have happened when I was at school the next day. Ranging from Shaitan confronting me at school to Erika bursting through the school just to see me again. Thankfully nothing like that happened, though students and teachers kept giving me concerned glances. Most likely due to the news spreading of what happened yesterday. And Shaitan never showed up at school. It wasn't until the very end of school that I learned what happened to him. As school got out I made sure to keep my distance from everyone else while looking for where All Might was parked, with nearly everyone being concerned about my well-being considering that I had nearly been in the crosshairs of a villain that as far as they knew was extremely dangerous and shite, with some even congratulating me for standing up against him. H. Honestly it was nerve-wracking and I had no real idea how to deal with this. I had never had my classmates actively concerned for me or had given me so much praise before all at once. Even after the slime villain incident eight months ago, I was barely a footnote while everyone praised Kachin. So for everyone to do a complete 180 of that for me and what I hear Tsurugi, I didn't know how to react to it that well. Besides I had something else that I had on my mind today. What was going to happen to Erika? She had escaped yesterday just to see me and what I have been told yesterday about what they had found written on the wall was honestly a bit frightening. Seeing what she was capable of just to get to me scared me a little, but I suppose that I always knew about it somewhat. We all did, but I never expected that she would go to such lengths. Or rather, I did know and didn't want to believe it. Now I have no clue on Monarch is going to do Erika now. What I do know is that based on how invested they are with going so far to set up a base on UA, and working on a cure for Erika that they were not going to up and leave. They will have to up their security. That is invadable but how well it will last against Erika who escaped through all of their countermeasures and stayed on the loose for nearly an hour will remain to be seen. Yet what remains to be seen is how I play into all of this. With all the forces of Monarch stationed there, whoever the bring in to back them up after this incident, and the staff of UA, were more than enough to handle Erika if she turns violent. 
factor in all available pro heroes in Musutafu and there was practically an army that could match her in power perhaps, unless she returns to her full size, an unlikely event as she wishes to restore her humanity. Still if that ever were to happen, I was pretty sure it would take every available pro hero in Eastern Haunch to pacify her then and it wouldn't end well. As for myself, I'm just a quirkless junior high school student, practically no one in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the likes of Monarch at the moment. Then again I was being trained by All Might to be a hero and inherit his quirk and my connection to Erica. Okay maybe somewhat important considering all of that, but truly I wonder what they were going to do with me and Erica. The best I could see is that they separate the two of us, possibly for my own safety or for everyone else's. I didn't want to even think of the worst case scenario. Still despite this, I still wished to help Erica no matter what. I promised her as much, if I couldn't save her even after that. Then how could I ever become a hero who could save anyone? Oi shitty Deku. I heard Kachin shouting from behind me, breaking me from my musings. K Kachin, I exclaimed, turning to see him right behind me along with Tsurugi, who was looking away from me. Just because you stood up to that effing crook and another villain doesn't make you better than me. Well you're not. You're still just a pebble in my path to becoming the number one hero that is. One that effing crook tripped over, glad that he is no longer a problem thanks to you. So I will say this one more time Deku, stay out of the way. Kachin shouted with a savage grin before turning to Tsurugi. As for you extra, try anything like that damned stunt yesterday and you will be just another pebble I will have to blast out of my way if it annoys me. With that Kachin walked past me and out of the school's gates, getting Tsurugi to sigh. Never a simple thank you with Bakugu. Though to tell you the truth Midoriya he's actually happy you got Shiten expelled. Tsurugi said, surprising me. Shiten was expelled. I mean, he did kind of deserve it after what he did yesterday. But why keep it quiet? Word about this would have spread across the school pretty quickly. That was bound to happen. But why didn't anyone tell me? I asked, getting Tsurugi to shake his head. He has family high up in the Ministry of Education stationed here in Musutafu so they are keeping it quit, especially with the dirt Bakugu had on him. Tsurugi said, getting me to sigh. Should have expected that. Nepotism and quirkism. No wonder he has gotten away with everything he did for so long and why he wasn't suspended in the first place. Still I had to wonder what did Kachin had on Shiten, considering that he kept calling him a crook and Kachin mentioned that he had a side business. Was Shiten possibly stealing from other students and selling the items for a profit? I mean that was a distinct possibility, but there could be other reasons for the name or Shiten's side business. No actually you hit it right on the head Midoriya also can you please stop the mumbling? Surugi said, breaking my train of thoughts. I really need to keep a handle on my mumbling. Sorry, but he really did that? I asked, getting my former friend to nod. Correct and the idiot was both dumber and smarter than I would give him credit for. He kept a log of everything he stole from everything from notebooks to phones. The net price for what he sold, and the fact he managed to mark up the prices of everything in this year, and he didn't trash it, although it mentioned that it was this year alone, so he possibly have been doing this for years. What I do know is that he sold everything for 224,072 yen and he had over 10,614 yen in stolen goods in his locker, at least according to Bakugu. He managed to get a look at the log before the police got to it, Surugi said, shocking me. Not knowing how much he inflated the prices of what he stole, Shiten effectively stole over 234,687 yen. Add in what he did to us, the theft, and market abuse there was no doubt that Shiten will be facing prison time for this. And what about Shiten? He wasn't here and you haven't mentioned anything about the police having him in custody. Considering the potential damage from the villain he was, Shiten should at least be in the hospital by now. I said, hoping to be right, only for them to be dashed when Tsurugi shook his head. Heard he was admitted to one yesterday but escaped last night. Police haven't found him yet. But considering that he had about five teeth knocked out and two cracked ribs he shouldn't be trying anything anytime soon. Still would be for the best if either one of us kept our eyes out for him until he is caught. Surugi said, a little nervous at the end. Not that I could blame him. I felt the same way right after hearing Shiten had gone missing. Even now I'm a little nervous to know that Shiten was out there. However given his condition and the fact I would be taken directly from school to training or home for a while. Still I could hope that he was alright, despite what he tried to do. It sounds like Erika's light treatment of him left Shiten pretty banged up. Not that he deserved it, but if that was what Erika's light treatment I hope never to find out what she does when she is fully pissed off. The sound of a car horn rang out not far from us, getting Tsurugi to sigh. Well that's my ride, not letting that shithead get the jump on me. I suggest you do the same Midoriya, Tsurugi said before he walks past me. He took a few steps out of the gate, before stopping and turning to me, looking somewhat awkward. Never got the chance to say it, but thanks saving my hide for yesterday. With that Tsurugi turned and walked away, getting myself to smile awkwardly. It felt kind of weird. 
my former friend thanking me. After over a decade of giving me the same treatment as Kachin had been in the past, except not being nearly as physical or berating, still at least I managed to at least make sure Tsurugi was saved from Shaitan and Erika's wrath, even saving the former from being injured even further by the later with hopefully no permanent marks besides some missing teeth admitting not the best of results. But at least I managed to save someone and that was all that mattered. I was broken from my musings when I saw All Might pull up in his truck and walked over to it. Young Midoriya how was your day at school? All Might asked as I got into the truck and we started to drive off. A little strange considering what happened yesterday. But alright. Yet what truly happened to Shaitan? The school is keeping quiet about it and what I do know he is still out there for what he did and over 234,687 yen in theft. I said, getting All Might to sigh. Truthfully it was over 202,603 yen with the prices not being marked up. But yes, Shaitan escaped and his aunt was responsible for his escape. She is currently under arrest for that, covering his tracks and embezzling funds from the Ministry of Education. Shaitan will have to face a few years in a juvenile training school. All Might said, surprising me. Seems like Monarch really got to bottom of things faster than I could have anticipated. Then again compared to what Monarch must usually deal with. A corrupt ministry employee and her delinquent of a nephew were small fries to them. Even despite the crimes I hope that Shaitan can make a turn for the better after his sentence. He is still young and there is a chance for him not to turn down the path of villainy. Perhaps I am being hopeful. But I have seen plenty of teens like him in my time as a hero go down the path of a better life or the path of villainy. All Might said, getting me to nod. After all if Kachin was finally starting to change, if even by a minute difference then it is possible. Though personally I would like to keep away from Shaitan after yesterday and hope that once the police or a pro hero finds him that he could make a change. I hope so too, but I am more worried about Erika after what happened yesterday. I said honestly, getting All Might to sigh. She's currently in a containment shelter that was built specifically to keep a repeat of what happened yesterday from happening. Erika has already tried multiple times to escape again, so Sarazawa and Nezu had thought it best that the two of you are separated at least for today. Tomorrow things will resume from before the incident yesterday, except under more supervision. All Might said, getting me to nod. That was honestly better than I expected, almost too much, considering that Erika had just caused the first kaiju attack on Japanese soil in almost 250 years. I would have thought that besides what All Might said there should have been more added on. There has to be more conditions than that. I asked, getting All Might to shake his head. Not really other than Erika is going to be under even closer surveillance when you are not around her and Sarazawa is bringing over more agents for that purpose and better security. Erika is going to be put under manual watch at all times until we figure out how to keep her spores from messing with electronics. Beyond that nothing else except that she is being kept out of her greenhouse until we could find out what has she been hiding underneath the walls. Add on to that the first batch of her cure up to where Dr. Shirigami had left off it should be synthesized by tomorrow or the next day. All Might said, shocking me. You mean it? I asked, growing excited as he shook his head. This was the first major step to curing Erika. After nearly two weeks and 280 some years, this will be the first real chance of becoming human again. Well as human as she could be anyway. I mean it young Midoriya. They are going to test the reaction as soon as it is done and improve upon it. But the cure nearly being completed should hopefully not belong before Erika can be restored. All Might said with a smile getting me to do one in turn. We are so close now, it was only a matter of time now to restore Erika back into a human form. Still it was just beginning and if the past two weeks have been of any indication it was possibly going to be an arduous task, especially after yesterday. But I already knew that like when I began my training to become a hero. Yet I promised Erika that I would help her and have committed to it, just as much as I have with me training at this point. So until I can keep my promise to her, I will give it my all just as much as my will to become a hero. And nothing will stop me. The truck came to a sudden stop and broke me from my thoughts. Sorry about that young Midoriya. Just wait in the truck for a few minutes then we will be on our way. All Might said in his heroic form as he stepped out of the truck, approaching a pair of carjackers not that far down the road, too busy with their crime to notice All Might. I guess I asked for that. Nothing might be able to stop me, but I suppose there will always be twists, turns, and various roadblock along that path to become a hero. With 10 meters of where Monarch had set up their temporary base now sat a small three-story building. Lacking doors or windows on the first two floors and only on the third floor. For inside most of the building was hollowed out and was designed to contain Erika. The walls reinforced to withstand her strength and thorns. The air vents designed to blow back her spores if she tried to escape through them and to flood the room with enough sleeping gas to knock out a whale if she actively tried to escape. And the top floor was an observational platform with multiple agents staring down and ready to combat Erika if the need arrives. Add in that snipe. Ectoplasm. 
and Cementos keeping an eye on her from the balcony. They were especially prepared in case she tried to escape again. Except right now, there was no need for that. Erica was looking for the lack of a better term, discontent for the last 50 minutes, all day before she either tried to bash at the walls, scratch at them with her thorns, break down into spores trying to escape, bouts of animalistic rage, or just simply growling at any agent she saw. Now though she seems to have calmed down somewhat, all because Midoriya is on the premises, Graham said as she observed Erica through the control room set up in this facility. She had director Sarazawa had arrived as soon as Erica was back at UA. After they received word of Erika's escape and the second kaiju attack since her arrival back to Earth, considering her dependence or obsession of him it was a guaranteed that there would be such a reaction when Midoriya arrived in campus given some of the writings in the greenhouse. Sarazawa said with a sigh, shaking his head while remembering everything written on the walls. Over two-thirds of the room had been uncovered, the rest of it having the thickest concentrations of her sap especially one spot in particular. Progress on removing that one was slow going. Whatever was hidden there Erica didn't want anyone to find. As for the various writings they could find about half of the seemed to devolve into various scratches before resuming. What they could decipher clearly was more mentions Midoriya. And their promise, some of her thoughts of those around her, at least one mention of wishing to eat Nezu. A few writings expressing how she was feeling or just boredom. A vast majority that were cursing her current status and towards her father for bringing her back to life. And finally there was the most surprising of all calculations and possible solutions to improve upon her cure. After possibly getting only a few glimpses of this, they didn't know how valid they could stand up compared to genetic science of today. But it could possibly work after seeing the results the original unaltered cure. You know I suppose it was bound to happen given how close she is to Midoriya. He has possibly given her hope for the first time since her original death. Even I have a hard time properly comprehending the full scope of her pain factor in her erratic behavior and these bouts of animalistic rage it is difficult to imagine what her mind will be like when restored to a human form. Principal Nezu said with a sigh, doing some paperwork on a nearby table along with Agent Gordon, the man letting out a grunt as he did so, the later for the events of yesterday and the investigation on Shiten, the former on Aldera Junior High on Shiten as well, and of their second applicant to UA, Katsuki Bakugo. There was a disruption between the references by several of the teachers and the principal and the behavior noted with a recorded incident of him and Shiten against Midoriya over a year ago reported to the ministry and hidden by Shiten's aunt. Something note found in the school's records. Now Nezu had been principal long enough to know when a school was trying to keep things hidden in order to enroll students into UA. And he took great pleasure in showing them the error of their ways. But that would have to wait for now. The situation with Erika's current status took precedence. Agreed and given her current mental state and centuries of experiences unknown to humanity there is no telling what she will be like when returned to a human state. Sarazawa said while shaking his head. Tell me if I remember correctly don't you have someone on campus to help with this issue? If you mean Ryo or as you know him hound dog, then yes we do. In fact he would be the perfect person to help Erika with that issue given the nature of his quirk and profession. I have been working on getting him close to Erika without his instincts threatening to take over just like my fear that she will eat me, Nezu said while shuddering before picking back up. Once we get to that point and restoring Erika to a human form we can begin the road to recovery for her. As far as we can take for her given I am pretty sure they never educate you on how to deal with someone who has died, been resurrected as a rose bush, and then a kaiju. At that everyone around him nodded, while Erika let out a rage-filled roar at that. They certainly don't teach you how to deal with that at all. We are the first ones ever to do so and possibly the last. Still at least now we have a better idea with how to progress forward with Erica. Graham said, looking a little relieved. True but we still have a long way to go before it can become a reality. Sarazawa said, getting her to nod as they looked at Erica as she let out a sorrowful roar and began to trace her vines in the dirt out of boredom. Nezu shook his head at that and figured that it would be for the best to at least get them to allow Midori a little time with Erica before leaving. After he needed to figure out where Midnight was, she was supposed to have swapped places with Cementos in keeping an eye on Erika about five minutes ago. You are doing great young Midoriya, just one more time and then you can take a break. All Might called out as I ducked under the punch of the one-pointer robot. Ever since we got to UA, All Might had me fight against the one-pointer that Aoki had modified nearly two weeks ago. The same one Erika trashed during her rampage which he thankfully made so that they would be unable to reset from a rock getting lodged into the switch, the other one having been shut down already. After over an hour and a half of cleaning up Dagaba Beach, upon arriving at UA, All Might had brought the two one-pointers online and explained what the training was for today, basically just to defeat them both twice through any means necessary in order to hit their switch. Simple combat training, with All Might occasionally correcting my form. After a while I had beaten them both once and right now I only had one left standing against me. 
it wasn't that easy as fighting the one-pointers have gotten progressing harder which session, bit by bit. Their movements became faster and it became harder to get a clean hit on their switch. I believe Aoki was modifying them after each day of training. Still it made things perfect for my combat training. Considering what happens yesterday, and that I have only been training for two weeks I still had a quite a ways to go and improve. It barely leaned away from the one-pointer's metallic fist and another one before throwing a punch that it blocked with its arm with a loud clang. I held back from crying out in pain as it took a wild swing which I ducked under. It tried again, but I barely managed to slip to the side and tried to throw a high kick towards the switch, but the one-pointer wheeled back at the last second. The one-pointer rushed forward and I barely dodged a hit that I was sure would have knocked the air out of me given the momentum it was traveling. As it made an attempt to break I saw my chance and ran towards it. I threw a punch that would have shut it down, but it battered my arm away causing me to wince, but also gave me the opportunity to strike it in the chest. The visitor flashed green before the one-pointer shut down and fell forwards onto the ground, but then I let out a sigh of relief and wiping some sweat off my brow. That was a good workout. You did a good job young Midoriya, you have come quite a ways in your training, but for now take a 15-minute break. After that be prepared to face another two rounds before heading back to Dagaba Beach to finish up your training for today. All Might said as he handed me a water bottle which I quickly began to drink out off. Normally I would have been happy to have gotten such praise at All Might dot 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 and silently groan at the prospect of facing the one-pointers again. However I felt like I was missing something. Then again I suppose by now Erica would have tried something. Usual wrapping her vines and nuzzling herself against me. I guess I have gotten used to her presence after all of this time. So much so that I can imagine two of her vines snaking around my chest and stomach dot 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 wait a minute. Looking down I saw that they were in actuality a pair of arms, with handcuffs around the wrists dot 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 oh no. There was only one hero that I know at UA, that had such an accessory on their hero outfit. M. Midnight, I said nervously, turning me head to see her face. She had a sultry smirk and then there was the look in her eyes dot 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 it was not helping my mental state at all. Ara ara, so this is the boy that can calm down Erika. Yagi you have been holding out on me. Midnight said as she wrapped her arms around me, getting all might to grow pale and my face to flush. This is bad, very bad. I I have never been the best around woman, minus Erica, and now she was pressing herself against me. H her costume really was skin tight as I could feel her BB boobs pressing against my back. Shit, Kayama, how long have you been here? All might said as he shifted into his muscular form halfway through. About 10 minutes, seeing this boy train against the one-pointers. I have got to say Yagi, he is the perfect early birthday gift. He is downright adorable. Midnight said before. I let out a loud yelp as she started to feel up my stomach and chest, tracing her fingers over my developing muscles. H help, I said to All Might, afraid what might happen if Midnight continued with this. And an absolutely fine specimen as well tell me where did you find this adorable cinnamon roll. Midnight asked as her grip on my loosened. I tried to escape. But she only doubled down on her grip and sent a small smirk before it turned to shock as All Might ripped me from her arm and tossed me away. Run young Midoriya, run for your life. I'll hold her off, just don't look back. All Might called out as I came to a roll and stood back up. You don't need to tell me twice. With that I took off and I did not look back at all. I shuddered at remembering that event with Midnight dot 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 till this day I had no clear idea with what she wanted to do with me and I would prefer not to find out. I had hidden myself behind a building for about 5 minutes before All Might came back and grabbed me before Midnight could come after me. At least I managed to at least get to say goodbye to Erika before All Might and Nezu hurriedly me to the truck and towards Dagaba Municipal Park, in fear that she would still be looking for me. All Might had me train away from UA. The next day, which only in hindsight was a mistake, if we had been at UA. That day dot 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 then we could have discovered what was wrong with Erika and stopped her before she lost control of herself. The next day there was no school and All Might took me to training after lunch and spending the morning helping my mother around our home. It was nice between school, my training, and Erika I really didn't have with her these past two weeks until I got back with her. I had in the fact my finals as in about two weeks and I would have been busy. So once All Might picked me up I asked him about it. And All Might said that due to my current progress I could take some extra time off to spend with her. Of course I would have to double down on the difficulty of my training once again. Still he expressed that it was important that if I wanted to spend some more time with mom whenever I wasn't training or in school. She is the most important person in my life, the first one to truly support me and the one has been with me through everything. I couldn't imagine where I would be to have such an amazing person like my mom. Anyway as we approached Dagaba Beach, we saw that there was construction around a block away starting to set up and we were allowed through without any hesitation and I figured out what was going on. Monarch is blocking off the beach cause Erica is there already, I said, getting All Might to nod as he parked. 
They just got her here an hour ago. According to Sarazawa she had been rather aggressive after a day in confinement and she is still being contained right now until we get to the beach. Otherwise that she could escape and no one wants a repeat of two days ago. All Might said as we got out of his truck, getting me to wince. That would do it. I'm still surprised they allowed her outside of UA. I said honestly. I know that they were going to allow her back with me today. But I didn't they would allow her to be brought her to Tagaba Beach. Sarazawa was hesitant but he allowed it along with Nezu. Considering it was probably best to keep you away from Kayama for now. All Might said with a wince, getting me to shudder in horror. I needed a long cold shower when I got home. Even then I could still feel her hands all over me. I was shaken from the sounds of something breaking apart in less than a few seconds flat. You have got to be kidding me. I spent two days designing and building that. I heard Aoki shout from down by the beach as a large cloud of spores rushed over to where I was. Okay I just had a good idea at what happened right now. I tried to take a step back, but Erica quickly reformed and began to wrap me up in her vines and began to nuzzle me against herself. Glad that you missed me Erica, but can you please let go of me? I do not think Monarch is happy with you breaking out like that, I said, getting Erica to let out a loud growl before she continued to nuzzle me. I take that as no. I'm not happy about it, neither will the director, Aoki said as he flew up towards us, follow after Agent Gordon and Snipe. I guess they were here as extra security in case Erica tries anything. Looks like Nezu was right about mitigating her interactions with young Midori. If this is what she is willing to do after only one day apart, I would hate to see what she could do if she would wait even longer. All Might said, getting Gordon to nod. Have to agree with you Tasha Nori. I don't have a problem with it as long as she doesn't interrupt me teaching the bean sprout a thing or two about fighting. Gordon said, causing me to pale and my heart to nearly stop altogether. I was going to be training against Gordon, I was going to die. Gordon, please go easy on him. All Might sighed out. Erica just growled at the monarch agent as she held me tight with her vines. I wasn't planning on breaking the bean sprout Yagi, just teaching him how to fight with that brain of his. The training feat from the robots and the security footage of him dealing with the brat has shown that he has an analytical mind, just not enough true fighting experience to truly use it. You laid the groundwork work for eight and a half months and while well now that you have gotten a decent start, now is the time to build up the foundation from which the bean sprout here will develop on his own. Gordon said sternly. He's right. I need to do this. A hero usually finds himself in a life or death situation when dealing with villains. Since the slime villain I have only had one such encounter and that was with with Shiten. I managed to hold my own, but I could have done better. So despite my fears about facing someone like Agent Gordon I need to push forward. Otherwise how else I will be able to inherit one for all if I gave up now. Erica you can let go of my now. I said, not feeling her vines slacking at all. Nor was she tightening her grip on me. Instead she was still growling at Agent Gordon, her eyes emotionless and almost vacant, minus a lot of what I could describe as a predatory anger, a look that I had only seen when she smashed that one pointer weeks ago. Add into the fact I could feel something starting to poke through her vines that had me concerned. Erica are you alright? I asked again. She shifted her gaze into me before eyes returned to normal and her growling stopped. With that I saw an emotion in her eyes that I never thought I would see in her eyes. Fear. In a split second her eyes returned to normal as she released me from her vines and began to nuzzle against me letting out a soft roar. I'm alright Erica, I need to do this. I said, not letting it known how shook up I was by what I saw. Erica was afraid of something. She has never been afraid of anything during my time with her. If something could scare her, it was something that I didn't want to think about. But I need to do so, if something is frightening her I needed to find out. Considering her behavior and the brief lapses both now and weeks ago and what she has possibly hidden in the walls of her greenhouse, it is best that it comes to light now. And Gordon seemed to pick up on that as he gave the two of a scrutinizing gaze before giving a gruff nod. So you understand then Bean Sprout, you have 20 minutes to stretch yourself out and prepare for what is to come. 20 minutes and not a second longer. I am you don't, I will come after you. Gordon said, getting me to shudder as he turned to walk off, with Aoki and Snipe soon following sweet. Gordon beginning to talk them as I faced Erica. Do you mind leaving me with All Might for a minute Erica? I will spend the rest of the time with you afterwards. I asked, getting her to huff and let out a small grow as she slinked off away a bit. Sorry Erica, I need to talk to All Might real quick. That and I would probably be cut short by your vines once again. Young Midoriya, what's wrong? All Might asked. It's Erica. She's afraid of something and I don't think she seems willing to share what it is if what she had on the walls are of any indication. I said to him, trembling a little bit. There is more. I could feel her her vines starting to change and her the look in her eyes when she roared at Agent Gordon have seen it before. I am afraid something is wrong with her. After I said that, All Might turned pale and looked towards Erica and me. If you are certain of this, why didn't you say so sooner? All Might asked. I didn't think anything of it. The first time was with Erica smashing the one-pointer and we thought she was being protective. Agent Gordon seems to suspect something. 
but there seems to something else going on with her. I said, worried what might happen with Erica. There are so many possibilities going on from the most likely scenario of her mind reverting back to a bestial state, or the most unlikely being involved with the crystal she crashed with and similar to her own DNA. Given that there is no one else with a similar DNA structure, there is a wild myriad of possible problems that could be going with Erica and each and every possibility was just getting me more and more. Breathe young Midoriya, breathe. All Might said, placing his hands on my shoulders as he cut me off. Quit your mumbling and breathe. I know that you are worried for Erica and so am I but worrying about what might go wrong will only make things worse for yourself and the situation as a whole. So just remember to keep breathing until you are ready to continue. So for about a minute that was all I did, just breathe. Thinking of nothing else except just focusing on my breathing. Feeling some of my worries melting away. Feeling better now young Midoriya. All Might asked, getting me to nod a little shakily. A little, I said honestly. Good, I'm going to talk to Gordon and half the time you would have been training today along with Sarazawa. The slightest sign that something is wrong with Erica and we are packing up and taking her to UA. We might not be able to find out what is going on right here, but Sarazawa might be able to. And the fist attempt at a cure should be done today. We are going figure out what is happening to Erica young Midoriya. Just be patient alright. All Might asked while coughing up some blood, getting me to nod. Alright, I just hope we can get to the bottom of this soon enough. I said, getting All Might to nod as he separated himself from me. Good I will go talk to Gordon. Just remember what I told you about invoking Murphy and we should be alright. All Might said with his smile as he began to run off. Also don't rough him up too much Erica. Oh no. I turned around to find my earlier guess was correct and Erica had wrapped me up in her vines and pulled me towards her. Hey Erica you know I have to head down to face Agent Gordon sooner or later. I said to Erica. She let out a soft growl at that before beginning to nuzzle against me once again. I know that I would rather not have to face Agent Gordon and I am certain you wouldn't want me to either. I said, getting Erica to roar out in agreement. But I need to do so in order to become a hero. In order to help people like you. Erica let out a soft grumble at that before held me even closer and let out a soft growl. I just sighed at that. Everything will be alright Erica, just trust me on this okay? I asked, getting her to let out a real cute nod and a growl. Thank you Erica. She just let out a soft roar as she nuzzled up against me even harder and for me to shake my head. Erica you know if something is wrong, you could always tell me or write to me right? I asked, getting Erica to briefly pause. She was stilled for a few moments, as if to contemplate a choice before resuming her nuzzling letting out a soft and getting me to sigh. Erica, just what is it that you are hiding? And there still has been no progress in breaching the last of Erica's secrets. Director Sarazawa asked over the phone as he had agents combing through both Erica's greenhouse and her containment cell for any traces anything that could lead to whatever Erica was hiding. Currently he was in the lab with Graham and Principal Nezu. The only other people in the lab were Dr. TGA and Dr. Mifun, both of them testing the effects of the first batch of the completed cure. Everyone in the room was on edge from what All Might and Agent Gordon had reported three hours ago. Sarazawa already had a team to breaking down the sap in the greenhouse, which had only turned into more of the same results as before except for the giant patch of sap they still were breaking down. Once the report about something wrong with Erica reached him, he had a team investigate her containment cell. If she went to so much trouble in order to hide so much under the walls of her greenhouse, she might have hidden something in her cell as well. Given the possibility of there being something dire going one, there was no such thing as being too careful right now. Every possible detail needed to be explored right now. No sir, it has been covered and uncovered so many times compared to the others that it made it extremely difficult to get rid off. Though given by the present thickness we should finally be able to break through it any minute now. The agent on the phone explained, getting Sarazawa to nod grimly. Notify me the moment you break through it and tell me everything. Sarazawa ordered before hanging up his phone and sighing. Graham, please tell me that you have some good news. Not necessarily. Agent Duper is still on assignment in Jamaica and will not be able to report back here in about two days. She sighed out. But we do have news on the path on the path of Erica's re-entry. Nezu was right. As I figured. Though even I was surprised anything came up from my prediction. Nezu said with his paws crossed. Nazu had long since predicted the trajectory of when Erica crashed and photos from various satellites pointed a path that she had came back to Earth from within the solar system itself, having bypassed both Mercury and Venus after passing the Sun. Given Erica's biology it was believed that she might have possibly stopped around Mercury in order to replenish herself from traveling through deep space without being pulled in by the Sun's gravity. Though given the mystery of the crystal and this recent news gave cause to focus more on the issue, along with a theory that even with his high-specs quirk, Nezu thought it was a bit out there. But now it seems like a possibility. There are reports of two objects of equal size reported in Mercury's orbit, 21 hours and 14 minutes before Erica's return to Earth. 14 minutes before a massive solar flare erupted in both objects and any chance of any pictures taken reaching Earth. 
The objects were believed to be asteroids until Erica was discovered. Graham said seriously. So one of the objects were Erica. Then the other one was possibly another kaiju of equal size. Sarazawa said grimly and getting Nezu to nod. One possibly created from Erika herself. One who did not survive the solar flare or might have been the cause of it. Given Erika's aggression around the crystal and the brief flicker of fear Midoriya supposedly saw. If that kaiju was still alive, it would have made its presence known already. Nezu said grimly. The origins of which are completely unknown. But given what is believed about the crystal what might be occurring with Erika could be a parasitic reaction to her cells. Sarazawa said. The news troubling all three of them. If this was true, then it could change everything with their operations concerning Erika. I take it that you have come to a conclusion concerning the crystal as well. Dr. Mifune's voice called out, getting all three of them to see him and Yujiro approaching them, each carrying two cases. Dr. Toga, Dr. Mifune, does the cure work and if so is there any basis with the crystal? Sarazawa asked, hoping for a clear answer. Both scientists shared a look before placing the cases on a nearby desk and Mifune going to get a microscope. It is better to see for yourself. Yujiro said, opening three of the cases. One contained a vine, one of a few reluctantly given by Erika. Another contained the crystal, and another contained the file in multiple syringes filled with a very pale green color, bordering on near white. The cure, Graham said breathlessly as Mifun set up the microscopes next to the cases. More accurately the shuragami compound as we have taken to calling it. Mifun said as he opened the final case to reveal several microscope slides containing several blood samples. You all are familiar with Erika's cell by now, but the others, not so much and we are going to get to it in a minute. First it is best to show you the first attempt of the shuragami compound, and under my suggestion after the second batch is completed that we terminate the first batch altogether. Yujiro said seriously as he picked up one of the syringes, shocking everyone there besides the Mifune. I knew the first attempt at the cure would be flawed, but to say something like that implicates there is more to it than we expected. Nezu deduced, getting Mifune to nod. Correct, it works. Too well. It is better to show than to describe. TGA you know what to do. He said, getting the hematologist to nod. Right. Now then through trial and error the shuragami enzyme is found to work best when administrated through the bloodstream directly. Anywhere else an effect is localized and would soon be undone given her regenerative factor. In the bloodstream it would flow throughout her entire body by her heart and we should see results in about a few days to weeks afterward. But with this batch, it is a failure and a success and you are about to see why. Yujiro said as he injected the shuragami enzyme into a blood vein, and the area around it began to calcify and it slowly started to spread before breaking down and corroding. An effect that horrified the three of them, the process reminding all three of them of something long since forbidden. Jinshiro Shuragami didn't create a cure, he created a way to create micro-oxygen. Sarazawa said horrified. The creation of micro-oxygen had been forbidden after the age of kaiju due to extreme dangers of it and the fact it created the kaiju that ended the era, destroy. A living extinction event only surpassed by Ghidorah. It's in Gajira's death ended the era as they were the last kaiju alive and no one was willing to create a repeat of that. All traces of micro-oxygen were wiped out and any way to recreate it was made non-existent. No one was dumb enough to recreate it until now. Similar, but Shuragami made a way for Erika's biology to effectively create a self-contained and sufficient micro-oxygen. A lot less reactive and the only immediate danger is if you were Erika. Mifune said as both Graham and Sarazawa to see the effects it had on Erika's cells and seeing them quickly decay. And what on humans? Does the Shuragami compound have a different effect on human cells? Nezu asked, getting Yujiro to shake his head. Yes and no. Given my position we had plenty of spare human blood to experiment with. It does have have an effect on human blood. Ijiro said as he replaced the slide with another, and with human blood injected with the shuragami compound. Instead of breaking down the human cells though, the enzyme itself breaks down. Graham said shocked, seeing the enzyme dissolving into nothing upon contact with human cells. Correct. But it also complete destroys any foreign object in Erika's body, even if it comes from her very being itself. Mifune said, looking back at the now half-calcified vine. And a small crystal, about the size of a child's thumb emerged from her flesh before instantly crumbling away to Juat, stunning them once again. So I was right. The crystal dot 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 it never came from another kaiju at all. It came from Erika herself. Nezu said, getting Yujiro to shake his head. Not quite. Take a look at this slide right here. He said, switching the slides out once again. Sarazawa took on look and noticed it was more blood cells. Very old yet still preserved. They were not Erika's cells. In fact he would have said they more closely related to Kajira's cells minus the crystal growths on the cell membrane and a similar structure to Erika's cells. Ijiro quickly took it away and subsidized another slide to reveal one of Erika's cells. Only it seemed more fluid for a better term. 
They were almost a complete match. The samples are from the blood on the crystal and what little samples we could manage to procure from one of Erica's spores. The only result we can come up with the crystal was a last attempt at Erica. Tell me weren't there any major events within 24 hours of Erica's arrival? The fune asked. There was a solar flare. It might have exterminated this second kaiju. But given the results, it made one last attempt at Erika, Sarazawa said. In theory anyway, given their similar properties and Erika's nature after being injected with Gorgira's cells, it is safe to say that this new kaiju was a result of Erika suffering an extreme amount of damage similar to her first defeat by Gajira, turning her into the form she is in today after the radiation of the atomic breath caused another mutation. Erika must have suffered severe enough damage as from what you picked up director a place of high and extremely dense cosmic radiation, enough that she herself healed up but enough of her DNA left behind in suffering a possible one in a million chance, Yujiro said, causing the Gajira cells to effectively almost take over completely and form another kaiju using that and traces of her form as a template, given her ability to split into spores. This kaiju had a similar ability, yet given the state of the cells it probably has an effective last-ditch attempt. They are and were effectively dead by the time of the solar flare, Vifune explained. And given their similar DNA, it might have used that ability to take control of Erica if the solar flare didn't burn up these spores, Graham said, getting both doctors to nod, except one did manage to land on Erica, and now it is affecting her, Sarazawa stated, like a reverse of the parasite Trypanosoma brucei, except for rearranging its own DNA it is rearranging its hosts in order to create a new body for itself, cleaving the strands of her DNA until it is the only this left, Mezu said grimly. Are you certain the Sarazawa compound completely destroys the crystals? Completely. Yujiro says as he removed half of the original crystal that had been cut in half and applied another syringe of the Shuragami compound to the one in the case. As soon as it made contact with it, the crystal immediately started to break down, much faster than Erika's vine had been. If you look under the microscope you should will see that the energy being created from the process creating the micro-oxygen as the enzyme was created to break down the plant and Gajira's aspects of Erika's cells. Given the crystals are based on Gorgira cells they break down rapidly on a molecular level. Mifune said, as Sarazawa looked into the microscope, true to word it was a sample of the crystal rapidly breaking down and with no trace of stopping anytime soon. Soon it became too small to properly view on the microscope's current setting. And this is only Sarazawa's work without the final ingredient. Quite frightening to think about it, Mezu said with a shudder. Correct. Though in terms of completion, I would say he never actually completed it. He identified the final needed component, a bounding agent to bind the enzyme without filling breaking down Erika's cells. He perished before actually making it safe enough to test on her daughter. But this batch it is 100% fatal to Erika and would be kill her slowly within days. Her regeneration pushing it back and only causing a slow and painful death without identifying the bonding agent, Mifune said sadly, looking over at the vine that was now completely calcified with a few crumpled crystals sticking out. Of course given Erika's suggestions and our modern methods we could close the gap. But this is the work of the greatest geneticist in human history. I am not all that confident we can could, at least not before whatever is inside Erika can fully take over. Me and Mifune have compared cells from two weeks ago and yesterday. Comparing the results it has already starting and considering it already started when she was kaiju-sized, pulling any of her other spores from orbit could cause more damage and hasten the progress, albeit a slim chance, but not one anyone would be willing the risk. The best option would either to bring her back and study her some more in order to find a true cure, or finally do what should have centuries ago and give her a peaceful end. Yujiro sighed out, getting both Sarazawa and Nezu to be silent for a moment. Either continue to work on curing Erika and putting her and everyone else at risk with something slowly taking over her body, or finally putting her to rest. It was a tough choice to make. We need more information first before we can come to a decision on this matter, Nezu deduced, getting Sarazawa to nod before turning to Graham. Contact Agent Gordon and if you are somehow unable to contact him, contact All Might. We need to bring Erika back immediately, Director Sarazawa said, getting her to nod as SH pulled out her phone and tell Tashinori to tell Midoriya everything and to leave nothing out. Nezu said seriously, Are you sure about that? Graham asked, getting the principle of UA. To nod, Midoriya deserves to know. He is the most emotionally invested of us all and when it comes to Erika, he said, getting Graham to nod as she started making the call. With Erica's notes, we should be able to synthesis a new batch within a few hours. But for more modern methods dot 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 we are going to have to need constant fresh samples from Erica and some new ingredients. It could take us a few days to synthesis the third batch, Mifune explained. That is without factoring in to check up on Erica's condition and monitoring this parasite. 
So I take it that you already have made your choice then? Yujiro asked. The director of Monarch just shook his head at that. No, we need to gather more information before we can plan accordingly. Hopefully we will not have to resort to some more desperate measures and if, if it comes down to the choice dot 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 we let Erika make the decision. She has spent nearly the last 300 years as a monster due to her father's choices. It is only fair for her to have say in her fate while she still can. Sarazawa said, getting everyone in the room to nod in agreement. And if she doesn't, Nezu asked, then I pray it doesn't have to come to that. Sarazawa sighed out. Not even a moment later his phone rang. Pulling it out he saw it was was just text from the agent leading the team uncovering the last secrets of the greenhouse. It read, the last of the sap has been cleared out. And it is better if you had seen this. The first was a tarp with a small pile of crystals on it. The sheer amount surprising him. The second was a carving of Erika herself and of another kaiju. One whose shape was mainly similar with Kajira and seemed to have several features similar to Erika. Along with a lot of spiteful wording directed towards. The final image was just a message carved into the wall. I am fading. I can feel it. Whatever that abomination did to me. I can feel it within my very cells. It is affecting me slowly. But I know it is only a matter of time. Izuku dot 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 he cares so much for me and is always helping me out. Even in ways he doesn't know or if he is nearby. Finding out could possibly break him. I know he wishes to be a hero. But if he can't save me it won't be his fault. Only that abominations. Still I do not know how much longer I can keep it under control. My only hope is the cure. Here's hoping it works. And if it doesn't. I do at least want to find a way to thank Izuku one last time before I pass. You were the first reason I had to live in so many uncountable years. It is nice to meet you. If only we could meet before I could encounter and kill that abomination. If it does come down to that there is one thing he must know. Thank you Izuku, for giving me hope after so long. I hope you will always cherish our time together. This was the most brutal thing that I have ever done in my life. All the other times in my training I had thought this, sparing with Gordon had blown them all out of the water. I have been battered so many times by him it was crazy, and he was holding back the entire time. If he wasn't I am sure that I would have been critically injured by him many times over instead of numerous scrapes. And no matter how much I improved or how hard I hit him what I did didn't even phase him. Even when I dodged a punch from him that smashed through a car door window, he had several shards of glass stuck in his hand and didn't seem to feel a thing. He did call a break and had it bandaged, but those came off within a few minutes. A possible pain negation quirk with a heal factor is the most likely the answer. Though it didn't help me in the long run considering just about everything in my body hurts right now. Thankfully there had been a lot of breaks over the last three hours with All Might constantly calling them whenever he thought that Gordon would have been going too far. For the past three hours he had been doing so for my safety and in order to make sure Erika didn't get too agitated. Aoki spent most of the time repairing Erika's containment cell and working on some kind of device. When I asked him what it was, all he said that it was a prototype to be able to use in case Erika tried anything. Something which I hope that he doesn't need. Snipe mainly kept an eye on Erika. And to everyone's surprise she didn't have much problem with him. She she kept growling and glaring at him. But it was much less often compared to how she was to anyone else that wasn't me. Erika herself was okay for the most part. Besides growing angry at Gordon whenever I got practically beat up. Other than that she seemed alright for the moment. On the surface at least. Ever since what happened earlier this morning. She has mainly kept her emotions to herself. So it was difficult to tell what she was actively thinking of. Thankfully there hasn't been any signs that something was wrong. But for the past hour she has grown more and more agitated and it has gotten me worried. Remember keep your eyes on your opponent Bean Sprout. Gordon called out breaking me from my thoughts as I nearly gotten knocked onto my back from one of his punches if I hadn't dodged in the last minute. Right I was practically fighting for my life. I spared a quick glance to see All Might getting a call and Erica growing noticeably agitated, roaring at Gordon. And once again nearly being knock on my butt. Focus Izuku, you can worry about her later. There was only 20 minutes left to this madness and All Might call a break after his call. I just had to survive this. Noticing a pile of debris near Gordon I ran towards it and barely ducked underneath one of his punches before running up the pile. He tried to close the distance, but I jumped off and performed a kick that struck him directly in the chest. It barely phased him and I ran away from him. Finally got your form right Bean Sprout. There was some decent power behind that kick. Let's see if it has transitioned to the rest of your skills, Gordon said, having done so our entire spar, pointing out what I needed to fix in my form after every time I managed to land a hit, or he would block and counter one of my own. It was usually the latter. He rushed forward and I barely ducked underneath a hook he threw. I countered by trying to trying to hit his side, but Gordon moved out of the way. I tried to hit him again, but he blocked it with his arm. Gordon went on the counter attack, with me dodging a punch and an elbow strike from him. Before he threw and punched that I was forced to block and groaned as my arms felt a little numb from the force behind his blow. 
I was pushed back at least a few centimeters in the sand before Gordon kicked my legs from underneath me. Erica let out a loud roar at that as I landed with on my back, my left arm brushing against a piece of trash half buried in the sand. I got back onto my feet and Gordon went to punch me once again. I grabbed the trash in the sand, a burnt and rusted frying pan. Acting quickly I brought it up to block his punch, his fist causing a clang once it hit and denting the frying pan. Not bad. He complimented before ripping the frying pan from my hand and tossing it into a nearby trash pile. Gordon rushed forward and I barely pulled back from him landing an uppercut. He then tried to land several more punches, forcing me back towards a pile of debris. Some of my dodging I will admit without shame that I just nearly tripped from half-buried trash. He finally landed a jab at my gut, knocking some of the air out of my lungs and sending me flying into the trash. I barely had any time to collect myself before pulling myself away from Gordon landing another punch. Seeing a chance, I climbed back onto the pile as Gordon pulled himself back. Not wanting to let my chance to get away I launched myself from the pile and managed to punch Gordon in the face with all my strength and had to pull away and hold my hand as pain flashed through it. It felt like punching a brick wall. Expecting Gordon to go on the counter-attack, I was surprised when he didn't. Instead there was a drop of blood leaking from his nose that he quickly wiped away. D did I really just do that? Got to admit Bean Sprout, you are doing better than I expected you to do today. I can see why Yagi took you under his wing, Gordon said before he vanished before my eyes. Before I could wonder where he went, he reappeared and I had a fist launched into my gut and was sent flying once again. You still have quite a ways to go, Gordon said as I landed, trying my best to refill my lungs with air. Struggling, I got back up hoping this will be over soon. Gordon rushed over, before Erica's spores got between us. She reformed and let out a loud roar as she wrapped me up in her vines and let loose several wads of sap towards the monarch agent, with her eyes glazed over once again. T this was bad, very bad. Snipe loaded his gun and Aoki hurriedly began finishing up with with his device. Gordon looked like he was about to call out orders. All Might appeared in between them and Erica in his buff form. Wait let's give young Midoriya a chance to calm down Erika and we have to bring her back to UA. All Might said seriously. Are you sure about this Yandi? Gordon questioned as Erika's grip on me tightened. Her gaze still holding firm, but I noticed something with her left eye. It was turning from her usual golden coloration into a dark reddish orange. Erika, what's happening to you? I asked snapping her attention to me. Her gaze dropping a bit. I already told you could tell me what's wrong. I'm worried about you Erika. First the aggression, whatever it was in your vines, and now your eye has changed color. I know you are afraid and that you are trying to hide it. But please Erika let me know, that way I could help you. Please Erika. Erika upon hearing that, fear appeared in her eyes as she let go of me and began to back away from me. With a few crystals beginning to emerge from her vines. What was happening to Erika? Yagi you better explain to what the hell is going on now. Gordon said to All Might. Graham told me over the phone that Erika was infected by the crystal, which they believe is to be the last remains of a kaiju originating from her years in space. All Might explained, shocking us all. You have got to be shitting me, Gordon said in disbelief. It does sound rather far-fetched to believe in. Snipe added in. I would have thought so too, but given Erika was starting to spasm and more crystals started to cover her vine, even Nezu thought it was crazy and he was to one to suggest the theory when the evidence presented itself. It turned out to be true from what we found that Erika had been hiding in the walls. But not to this extent. We need to get her out of here now. All Might explained, his tone turning dead serious. Aoki reached for a phone, most likely to contact more agents for backup. But I tuned it all out. I was more concerned with what I heard. So this is what she had been hiding. That she had actually been affected for all this time and she has done her best to hide it from everyone. I had so many questions that I wanted to ask her. But given the circumstances there was one thing that I needed to know right now. Why? Why did you keep this hidden from all of us? We could have helped you sooner if you only told us Erica. I asked tersely. Only for myself to go pale as Erica started to roar in pain as a crystal began to grow from her head. Erica. I stepped closer in order to check if she was alright. But the look Erica gave me caused me to freeze. It was remorse, pain, and fear. I had never seen such an expression before. But to see it on Erica made my heart wretch. She made a sorrowful roar before she something in the sand with one of her vines before she started to spasm once again. Looking down in the sand I asked W that she had hurriedly written into the sand was two words, the latter getting my blood to freeze. The first one reads simply as I'm sorry. The second one read is something far more urgent and convoyed what Erica desperately wanted me to do. Run, I wanted to help her. But considering the sickening crack and the end of Erica's warning it is best to follow sweet, no matter how much I wished otherwise. Before I turned to run I saw what had happened to Erica and immediately began to backpedal. Erica. No that thing was not Erica. It might have held her body but one look from its eyes I could tell that it wasn't her. 
for one its vines were decorated with small crystals, with one of them completely covered in them, and secondly on its head stood what best could be described as some kind of trans-orange crystal crest that was heavily fractured. The worst part was its eyes. They were still the same from when her left eye changed color, but instead it was the emotions and its more bestial roars clearly displayed its feelings for me, seething hatred and loathing directly towards me. I have no idea on how I managed to anger a kaiju to a level beyond how angry I have seen Kachin, but I have no intention of finding out. The kaiju let out a rage-filled roar before charging after me, its vines dragging it towards me at speeds that I had never seen Erika as before. Its vines lashing out at me and I soon found it catching up towards me, until a grenade was thrown between us and blew up creating a cloud of smoke. Stay behind Bean Sprout. This won't end for you, Gordon said tersely as walked past me. Gordon's right. This will not end for you young Midoriya. This situation is one you should not have been a part of. This is beyond anything you could do at the moment. Erika is not the one in control. All Might said grimly. Aoki keep Midoriya back. You don't need to tell me twice, come on then. Aoki said as he flew by me and grabbed me. Wait I tried to protest. But All Might flashed me a smile. It's going to be fine Izuku. Things might look bleak for Erika and yourself. But I swear that make sure everything will turn out alright. Because, I'm here. All Might declared as the kaiju dragged itself out of the smoke cloud and started charging in my direction, only for it to roar out on pain as both Gordon and All Might rushed forward and punching it right in the flesh like sack for a stomach, getting it to double over, and to tell in pain as a bullet from Snipe struck and cracked its crest. It quickly shook its head before letting out a loud roar and spitting out radioactive sap from its mouth and vines, forcing both Gordon and All Might back as to not be hit by it. It lashed out with its vines in an attempt to bite or impale them. But Gordon and All Might proceeded to rip or smash the vines when they got close. Snipe meanwhile stayed back and began shooting what I guessed were incendiary rounds and blowing chunks on the vines up. They quickly regenerated, but the kaiju seemed to have learned from its mistake, keeping both All Might and Gordon at a distance and attacking them with vines and sap. This should not have happened. If Erika had known and told us then no one of those could be happening right now. But there was no way to change what had happened. But hopefully there is a way to get rid of that thing controlling Erika. If not, I'm not sure I want to think of a method or if it could even be feasible. Midori, I need you to snap out of it. Now I need you to hold this for a minute while I rewire this thing. Aoki said seriously as he broke me from my thoughts and handed me a glass canister filled with a familiar looking gas while continuing to work on the device from earlier. Wait isn't that gas from from midnight somnambulist quirk? Don't you use that in anesthesia to get Erika to sleep? I take it that this is part of her containment cell, I asked, getting the monarch agent to nod. Got that right. Though it is mainly anesthesia with enough dysfluorine to suffocate eight people mixed in to get her to sleep. Luckily I made the distributors in her cell durable otherwise they would have been scrapped. Took me forever to repair both of them though. There was enough in there to knock her out instantly for about 15 minutes 20 minutes. But that is for both of them. Aoki said as continued to rewire the gas distributor. Do you believe one of them should slow what is controlling her now? I said getting Aoki to nod. Correct though with the help of the agents we stationed around here. Though I would have to administer it directly through the flesh in order to successfully flood her system. With enough tranks we should have slowed or drugged her enough to get her to the containment cell. Aoki said as he finished rewiring. I hate this, I honestly hate this. In order to save Erika, we had to basically drug her. But considering that she wasn't herself and from what I could see, the kaiju didn't seem to be slowing down all that much. It was missing most of its crystals and it looked like it was tired all the injuries caused by All Might. Gordon, and Snipe, but its overall ferocity kept it going strong as it continued its onslaught against the heroes and monarch agent, even as at least a dozen more agents showed up and had their firearms drawn. To reiterate, I hate all of this but it seemed like the only way to stop this kaiju and to save Erika. Is there any way I can help? I asked, hoping that there was at least a way some way to help out in this madness. Aoki looked at me for a few moments, as if to decide on what to do before sighing. Honestly I have no idea. The best you can do is if you notice any change in Erika's condition call it out and help out anyone in trouble while staying back. Everyone would just chew me out if you got heart and quite frankly you are not trained for this kind of scenario. Neither am I. Unless you had some firearm training, he said, getting me to shake my head. Not at all, I said. Then stay back. We'll handle this and hope that you will not have to become even more involved in this mess. Just stay back and if you see a chance to help while hanging back, take it. Also can you hand me the gas back now? Aoki said as I did so with a reluctant nod. He fitted the gas canister into the distributor and began flapping his wings and reading for an earpiece. This is Agent Aoki. All agents are clear to open fire. Stick to tranquilizer rounds unless your life is threatened or you run out. And also make sure not to accidentally hit Agent Gordon again. It will not end well for training tomorrow. Aoki said, before drawing a tranquilizer pistol. Here's hoping we can end this madness soon. 
with that he took off into the air and flew towards Erika. I could only watch as they started to open fire on the kaiju. Tranquilizer darts starting to stick out of the kaiju as the agents and Aoki focused on subduing it. Agent Gordon and All Might focused on the brunt of the attacks as offense and defense while Snipe had been shooting at the crystals and providing cover with his smoke bombs. All in all a good plan of attack given the current situation. But I still hated all of this. I felt so helpless. Erica was suffering and there was no way I could help out. So I did something that I never thought I would ever do. I disobeyed him, a little. Aoki did point out to see if I could help anyone out and away from all the fighting. As I ran along the outskirts of the fights, looking for any way I could help, or at least if there was any hope that Erika fighting back. Sadly I could see Nan as the kaiju while using its vines to defend itself, lash out at its attackers, or strike at them from beneath the sand kept on roaring and directly focused its hatred towards me. As seriously, what did I do to anger it? Although its admitted terrifying hatred of me proved to be an advantage as it opened itself to more attacks, though it only seemed like now the tranquilizer starting to take effect. Upon noticing this Aoki flew in my direction and tried to create an opening to use the distributor. However the kaiju noticed this and launched a large amount of sap spray from its mouth, only to stop when a smoke grenade landed in between its eyes, causing it to roar at in pain as it was blinded. Taking the chance both All Might and Gordon rushed forwards towards the kaiju in seeming perfect sync. Doesn't this remind you of anything Yagi? Gordon said as they both uppercuted the stunned kaiju. If you mean New Amsterdam 20 years ago, then you remember it differently than I do. All Might said as the two of them slammed their fists on top of the kaiju's head and severally damaging the crest. It tried to let loose another sap spray, but roared in pain as both Gordon and All Might slammed their fists into its gut and caused it to double over. Hold her jaw open and hold your breath. Aoki shouted as he flew between them. You better know what you're doing Aoki. Gordon called as both him and All Might pried open the kaiju's jaws. As Aoki shoved the distributor down its throat and activated it, the kaiju tried to snap its jaws shut. However an incendiary round from Snipe blew a chunk out of its throat and caused it to roar out in pain as the gas started to pour out of its mouth. Aoki kept flapping his wings in order to keep the gases away. They kept it up for a minute before the kaiju had enough and slammed its jaws shut. Not before All Might and Gordon grabbed its jaws shut and slammed its head into the beach. As it struggled and All Might began coughing up blood. All the other agents and Aoki kept firing into its back with tranquilizer rounds. They kept this up for a minute before all three of them pulled back. The kaiju let out a weak roar as the gases and all the tranquilizers began to take effect. It was moving sluggishly right now, but judging by how fast it started to move its vine and launch wads of sap the kaiju still had plenty of energy left in it. Snipe prepared another smoke grenade, but found himself out of them and was unable to notice the vine shooting out towards him from underneath the beach. And for the second time in this past year, my body just moved on its own. I ran as fast as I could and by the time I reached Snipe a crystal-tipped vine burst from the sand and would have impaled him through the stomach if I didn't push him out of the way. But not before it managed to tear through my shirt and leaving a shallow gash across my left shoulder. It hurt so much. Young Midoriya. All Might called out, but was soon deafened out as the kaiju let out a sound that sent a chill down my whole body that wasn't just from the pain. It was laughing, or at least a series of roars trying to mimic a laugh. A dark, almost childish-sounding sadistic laugh as it have took any kind of sick pleasure and enjoyment in my suffering. But that laughter soon turned into a horrified and rage-filled roar that seemed to startle the kaiju, a roar that I knew well enough by now. Erika, I said weakly as I could hear he roars grow more and more paramount and then the kaiju seemed to be struggling to stay control before to everyone's shock, the vines began to rip each other apart violently. Erika was tearing out the crystals from its vines and with each crystal ripped out the kaiju's control lessened until it was too weak to resist as Erika ripped out its crest. It let out one final roar before Erika's left eye returned to her golden color and she collapsed back to the ground. I let out a sigh of relief as it was finally over, before wincing in pain. You're crazy kid, running up to me like that with a kaiju attacking and all, Snipe said, holstering his gun before ripping off part of his cloak. Before I could even wonder why he was doing, Snipe quickly wrapped the cloth around my open gash and with a wince applied pressure to it and tied. I winced at the sensation, but it felt a lot better than before and thankfully it stopped the bleeding. Thank you, I said with a wince, getting the western-themed hero to shake his head. I should be the one thanking you kid, if you didn't push me out of the way we wouldn't be having this conversation. At least for a few days, I've been impaled once in my career, not looking to doing so once again. Snipe sighed out. Like several years ago, when you used the hero name Positive, you were forced to change your fighting style and take the identity of Snipe after being impaled by a villain, one that missed your heart by a few centimeters, I said, getting the masked hero to look at me before letting out a chuckle. A hero fanboy I take it, not many people remember that anymore. You certainly picked quite the boy Yagi. He will become quite the spectacular hero someday, Snipe said, getting to beam with pride a little to hear such praise from a hero. 
He certainly will be, but he still has a lot to learn. Like staying back when I ask him to. All Might said with a sigh as he approached the two of us before smiling. Though I am proud of what you did. I saw it all. You are coming closer to becoming a hero faster than I expected. Though at least I could wish it was under better circumstances. Agreed. I sighed out. Normally I would be over the moon at having All Might praise me. But now wasn't the mood. Right now I just wanted to know if Erica was alright or not. That and how to explain the gash to mom. Not even a moment later Erica let out a loud roar before breaking into spores. Both Snipe and every agent around us drew their firearm at the cloud of spores. It turned out it wasn't necessary as Erica reformed right in front of me and collapsed onto the ground. Reaching out a vine towards me she let loose a series of small roars as she wrapped her vine around me and dragged me towards her. Erica dot 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 she was blaming herself for hurting me. It wasn't her fault, directly at least. Though it was her body, she wasn't the one controlling it at the time. There was so much that I wanted to ask her. So many questions I wanted answers to. So many things I wanted to ask her about. But to see her like this, injured, on the verge of crying, and barely conscious due to the stress, gas, and uncountable tranquilizers sticking from her. I knew what I needed to do. I it's alright Erica, I'm okay. I said trying to reassure her. I was not. Erica gripping in her vine was only aggravating my shoulder wound even more. But she needed to hear this. I will be alright Erica, I'm more worried about you. You need to rest and let Monarch help you Erica. Just please stop resisting and allow them to help. No more secrets about this. Whatever you wish to tell me, please tell me and I will be ready. I said, laying a hand on her head as she let out a weak roar and started to nod off. I promise that by the next time you see me everything will be alright. Just please, get some rest Erica. I said with a small smile. The one thing I knew was I was not going to see Erica again for a while. Monarch was going to make sure of that much until they figured out more in depth of what was going on. But I do know is that the moment things are looking better, I would be able to see her. She let out a weak roar at that. I promise, I said with a smile. Erica stared at me for a few moments before letting out a soft growl before she stopped resisting. She collapsed unconscious, looking at almost at peace. You did the right thing young Midoriya. All Might said as he walked up toe and place a reassuring hand on my shoulder. It doesn't feel like it, I said a little hoarsely. Sometime it never does, nor is it ever easy. All Might said with a sigh. Please tell me there is some good news on the cure, I asked, hoping that out of this whole mess something good came out of it. However the look All Might gave me told me it was clearly anything but. The first attempt was a failure. It will kill her slowly and painfully. Along with the kaiju infecting her. They hope that her additions and more modern methods they could have a better chance at increasing her chance of survival. But without the final ingredient dot 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 they are going to allow Erica to chose to either wait until a cure or finally be at peace for good this time. All Might said sadly. I see. I said trying not to lose it at this point. Should have thought of such a possibility. But given that they were working on the next chances of the cure it was still hope. But there was one thing that I needed to know. Did they find out why Erica never told anyone? I asked. Getting All Might to go silent for a minute before he spoke up. You were her first hope of anything in her life since her death. She knew that finding out about her infection and that you would blame yourself if you couldn't keep your promise. She was worried that if you couldn't save her, it would break you. All Might said sadly as I started to shake in his grip. It took all of a few seconds before it finally hit me and I had let out everything I had been holding and since the incident started. So that's why she didn't tell me. Erica was worried what would happen if I found out and there was no chance of a cure happens. The worst part was that she was probably right about how I would react. But it never came about. There was still hope. So it made this whole situation a whole lot worse for me. Even 16 days later it still hurts to think about. It all could have been prevented. But that is all in the past now. After letting lose my feelings. All Might and Gordon brought both me and Erica back to UA. Aoki and Snipe stayed behind to deal with the crowd of people wondering what all of the commotion was and picking up each and every crystal left behind. Erica was still unconscious when I last saw her and they began to figure out the true depths of Erica infection. As for me dot 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 they examined me to make sure the crystal had no adverse effects on my body. Which thankfully it hasn't. Even as of today there have been no signs and the crystals don't affect human DNA. Though they affect human flesh just as much as being cut by an elephant's tusk or a rhino's horn. Basically very painful. After that I saw Recovery Girl and I was healed up. Minus the exhaustion and an aching shoulder with a small scar. All Might suggested I only do light training for the next 2-3 to three days while it healed up. Made things easier to explain to mom about the shoulder being from training. After she gave All Might a few stern words of course. After that day I was distraught by what had happened for a bit. I had become more withdrawn and quite according to mom and what I heard Erica was worse off than I was. We were separated for two whole days and I thought that it was probably for the best. I guess I needed some space after what happened. It was the lowest point in the month with everything that happened. I still have a tough time reminiscing about that day and probably will for a long time. But after that awful day, 
and days of keeping to myself, things started to take a turn towards the events of today. For 10 days ago, for the first time in what seemed like forever dot 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 we finally did it. We found the final component to Erica's cure. Dr. TGA. Dr. Mifun what is the status of the Shuragami compound and of this kaiju infecting Erica? Director Sarazawa said as he sat in an office table set up along with Graham, Principal Nezu. All Might in his hero form, Agent Aoki, and the two doctors with two briefcases set up. Agent Gordon being absent as he was tasked to pick up Agent Duper at the airport and giving her a full briefing when the meeting was called. It had been three days since Erica's possession and security had improved greatly, though it appeared to have been no need. Erica had been for the lack of a better term lethargic since she woke up, barely responding to anything. Even as some of the scientists actually brave enough to volunteer to pick any small crystals that started to emerge from her body every now and then or to take genetic samples from her body. The only time she actually seemed to briefly return to her former self was when she didn't want to be bothered when she would roar or lash out with her vines. Along with one instance when someone suggested a name for the unnamed kaiju, Space Gorgira. A ridiculous name and a statement she believed judging by the mixture of anger and laughter in Erika's roars after hearing that. No one knew if it was just Erika herself or if the kaiju had only briefly surfaced for a few moments. The scientific staff stationed at the temporary base had been working around the clock to figuring out how to lower the fatality rate of the Shuragami compound, which in little over an hour ago, they had finally made a breakthrough of sorts. Little over an hour ago the two of us had finally exhausted all modern methods to improving the Shuragami compound. Dot 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 safe to say Erika had us beat with her calculations if only by a single percent, literally. Yujiro said as he pulled out of one of the briefcases two syringes with the Shuragami compound. The second one a darker color than the first and presumably second batches. Along with two small slabs of Erika's flesh, getting Nezu and All Might to wince. The former looking out a nearby window at Erika with some sympathy before stealing himself. Both batches are equally affected. Although the third batch has a faster rate of breaking down Erika's DNA. Mifun said as both he and Yujiro injected the syringes into the flesh, both began to calcify. With the flesh injected by the third batch began to break down and dissolve faster than the second batch. As you can see the third batch has a much higher rate of decay than the first. However inversely it has a strange effects on the kaiju's crystals. Yujiro said as he pulled out two small crystals from the briefcase. Both scientists pulled out another syringe and injected each crystal with the Shuragami compound. Only for the crystal injected with the second batch to almost immediately be eaten away. Shattering and quickly breaking down to the surprise of everyone there. Honestly given Erika's clear hatred of the kaiju, this should have been expected, Hayaki noted. But this also brings into question if Erika truly knew the full effects the Shuragami compound as well. Graham said, Then I believe we will not be getting any answers from her at the moment. All might side out. True. But she seems to have had enough understanding to modify it that second batch of the Shuragami compound has a predicted chance of fatality at 98.2%. Mifune said, while with modern methods combined Erika's batch has resulted in a predicted fatality rate of 97.4%, so there is a 2.6% chance if we use the third batch that it could cure Erika. But that is too small of a percentile to tell what could happen. Without the binding agent it would most likely still result in a painful death. Yujiro said, getting Sarazawa to sigh out. I see. Are you sure there is no other way to improve the Shuragami compound or any idea what the bonding agent is? He asked, getting the scientists to shake their heads. I'm afraid not. We have exhausted all conventional means of modern science to improve the Shuragami compound. With some time we might be able to improve Erika's chances to survival but it will be minute. Mifune sighed out. That and Erika is running out of time. She could possibly be gone before we could even find the bonding agent. Yujiro said, opening the second briefcase to reveal several laminated pictures of Erika's cells. He began to pass them out as everyone gained a grime look on their faces at hearing the news, with Nezu and Serizawa immediately looking over the pictures handed out. The pictures were photos of Erika's cells on a daily basis from when she first returned to Earth to now, with certain parts highlighted from the second photo onward, progressively getting larger and larger slowly until cells dated to Erika's possession showed that it covered a good portion of her cell. Before the next photo showed cell returned to normal except some more areas were highlighted and it continued one grow worse. I have been expecting something like this, but the difference between the before and after the kaiju's emergence is a little jarring. Sarazawa noted, the picture going from just a tiny portion of Erika's cells to over a third of it being affected, especially what we thought, but it would make sense in order to kaiju to have gained a foothold as it did. The infection rate had been small but gradually doubling over time from 1.5% in the first week to 3% right before her possession. Post-possession Erika's infection rate had risen to 6.25% percent that day and is now over 7.06% infection rate as of the last test sample. 
Yujiro said with a shake of his head, factoring in the corruption of Erika's cells and if she was not possessed again by our calculations and the rate of infection Erika could be beyond our help in exactly eight weeks' time. Mifune said sadly, and leaving only the kaiju to remain. Nezu said seriously, judging by my calculations if it takes her over again then we would have 27 days, 7 hours, and 2 minutes to find a bonding agent to prevent a worst case scenario. Give or take 50 seconds, much less time if it emerges later on. Then we have no time to lose. Dr. Mifune. Dr. TGA I suggest that you both start working on finding that bonding agent immediately. Director Sarazawa said as the two began to pack their results away. Believe us, we already had people starting to work on finding the bonding agent before we came here. Yujiro said as he and Mifune packed everything up. Good. Aoki you are in charge of improving security based on what we saw of the kaiju's capabilities. I know you already have. Just make sure to improve upon what we have as close to perfection as you can get. In case we ever reach a worst case scenario. Sarazawa said seriously. Already won it director. Agent Aoki said as he got up and left to do his task. Nezu turned to face All Might as he coughed up blood and turned back to his regular form. Tashinori do you believe it is time for Midoriya to be brought back? Nezu inquired, getting the man to nod. I do. He has been doing better with coming to terms with what happened, but I am still unsure how young Midoriya would react to meeting Erika face to face, or how Erika will react to him. All Might sighed out. He had been monitoring him while doing some light training while his shoulder healed. The number one hero was thankful that young Midoriya was not infected with anything, but it would leave a small scar on his shoulder, something in coach hided him about when covering up Midoriya's injury as a training accident, which was technically true, the worst in history but a training accident nonetheless. Anyways, Midoriya had shown to have recovered, but interacting with Erika could end negatively for the both of them with the possibility of the kaiju re-emerging once again, leaving it as a bit of a volatile situation if handled wrongly. Your concerns are valid, but perhaps it is best to reunite the two of them. Erika is become less and less responsive by the day. With her mental health in such a decay there could be a chance for the kaiju to take hold, Graham said with a sigh. So it would be paramount to bring Midoriya to meet her and with all the guards and failsafes. It should be sufficient enough to prevent another incident, Nezu said, getting All Might to sigh as he got up from his chair. Then I will be going him right now, and will be telling him everything going on with Erika. All Might said as he walked to door, a small smile on his face. Young Midoriya was not going to like this news, but All Might was certain that his young protege could handle it after the last attack. I could barely handle it when I first got the news. After school All Might picked me up from school and have me the bad news. There was only eight weeks left until Monarch believed Erika was beyond the point of a cure, and a little less than for four weeks in case she was possessed by the kaiju again, and from the sounds of it they expected it to happen again. Just thinking about it causes my shoulder to ache. Mom was not happy by the scar left behind, but at least it was nothing more than a scratch after getting healed by Recovery Girl. But after spending some time thinking about it, I suppose it was like a mark of a hero, or a villain, or just someone who has overcome the odds. Most heroes have one, especially All Might's from whatever villain that I dread to think of that nearly killed him. Considering that the kaiju's crystal nearly impaled snipe or could have impaled me through the shoulder I suppose it was a small price to pay. And something tells me it will there will be quite a few more like. Young Midoriya you're mumbling again. All Might said, temporarily breaking me out of my thoughts. Sorry, I said. I really need to get a handle on that. Anyway there was at least the good news that there was a slim chance to cure her with the Shuragami compound, but there was a major chance that she could die. Given that she had also been borderline unresponsive ever since the incident, it was honestly quite a shock. Considering how Erika usually acts, hearing this disheartened me. And it was only getting worse. So here I was, at the door for Erika's containment cell, ready to do something I should have done at least a day after the incident. Are you sure you're ready for this? All Might asked, getting me to nod. I am, I said with a firm resolve. All right, then let's do this and I will be right behind you. All Might said as he opened the first security door to see a tail, pale, unkempt man in worn out black clothing and a large gray scarf in the room before Erika. Aizawa, what are you doing here? He looked familiar to me, but I couldn't quite place it. Partly due to the inquisitive look he was giving me had me an edge. Nezu ordered me as backup in case Erika tries anything. Aizawa said before facing me. So this is the problem child that you have been training then. He added. P problem child. Now Aizawa all might tried to say. But Aizawa cut him off. Whatever the reason I could careless. Aizawa said apathetically. What you cannot deny is the boy is a walking trouble magnet. In just the past two weeks he has met the first kaiju in over 250 years, gained the attention of a global organization in Kaom, ambushed in an alleyway by a junior high-aged criminal, and found himself nearly a victim in the first kaiju attack in centuries. Considering he is about to enter a room with Erika in her current condition, I believe that qualifies. Hate to say it Midoriya, but I have to agree with Aizawa. 
It seems you have had quite the string of bad luck lately. All Might said with a sigh. I it would seem so. I said, hesitantly agreeing with him. Aside from that, as I said you are willing to walk into a dangerous situation. Aizawa said, his tone even as he started to approach the two of us. Erika could possibly get taken over at any time. It is only a matter of time before the kaiju fully takes her over. Even if the Shuragami compound is finished there could still be a good chance it will kill the both of them. I gulped upon hearing that as the Aizawa stopped in his tracks and I finally recognized him by his scarf, or rather his capture tool, the Razor Head, an underground hero and infamous for expelling an entire class from UA. Last year, he was more intimidating in person, which wasn't helping my nerves with what he, he was saying. Either way there is still a good chance Erika will die, either in agony for a potential cure or the kaiju taking over. The former option is a mercy and the second option is a potential blight on us all. Aizawa said seriously, once you leave this room, you better be prepared to own whatever decision you make and the consequences that will follow. I was shaking a little right now, the underground hero's words weighing heavily on my mind. Make one mistake and it would be just like three days ago and speeding up the process of Erika's death. And if that does come to fruition and add in there were still Erika's spores in the atmosphere, I turned pale as I realized if the kaiju fully took over Erika it had everything it needed to reconstruct itself on Earth. And if it did so, there was literally no telling what it could do. It was such a freighting possibility, one that might come true if something goes wrong. But I've had three days to think about what I was going to do when I saw Erika next, so I was going to do everything I can to make sure that it doesn't happen. I I know, I've have had plenty of time to think what I was going to do. Even knowing what will happen I will still do everything I can and beyond to help Erika. If I can't help her when she has put so much faith in my, then how can I become a hero who can save anyone? I said, shakily at first but gaining traction, letting lose what I truly believed. All Might smiled at my words while Eraser Head remained silent for a few moments before speaking once again. And what if all your effort goes to waste? What will you do if the only is to give her mercy? Aizawa said bluntly. If it comes to it dot 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 then I will be there for her. I promised Erika that I would help her. If there is truly nothing we can do, then the very least I can do is be there for when the time comes for her to pass on. I said trembling before stealing myself. But until then I will do everything I can to save her. Over these three days I have considered the possibility of giving Erika the chance to move on. Her first death had resulted in her father bringing her back to life and turning her into a kaiju. So now there was finally a chance for her to be given her finally rest, while also giving her the chance to being as close to human again as possible. So unless the possibility of the kaiju taking full control or Erika does wish to move on, I am not giving up on helping her. Aizawa stayed silent for a few moments, before grinning. A sight that unserved me a little, so it seems like you are ready. Good, because I hate dragging kids into situations they are not prepared for. Aizawa said before he dropped his grin and began to walk behind me. You have already experienced some of the dangers a hero faces daily. But there is one you have not. There are times a hero can't save everyone. Nothing you can to prepare for it, only to prevent it. Even then there is still the chance of failure. Just be ready for it when the time comes. With that he walked past me as I just nodded at his words. It was a risk all heroes had to face, but never shows up in media as often as it should be in my opinion. There have even been lawsuits of heroes fudging such results just for the sake of gaining popularity even with clear proof. Thankfully a majority of those cases have gotten called out on for such deplorable acts. But sadly there are always cases that fall through the cracks or overturned. So I guess that was a razor head's way of just be ready for the reality of Erika's death if it comes down to it. Something that I wasn't all that sure I could handle if it came down for it. The doors to Erika's cell opened and All Might placed a hand on my shoulder. I turned to face him and despite his smile he looked tired. There wasn't that much crime reported out in the city so there was still plenty of time for his limit. Was it what Aizawa said? All Might has always saved everyone he could ever since his debut and his time in the States. Maybe it was some time off the books, like with what caused his injury. You can do this Midoriya. We'll be right behind you. All Might said, breaking me out of my thoughts. I just nodded at that as the door opened and I walked into Erika's cell, making a note to ask All Might about it later. In the cell I saw multiple agents and snipe looking like they were ready to intervene if necessary, something that I hope it doesn't come to that. Up above I also noticed that Director Sirizawa, Deputy Director Graham, and Agent Gordon were observing the events going on, along with someone I didn't recognize. A young woman with black hair with a bang partially covering her left eye and loose black suit with a violet shirt. I think I have an idea on who she might be, but I need to check on Erica first. Looking at the other wise of the room I saw that she was lying down on the ground, looking a little paler than usual and barely moving. I took a few more steps towards her before Erica noticed me. She let out a soft roar and proceeded to move away from me. This isn't good. Usually now Erica would have wrapped me up in her vines at this point. She still might blame herself for what happened. 
While she did not tell anyone about what happened, it was the kaiju to blame for my shoulder and going on a rampage. Erika I'm alright like I promised, so please let me talk to you, I said to her. Erika hesitated for a few moments and let out a low roar before moving closer to me slowly. She reached out a vine towards me ever so gently before tracing over my left shoulder and letting out a sorrowful roar. I'm alright Erika, not even a scratch though there is a scar, I said, getting Erika to roar even louder. And for a small crystal to grow on her head, probably shouldn't have said that. But she needed to hear what I had to say next. But it's alright Erika, it is something I anticipated for when I become a hero. It wasn't your fault, it was that kaiju's fault. Besides I consider it a reminder, I said, getting Erika to look at me in confusion. A reminder to the promise I made to help you dot 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 or a reminder of everything we had been through together if the time comes for it. Erika drew herself closer to me slowly, before wrapping me in her vines and began to nuzzle against me while roaring softly. It was an outcome we both knew that was a possible outcome for a while now, but it still didn't hurt less for either one of us to think about. There is only eight weeks left according to Monarch, less so the more the kaiju takes over. In case they don't have the anything, at least I will have something to help remember you by besides memories, and I will always cherish our time together, I said, trying not to tear up and failing as Erica stopped nuzzling me. But as you had written on the wall, I was the one to have given you hope in so long. So until the very end, I will not let your hope in me to go misplaced. Taking a deep breath, I composed myself a little bit, although the tears kept streaming down my cheek while doing so. Because no matter what Erica I will do everything I can to help you and even if there is nothing that can be done I will still be there the entire way. But I am not giving up yet. There is still a chance for the Shuragami compound to work, so there is still hope. But I have something to ask you Erica. I asked, getting Erica to let out a small growl in reply. Taking that as a yes, I brushed off some of my tears before continuing. Please don't keep anything like the kaiju hidden from us again. If you even suspect tell us anything, so we can prevent another incident from happening again and we focus on working on improving the Shuragami compound faster without worrying about possession. Can you promise me that Erika? I asked. She remained silent for a moment before one of her vines reached for her head and ripped out the crystal on her head, briefly letting out a roar that for a split second sound like the kaiju's and caused a shudder down my spine followed soon after by the sound of a static buzz and multiple guns being clicked from above. Hold your fire, there is nothing to worry about. Snipe called from up above, putting his gun down. However he seemed to be the only one as everybody else looked tense on the upper floor. Even down here a razor head had his capture scarf ready to deploy and even All Might looked a little uneasy. Most worrying was that the woman that had been with the directors and Agent Gordon had appeared behind them, which wasn't a good sign. Considering that noise, I believe that was the proof that woman was Agent Duper. Before I could even worry about what could happen, Erica shook the vine holding the crystal to get the blood off of it. The wound on her head closed and she gently placed the crystal in her hand, getting me to flinch once I saw it. A trans-orange colored crystal, like the kind on the crest that adored Erica when the kaiju took over. She let out a soft roar before using her vines to move me over to a patch of dirt that she just finished writing in. It read, I promise Izuku. For days I feared the worst, what you would think after what that abomination had done. Guess I had nothing to worry about. Since you still believe in me so strongly, I have hope that this cure will work. But in case it doesn't, well I do believe that this crystal would be a better reminder than that scar. Make sure to keep it close. Consider it a reminder of your promise. A small way to thank you, and dot 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 to tell you that dot 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 you are my hero Izuku. I stood there for a second, just processing what she wrote while Erika looked away while letting out a soft growl. I started to tear up once more. She thought of me as her hero dot 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 this is the first time anyone has ever thought of me like that. To think of me as a hero. I couldn't even muster the words or thoughts for such a thing. E Erika. I cried out as I wrapped my arms around her neck and started to cry, getting a startled roar from her. My body moved on its own as I started to break down. But not out of sadness, but of happiness. T thank you Erika dot 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 for making my dream come true, even if just a small part. I cried out. So we are going to make it through with whatever comes next dot 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 to make your dream a reality. Erika let out a loud roar before embracing me in her vines. It hurt a little, but I could care less at the moment. The both of us were just too happy to care. There was no way I was going to give up on Erika. Not then, not now, and certainly not in the future. There is still time and I was going to make sure any way I can that Erika regains a human form. She considers me her hero and if I failed to help her and everything we have been through dot 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 how could I be a hero who can save anyone? Looks like we had nothing to worry about, just like I thought. Snipe said as he walked up to Sarazawa. It would seem so, but we are going to have to get Erika checked out. That roar was too similar to the kaijus to my liking. Along with the orange crystal, no other had been found except for the incident. Sarazawa said seriously. Correct, but I believe we should postpone it just for a little while. Just let them have some time together. 
Graham said, gesturing down towards both Erika and Izuku. Sarazawa wanted to tell her otherwise, but Gordon spoke up. Let the green bean have this, they deserve it after what happened. Ten minutes fifteen minutes with each other wouldn't hurt anyone. Gordon said gruffly, that and this is just too precious. Graham muttered under her breath. Sarazawa sighed before a small smile graced his face. Very well then, the director said before activating his earpiece. Agent Duper disengage, the situation is all clear. All Might and Aizawa heard the sound of a weapon being hoisted and turned to see Agent Duper. It would seem like I wasn't needed, Duper said, before looking at Izuku and Erika. Nor did I expect for the kid to reason with a kaiju. Been telling myself that for the past two and a half weeks, Aizawa muttered out. Director Sarazawa sent you as backup then, in case the kaiju manifests, Duper said, her tone a little cold before sighing. But I was not expecting this. After observing the situation for weeks it is difficult and T.O. believe that it is, but I've always had faith in Midoriya. If he believes so strongly that we can cure Erika before it is too late, All Might said with pride, smiling at his successor. Duper just gave him a silent nod before looking back at the kid and kaiju before vanishing. A static buzz hanging in the air was the only indication that she was even there. I'll take that as my cue to switch shifts. Word of warning Yamada is taking my place. And you can imagine how he will react to this. The Razor Head said, getting All Might to wince. I'll keep that in mind All Might said. And All Might, that problem child of yours has the conviction to be a hero. But he has a lot to work on. Aizawa said before walking away. All Might could only nod in agreement before coughing a little blood and shifting back to his true form. You're right Aizawa, but young Midoriya is nearly ready. All Might said, wiping away the blood and smiling at Izuku and Erika. A true hero saves not only lives but also their spirits. I believe that you are a true hero today. Wouldn't you agree, master? After that they took Erika for some more tests, and thankfully there was no signs of the kaiju emerging or another spike of infection, though she did lash out when Monarch tried to take the crystal from me. I have it around my neck right now, rarely taking it off during the day, except during at school. Don't want to risk it getting stolen, or having to risk explaining it. Mom already found out and told her the partial truth. It was a friend named Erika that I meet training under All Might over two weeks ago. She currently undergoing treatments to help her out. It was to keep a promise I made to her and to help her when she gets better. I had to calm mom down as the tears wouldn't stop. She was proud of me and has made it very clear she wants meet her once Erika gets better, with me partially dreading them ever meeting when the time comes. Anyway things slightly fell back into a rhythm after that day, minus getting an autograph from President Mike. Only main difference was All Might and Agent Gordon decided to extend sparring sessions daily for up to an hour. It was nothing but an uphill battle when it came to that part of training. But all that soon changed once again when they found the last component three days later. Are you sure this was a good idea? Dr. Mifune asked Yujiro as the hematologist was examining blood samples a little ways away from him. It has only been two days and while I also question if this was the correct choice, but despite her methods, we have been making excellent progress on perfecting the Shuragami compound, Yujiro said. Getting Mifune to nod as they watched their newest college proceeded to begin another gruesome experiment process. Given that there was only about seven and a half weeks till Erika was beyond their help, work on improving the Shuragami compound they had to bring out some extra help from other monarch facilities, including someone who was once one of the brighter minds humanity had to offer, Dr. Erika Shuragami, a decision that was necessary as it seemed modern methods had reached a roadblock. That and she had been more way cooperative after Izuku had talked to her. While her true intelligence was in question, she was still the daughter of history's greatest geneticist and was an accomplishment plant geneticist back when she was a human, and it appeared she retained at least some of that intelligence. But it was hard to tell sometimes with how she behaved, which included occasionally roaring at the scientists helping her out or violently ripping out her vines or flesh in order to test the effects of the improved batches of Shuragami compound. Despite her methods being brutal and difficult as hell to clean up her workstation, it has proved time and time again to be a big help in improving her cure. With her help they were able to reduce the fatality rate of the Shuragami compound from 97.4% to 95.7%, with each batch improving the last one every few hours. The three of them were headlining the creation of the compound, Mifune using the newest measurements to synthesis each new batch and Yujiro and Erika testing out the effectiveness of the compound while the former also checking if any were dangerous to humans. And there were quite a few batches that were theorized that could have reduced humans to bone due to the effect of producing micro-oxygen and destroying multiple blood cells. Right now Erika was in the process of ripping one of her vines off with her maw, something that slightly disturbed both scientists with the ease she did so. Sure they had removed them in the past and Erika had ungodly regenerative capabilities, but it was another thing to see the ease which she was doing it herself was another thing altogether.
one that the would have crashed into the later if he didn't move out of the way. Instead it crashed into his workstation, breaking multiple vials of blood and a syringe full of the newest shuragami compound. Got him at Erika, be careful next time. Ijiro snapped at her, getting Erika to roar back at him as she had a scientist help her apply the shuragami compound to the dismembered vine. Considering her strength it was a good idea to have someone help her with the process without accidentally getting the compound on her. And that was the last of the newest batch. I'll get some people to help clean this up. Mifune sighed out. I'll start the cleaning process, Yujiro said as he went to get some supplies. Only for Erika's spores start to manifest around him as she reformed over the mess. Erika what are you Yujiro tried to say, but was interrupted when Erika pointed one of her vines at the bit of vine in the middle of a puddle of blood and the shuragami compound. You want me to examine that? Erika roared loudly and reached out a vine towards him, but the hematologist was already walking back to his station, and proceeded to gag as a rancid smell started to fill the area. Well that is quite the reaction. Yujiro gagged out as what he could best describe the smell to be someone doused a bunch of roses in blood and gasoline while throwing in a bit or two of rotten meat in for good mix. Something Erika agreed with with a mixture of growling and gagging. Yujiro looked at the putrid smelling vine to see that at one of the openings some of her blood was leaking out while a mixture of multiple human blood and shuragami compounds seeping into the vine, with the outer edges calcifying and the texture changing a little. Okay now this is a promising reaction. Yujiro said, cutting off a small piece of vine and the mixture of blood and chemical onto a glass slide. He slipped it under his microscope and zoomed in on it. His eyes widened in shock and looked at Erika, who gave him a confused look. Mifune you better come see this before it breaks down. Yujiro called out to the elderly geneticist. Just take a look. Yujiro said with a grin, stepping out of the way for Mifune to take a look. His eyes widened in shock before pulling himself away from the microscope. Someone get me Director Sarazawa and fast. Dr. Mifune called out. And anyone not currently working on something come down here. We are going to need everyone available to gather enough data for this to work in such a short amount of time. Dr. TGA called out as well, getting the lab to burst into activity as people left their station. Erika we are going to need a lot more vines. Erika let out aloud. Joyous roared that before she went to work, happy that they had just made a major breakthrough. Today was a good day so far. All Might said that today was going light training at UA, compared to the past two days, mainly because I wouldn't be sparing with Agent Gordon today, something that I am immensely happy about. I don't have to worry about going through a one-hour grueling sparring session with someone who could keep up with All Might and hardly any restraint. I might be able to land a few hits here and there. But I always need end up a battered and bruised mess at the end. If I had to choose between another sparring session with him or facing the kaiju again dot 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 it would be a tie to be honest. Couldn't tell what was worse. But according to All Might he was sent to Monarch's base in Amori Prefecture. A lot of activity had been going on in the lake lately so he was sent to check it out along with Director Sarazawa. I really hope that it is a false alarm. Because I believe Erika and the kaiju lurking within her are enough for now. Speaking of which, I am bracing myself and or when Erika sees me again later. She was began to wrap me up in her vines with enough force that I feared for my lungs whenever I see her. It took all might to pry me out of them, but thankfully Erika only seemed to do that once a day and always the first time we met. But despite the pain I couldn't help but be happy for her. Especially after finding out Erika had recently taken a big part in improving the shuragami compound, which were quite effective despite her questionable methods. I am sure with her helping the progression with her cure will continue to increase at the rate that it does. That way we wouldn't have to worry about the kaiju taking over and that she will be restored to a human form before her deadline. Right now I was currently drying myself off after taking a shower. I had just gone on a long jog before, making sure to be careful to not be ambushed once again. Even a week later there was no sign of Shiten, which I am sure with the condition Erika had left him and he should have been found sooner or later. But sadly that wasn't the case. So besides worrying for my life, it actually was a pretty good job. Even got to witness Kamui Woods take down a mugger with a crocodile quirk in the cleanest villain capture that I had ever seen. So all in all it has been a good day so far. Anyway as I was drying myself off, my phone started to vibrate. I switched it on and, five missed calls from All Might All in the last ten minutes. H hello, I said, trying to calm myself down. Young Midori I have been trying to reach you for a bit now. What have you been doing? All Might asked over the phone. I have just gotten out of the shower. I said to him, that is our do it. Anyway get dressed I am nearly at your apartment. We are heading to UA. Earlier than planned. All Might said happily. Any reason why? I asked as I finished drying myself off and started to get changed. Wouldn't want to ruin the surprise. I'll tell you on the way. I am here right now. I will see you so soon. All Might said before hanging up. I wonder what he wants to tell me. 
Maybe it was something about Erika, considering there was not even an iota of negativity in his voice. It wasn't that the kaiju took over or she escaped again. Maybe they made a breakthrough in the Shuragami compound, or it could be word of what is going on in Amori Prefecture. Maybe both. Either way, I anxious to hear what happened and I hope that Erika was alright. Anyway after I finished getting dressed and getting prepared I put on the necklace where I attached Erika's crystal I slipped out of the bathroom. Next week, sounds good to me. I overhead All Might's voice from down the hall. He was here sooner than expected. Then I will see you at 13 then. Mom's voice said as I turned to corner to see them. What are you two talking about? I asked, surprising Mom as she turned to face me. Her face slightly red. I Izuku please don't sneak up on me like that. Mom said, clutching her heart. As sorry Mom. I stuttered out before recomposing myself. But what were you and Mr. Yagi talking about? Mom was silent for a moment before she spoke up. That he was offering to drive me to pick up the car after its annual inspection. Mom said with a smile, getting me to nod. Our car's inspection was next week. And considering what was going on with Kachin's family All Might would have the most reliable means of transportation. Now Izuku it is time to go. All Might said, getting me to nod as I grabbed my book bag containing my workout uniform and my notebooks. Please be safe Izuku and make sure to tell Erika that I said hello and that I hope she feels better soon. Mom said before hugging me. I will, and she will appreciate you saying that. I said honestly, hugging her back. Love you Izuku. Mom said as we separated from each other. Love you too mom. I said with a smile, waving goodbye as I exited our apartment and started to walk down then hall. Should we tell him? All Might ask and co quickly and quietly. No, we are still testing things out. Let's wait to see how things progress first. Inko said, getting All Might to nod with a small smile. All right, anyway I shall bring him back in about three hours. All Might said, the later part louder as Izuku looked book. Okay and good luck with your appointment. Inko said as she waved them goodbye as All Might walked caught up with his pupil. So that is what you told mom to why you came to get me so early. I said, getting All Might to nod as he coughed up some blood. Not entirely the truth. I do have my monthly appointment to check on the condition of my injury coming up. But it is tomorrow. All Might sighed out. I see. So what is it that you are picking me up early for? I asked as we were far enough from mom. Oh that, they found the cure for Erica. All Might said, getting me to stop in my tracks. Young Midoriya. What? Turns out the bonding agent agent for the Shuragami compound was human blood cells and platelets. Dr. Mifun said as we were all in a room off of the main lab. He and Dr. TGA were on one side presenting their findings with Erica, who looked like she was over the moon. Considering the subject of this meeting, she had every right to be. On the other side of the room stood Deputy Director Graham, All Might, Principal Nezu, Director Sarazawa via webcam, Agent Duper, Agent Aoki and myself. I was currently drying my eyes, not afraid to admit I cried on the way to UA. They were tears of joy to know we were so close to restoring Erica to a human form. The only details All Might told me on the way here after calming me down was that it was going to be explained and that they spent nearly two and a half hours of tests in order to gain a better understanding of how the cure would work. So here we all are. And I couldn't have expected that to have been the answer. So you are saying human blood is the answer? Agent Aoki asked incredulously. Part of the answer at least. It is a little more complex than that. Just straight up injecting human blood and shuragami compound will still have the same effects as straight up injecting it into her without the blood. Dr. Mifune said with a shake of his head. No the process in essence a large blood transfusion with a few more steps. Yujiro said with a smile, salivating a little bit. Dr. TGA. Graham said, making a subtle gesture, getting the hematologist to wipe his mouth with his sleeve. Sorry about that. Anyway the most effective way for this process to work is similar to a blood transfusion but with Erica's blood going out of her body at the same rate as the cure is going in. Otherwise it will be the same effect. Aoki, we are going to need your help with this part. Yujiro said, getting the agent in question to nod. Going to need the examine a whole lot of medical equipment to see how they function and will need a some professional help before I can make such a device. Aoki said, getting Sarazawa and Nezu to nod. I will bring transfer some more personal over to the base. Sarazawa said with a nod. And I will have you start with Chiyo when she gets back. Nezu said, but what are going to do with Erika's blood? If you are going have a blood transfusion then her blood has to be transferred into someone else. And given the exact nature of her cells, it could very well end disaster. I asked, given the chimera-like nature of her cells, which included Gajira DNA and a high number of people have died from radiation poisoning from straight up injecting that kaiju cells into their body. So unless the Shuragami compound destroys the cells or dilutes them the effects could range from just about anything including slight effects, to mutations, and finally death. The boy is right. There is no case on record on how a human will react to having Erika's cells in their body. So I believe that you three have found a way around this or to lessen its effects. Duper said coolly before she faced me. 
Also quit your mutter please. Sorry, I said quietly, snapping out of my muttering. You both are right. There will be some change to whoever is a willing donor. We have no idea of the full effects, so there is bound to be a few mutations but as we can gather so far nothing life-threatening. Yujiro said, given the nature of Erika's cells changes are bound to happen. But for the method of the transfusion we need to inject the Shuragami compound into the donor's cells. Through multiple tests we conducted the compound has a very short lifespan once injected into a human body. Just barely long enough for a blood transfusion and it needs at least 10 to 15 minutes to bond to the blood platelet. Dr. Mifune explained. But with Erika's cells the compound will stay alive longer and bond with them in the human body. Diluting the effects of Erika's cells. There will still be effects, but with a willing donor we can monitor whatever changes will occur. Ujiro explained before his face turned grim. We have also found the correct ration for the Shuragami compound to work and very well might have found the reason Dr. Shuragami never added it into the composition of the compound. With what he said and Erika letting out a deep growl at her father's name meant that it spelled nothing but trouble. And what is the ratio exactly? Sarazawa asked tersely. The ratio is one full syringe of shuragami compound, 10% of an adult's blood supply, and an equal amount of Erika's blood. We suggest that the process be done in increments for the donor's health, Dr. Mifune said seriously. Increments of a week to give us time to observe both the donor and Erika for changes as well. We expect the process to take at least three weeks, with 30% of an adult's blood being the given amount to restore Erika to a human form. Yujiro sighed out, and this is at her current size. I'd estimate that if she was at her full size for Erika to be restored to a human form dot 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 it would have taken draining at least six full-grown men of every last drop of blood in order for it to work, killing them in the process. As six people, it would have taken at least six people to cure Erika at her full size. No wonder Erika's father left the final component out and why she sounded so upset. Given the cure was completed right before his death and lengths he had went to bring Erika back from the dead she had every right to be enraged, for he might have sacrificed that many people just to restore Erika back to a human form, no matter the consequences or not. And considering the possible implications of pouring all of that Kajira blood into human flesh while taking all their blood dot 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 the outcome is just too horrific to imagine. I think I am going to hurl. It's going to be okay Izuku. All Might said, putting a reassuring hand on my shoulder as everyone else in the room looked to have various degrees of horrified or disturbed on their faces, considering the possibilities I had thought up, besides the potential disaster that would result from the original treatment. What is the possibility of the kaiju inside her surviving the treatment? Graham said after regaining her composure. We tested that and the results show that any and all crystals were exterminated with the tests we conducted so far. We are closely monitoring e-test. So any different result no matter how many it will be documented. But all results seem to show there will be no trace of the parasitic kaiju left, Dr. Mifune said. As for the blood, we are keeping gathering every sample of blood we can and mixing it with the shuragami compound to stimulate an artificial procedure with bits of Erika's flesh. The first example was all over the place due to being an accident and the result came from a mess of multiple different samples before degrading and breaking down not long after. We are going to go over various blood samples both quirk and quirkless to see which has the best result of survivability as what we got was a 50% to 80% chance of survival so far compared to the 4.3% chance alone. Of course we are going to need to procure samples from any available sources besides our own director, deputy director, Yujiro said, getting Sarazawa and Graham to nod. I'll pull whatever resources to secure what we can from local and surrounding hospitals and blood drives immediately. Graham said, Shio is already getting whatever she can at the moment, but I do believe that I have a favor or two that I can use to acquire a few more samples. Mezu said, with the additional variables we shall have enough data and at least a week we can proceed with the operation once we find the best results. After that it depends on when we find a willing donor, so giving us plenty of time to also prepare Erika for the transition. Dr. Mifune said, getting Erika to let out a low growl at that. It was going to be a painful process. We've known that for weeks now, but now we know the process is going to last at least three weeks. I could barely fathom the sheer pain Erika would be going through. But from the look of thing, Erika is willing to embrace it in order to become human again. Is there anything else we should be aware of? Duper inquired. Just two more bits. The first one is that the process has a bit of a side effect. Nothing harmful except for a putrid smell that will linger while Erika is in the process of regaining a human form. I suggest those that will be monitoring her wear hazmat suits as that smell will continue on for weeks, Dr. Mifune said, getting me to wince and wonder how bad that smell must be. Finally we are going to need a blood sample from every adult in the room, the fresher it is, the better results we will get. 
Nezu is the exception for obvious reasons. No offense, Yujiro said as the principal waved it off. None taken. Besides I am afraid Erika might try to eat me again at the smell of my blood. Nezu said. The way Erika was letting out a low growl in her throat was only proving him right. Nezu will take care of it Tashinori, don't worry. Nezu said, cutting off a worried looking All Might, calming the hero down. What was going on to get All Might apprehensive like that? Whatever it was it seemed that at least director Sarazawa knew as well. With that out of the way there are still a few matters to discuss like the finer details of this matter and the findings here at this base. Agent Aoki I believe that you should get a head start. After monitoring Erika for a few minutes, I believe that she can hardly contain herself anymore. Sarazawa noted, looking directly at her. And for us to notice her extending her vines towards me and Nezu, sap dripping from the vines snaking towards him. Midoriya please take her away. Nezu said calmly, though sounding absolutely terrified. E Erika don't eat him. I said, grabbing one of her vines as she roared out a little before breaking into spores as Aoki opened the door. And she tried to dragging me out of the room with her spores. This shouldn't be more than a few minutes, hold out until then. All Might said with an apologetic grin as the door closed behind us. Both of us knowing what was going to happen as Erika reformed and let out a loud roar as she wrapped myself in her vines before she started to start nuzzling me. So do you need my help right now? Aoki asked as Erika's vines started to construct me even more. Give her a minute, she deserves it. I breathed out with a wince. All right, but I am getting a crowbar. Aoki said as he flew off. Despite my lungs starting to scream out in pain at the moment, I was ignoring as best I can. Erika kept on nuzzling me, looking the happiest I have ever seen her. After 280 some years, she finally has a definite shot at regaining human form. It wasn't without risk though, but considering how long she had been stuck in this form and a parasitic kaiju lurking within Erika was willing to take this to be rid of them all. For now she was overjoyed at the prospect of being cured as was I. While I still had a few things in my mind like what was going on in Amori Prefecture, what was All Might concerned about, and the fact my lungs were starting to burn, all were pushed aside at knowing that I will be able to keep my promise to save Erika and how it will become a reality. I started to tear up at nothing that a dream once thought impossible for her, like myself becoming a hero months ago would soon become a reality. That dot 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 and I really needed to breathe now. Erika, can you please let go now? I wheezed out. But it seemed like Erika was in such a euphoria that she didn't seem to notice. Nor when Agent Aoki tried to pry me out of her vines with a crowbar. Okay I am going to need some help over. Aoki called out as I tried to squirm out of her vines. This was going to take a few minutes. Which it did. It took three minutes and two other monarch agents helping Aoki before they could pry me free. But that did little to stop Erika's good mood as she wrapped me up in her vines again. Thankfully on a more manageable level. The meeting ended a few minutes after that. Never did find out what All Might was concerned about until days after that, but I did learn there had been a lot more activity on the lake bed in Amori Prefecture in this past month. It has not been confirmed yet, but Erika might not be the only awakened kaiju for long. There had been no activity since then, but there was no telling if that will soon be proven wrong or not, moving past the possible re-emergence of another kaiju. For about a week afterwards things have been progressed as they had for the three days beforehand, except that I had another change in my training regiment eight days ago. After I had to fend for my life once again. Okay sadly the chapter is over. And if you enjoyed the video just leave a like. And subscribe with post notification. So when the next chapter is ready. You will be notified. Okay see you in the next video. Bye.